this county championship match in the very strong position of 330 for three overnight. Sean Massoud is 113 not out. George Hill is 51 not out. We've only had 78 overs bowled, so there's plenty of time for both teams to gather bonus points. And uh, as you may have gathered, we are late starting because of uh, rain showers between 10 and 10.30 which needed uh, a little bit of mopping up. So uh, we have lost again the time that we were due to add on from losing time yesterday, <laughs> if you see what I mean. Morning, Jonathan. Good morning. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's one of those, those vagaries of cricket, isn't it? Everything's set up for a, let's make up some time from yesterday and then, oh, well, let's just play the same number of overs as we're supposed to do then. Anyway. And we're back to the timings of earlier in the season with the one o'clock lunch and... 3.40 or 32 overs to co T. The clouds are still with us. It is very overcast in Cardiff this morning. We may have light issues at some point in the day if this uh, persists because it's uh, quite likely to remain overcast. The forecast for tomorrow is not great either, but uh, Yorkshire in a good position to, uh, to push on from their overnight situation of dominance and uh, try and put some pressure on Glamorgan, who are opening up with Jamie McElroy, their best bowler by some distance, two for 41. And news of what I believe, and apologies if I've forgotten someone, Glamorgan's first concussion substitute, which I'll explain in a moment, after McElroy has delivered the first ball of the day to Sean Massoud on 113 not out. McElroy in bowls on leg stump and I think that's flicked the pad of Masood down to fine leg for a leg by 331 for three. So Glamorgan are allowed to play Dan Douthwaite, their 12th man, as a batter only because he is a medium fast bowler and like Ben Kellaway, the man who is injured, unfortunate start to his uh, home championship career with uh, a knock on the head while fielding on the boundary so he has had to be replaced through concussion and Dan Douthwaite will bat but not bowl as McElroy is in to bowl to Hill who leaves it through outside off stump. I'm slightly surprised that given that there wasn't an obvious like for like uh, that they didn't go for someone with uh, the bowling option right, like Prem Sisodia, who would be a spinner, rather than uh, Douthwaite, who's only able to bat because he's a medium-fast bowler. I'm not sure, uh, was Prem Sisodia in the squad originally? Well, it was only a 12-man squad, to be honest. Right, so uh, I'm not sure if there's any rules on I know Sophie was going to go and hmm. find out the specifics on that front. As McElroy bowls, and uh, that's played out in the offside, Hill fields. Um, Hill plays it to Douthwaite, sorry, and there's no run. There's never going to be a perfect solution to it. Um, it. You know, one side will always feel slightly aggrieved if, if the other team are deemed to have an advantage, but I suppose given that um, the player that, that's been replaced is bowling a certain way, then it could be construed as well. We think we might have a better option with a, you know, with a seamer in, so let's bring one in. McElroy Bowles driven into the covers by Hill. Scrambling stop by Root. No run. Hence not being um, not being allowed to bowl. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's better than the, the previous, which was if he's concussed and he can't play, then you can have a 12th man, and but he can't bat or, mm. or bowl. Or more likely, he's concussed, give him a couple of aspirins and let him to get on well, with it, yeah, which probably in, would have been the, the case day, uh, maybe case. 10 years ago yeah, yeah. before... Uh, Science on uh, concussion in sport had uh, made its recent advances. McElroy round the wicket to Hill, who plays it to mid-off, and there's no run. But you would... And the squads in cricket are a bit nominal anyway. It's not like there's a, uh, a particular number that you have to name for a county championship match. Yeah. Uh, and if you were prevented from bringing in someone from in s outside, then you'd, you'd never have a specialist substitute wicketkeeper, would you? So, 3.31 for three. McElroy bowls to Hill, who plays it off an angled bat down towards backward point and will go through for a single. 
Stathwaite again is involved in the action. 332 for three at the end of the over. Just the one run off the bat. Hill takes the strike. He's on 452. Masood is 113. So the Prem Sisodius, the bowling option would have been, I think, a little bit more logical had he been available. I presume he would be. Andrew Salter would have been even more logical as an off-spinner batting at eight, but um, he retired recently. It'll be though still probably technically employed by Glamorgan. Could have hoiked him off the beach somewhere. 3.32 for three as uh, we've got James Harris looking to redeem his rather ugly looking figures at the moment. And he's going to be bowling to George Hill. Had a chat with Shan Masood after yesterday's play. Tell you more on that front uh, in a moment because Harris comes in. And uh, straight played. Hill pushes into the covers and there is no run. Um, so Shan was obviously delighted to have got his first 100 for Yorkshire. I'd love to say, I'd love to point you in the direction of BBC Sounds and say, go and listen to the interview yourselves, but it didn't find the light of day, having gone round there and uh, done it. Uh, I've not seen the light of day so far, at least. Somebody may put it up there, but obviously, once the ball's been bowled today, it's kind of out of date. Um, Harry's coming in again, and Hill punches that one into the uh, offside, where it is Fielded with a good diving stop by Eddie Byram, no run. Uh, so, yeah, delighted with the 100, but really wanted to lavish the praise, really, on the younger players. Um, George Hill being one of those who's out there with him now. Finley Bean, of course, as well. Um, I asked him about the pitch in relation to it being slow, and was that was he more comfortable on it because he's used to slow pitches in Pakistan, and he was quite clear that there was nothing like a pitch in Pakistan <laughs> as uh, Hill flicks this one to mid-wicket and there's no run. He said there's much more grass on this than you'd ever get on a wicket in Pakistan. <laughs> and although they, It's not they, a lot of grass on it. They keep low. Um, there's a completely different feel about, about them when you're batting on them. Uh, as if to suggest that there's no kind of advantage to him given that he's used to playing on what everyone sees as being slow turners. As uh, Harris comes in again, swept band on the left wrist, bit width this time for George Hill to work with, but he's square driven that straight to point. No run. Dr Hignall has uh, been in touch to confirm that uh, Dan Douthwaite is Glamorgan's first official concussion replacement. It's only been in a, a few. How long has it been in? Three or four years, maybe? 2019 was the first year I recall because I think the first one of the lot. Um, I wouldn't go to the grave on this one, sort of thing, but I think it was Ian Holland at uh, the Aegeus Bowl against Yorkshire for Hampshire. As Harris gives uh, George Hill a bit more room to work with, and this time he's learnt from his previous shot, if you like, and he's punched it just a bit further in front of square and got four runs. Through square cover, lovely start to the day for George. Yeah, it was in by 2019 because that was the year that uh, Glamorgan's Manus Labuschagne came into the Ashes uh, series as a concussion sub for Steve Smith. Yeah, still got that helmet that I brought down and he signed for me um, last year, was it? <laughs> when we're here. It's not yet made it onto eBay. <laughs> <laughs> He'll wait then. Two slips in place. Ring field, although square leg is deep if not on the boundary edge and there's a long leg in place as Hill drops one out into the offside final ball of that over 336 for three means they've added six in the first two overs so yeah Lewis McManus took uh, I think it was Dwan Olifia who bounced him he bounced a few people in that match I seem to recall he was pretty quick and he got Lewis McManus on the head and he couldn't play the rest of the game. Holland came in as his replacement in the second innings and was bowled first ball. Ah. Uh, <laughs> wasn't ideal, was it? And then um, the, the one involving Shaquille this year at Durham and then Zach Chappell at Ch Chesterfield as well. So three times previously in Yorkshire matches it's happened and here we go with number four. So uh, Downthwaite will be in, in batting action for Glamorgan. He will bat at number eight, but uh, I suppose that would have been 
his natural sort of position anyway in this particular side, which is quite batting heavy with uh, Chris Cook at uh, at six. As McElroy runs away from us at the Cathedral Road end and bowls to Sean Massoud on leg side and uh, turned away nicely down towards a widish fine leg and they'll jog through for two, 338 for three. It's one of the issues with the setup of this Glamorgan Championship side as it has been all season and that really Worcester last week was the, the first time well, I suppose the Durham game it was rained off, but uh, rarely has the batting failed twice, but the bowling has been a bit uh, short on numbers sometimes. As McElroy appeals, and Masood survives. A flick off something, Masood kindly tells the umpire, Peter Hartley, that it was his pad. As Glamorgan were appealing for a catch. Not given. No, pad flap, I think. Good delivery. And, uh, he really did dart in towards Shan Masood, and I think they thought inside edge. Chris Cook with a good take, but. Masood survives on 115 as McElroy away from us. Bowls full length, driven through the covers that was slightly asking for it. It won't quite reach the rope. They may take three as Carlson runs after it and uh, decides to save his arm and not return because they're uh, comfortably through for the three runs. 341 for three. Instead, Carlson takes out the large, dark towel. Looks as though the sort of th looks like the sort of thing you use to uh, mop a bar at the end of the evening. <laughs> Keep expecting them to have beer adverts on them when they pull them out of the back of the trousers there. Obviously, Kieran wouldn't have been in any bar yesterday. No, evening. absolutely not. As uh, Ford comes healthy, next delivery, and Billy Root falls over <laughs> as he fields and somehow propels the ball towards the wicketkeeper. I think he's all right, but uh, that was extraordinary as uh, Root was in no particular hurry to come in there. They weren't attempting a single, but uh, his feet just went from underneath him on uh, on the square. It wasn't even on when they used wickets particularly, I don't think. Be, uh, be on the ladies cricketing, it'll be alright on the night. <laughs> what happened next? McElroy into Hill. Dead straight. Defended back to the bowler. 341 for three. Sean Massoud, well, I suppose the closest Glamorgan have come to dismissing him was uh, when he nearly played on when he was on 80 and uh, chopped the ball down and uh, bounced up over his stumps off McElroy. There was an LBW f appeal first ball and he got off the mark with an inside edge, but for most of the, the rest he's been impeccable. McElroy bowls to Hill, played to Root at cover. This time Ro Root remains firmly on his feet and there's no run. End of the over, five runs off it. Yorkshire still making a very healthy progress at 3.41 for three. Yep, 4.21 and over. Both these players, there's, there's an, a touch of the elegant about the pair of them, really. I know for some reason that we never are able to put our fingers on as cricket lovers. It, it looks more elegant from a left-hander than a right-hander. Um, a bit of je ne sais quoi, but... Uh, <laughs> George is also, when he's playing well, really does look uh, an elegant stroker and striker of the ball. He doesn't tend to overhit much of anything. We saw yesterday a couple of those shots where he came down the pitch uh, to the spinners and hit fours down beneath our feet. Didn't really sort of go through with the shot, did he? And it, still just the one bounce and four. Here is Harris bowling to Masood, who flicks off his legs around the corner. Oh, Hassan doing the fielding, and they get through for one. Shan actually said on his interview to me last night that George Hill is his favourite player. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, says that about quite all a good, the lads. Uh, quite a good record. No, he's, he has said it. I think off the record before, George George has been my favourite for for whatever reason. Just 
you know, likes the way I think it probably agrees with what I was just saying about that elegance, really, and the way he times the ball. Good temperament. Harris is in, and there we go. George right behind that, and he, he just timed it so well. Didn't really go at the ball. It's raced into the offside. There is a, a man there to do the fielding in Kieran Carlson. Had he not been in that position, that sort of had the power behind it from just a little punch to probably have made it to the boundary. So 12 added this morning in uh, the first three overs and two deliveries. George Hill with that slightly open stance and high back lift. Ooh, now then, he's got an inside edge on this one down to fine leg and McElroy doing the fielding. Just a little bit of luck on his side and he's just uh, got down the other end and played the leave. And he could have <laughs> done it. Actually, he's right. In terms of its line, he probably could have left it. Didn't quite get the front foot across and that's what created that issue. Just maybe reaching slightly for it. Thickish inside edge, but uh, he's OK. 57 to him now from 102. Masood, 119 from 158 deliveries weights. Oh, good delivery. That is a good ball by James Harris, which is slanted across the left-hander and then at worst um, holds its line, probably even cuts back on him, beats the inside edge, draws a ripple of applause from beneath us down by the effects mic. Three forty-three for three, two to come in the over. Harris yet to take a wicket, and he's gone for eighty-six. It wasn't a great day for him yesterday, but that was a pretty handy, fairly early <laughs> delivery. He's going to be unlucky here, so he's not got much on his side in this over because Shan Masood has just got an outside edge on that one, wide of second slip, and he's going to get four runs for it. Those who can see the replay, that's probably angled into a roundabout off stump. And Masood looked like he was playing slightly across it, if anything. And, uh, he's got a bit lucky as well. 123 to him, 347 for three, another batting point within a stroke. And Harris, he'll be just cursing it at the moment, won't he? A couple of uh, edges in this over. And another delivery that beat the bat by the inside edge. Here he comes again. Masood this time gets the full face of the blade on it and drives it to Billy Root at mid-off and there's no run to complete the 82nd over 347 for three if you're joining us uh, of more recent minutes we had a delayed start we're supposed to of course be underway at 10 30 then sorted all the playing hours out for the day they've rejigged them so 11 a.m through until one for this first session at 1 40 until 3 30 for the afternoon session and then 3.50 until 6 o'clock, or when 96 have been overs have been bowled for the uh, final session of day two. So McElroy to uh, continue two for 47. Next to his name on the board has been Glamorgan's most economical and usually most threatening bowler, and Hill plays him defensively into the covers and root fields. And there is no run in case it passed you by last night, Northern Diamonds were winners by uh, 31 runs over Western Storm. The regional sides for these uh, two counties are included in. Yeah, they've still got an outside chance of qualification. They're playing Wednesday at Sale against the Thunder, and I'm up at uh, Chester Street to cover the game on Saturday against Sunrisers. As that's steered away on the offside by Hill, and there's no run. So I'll be doing that with... Uh, with Ash Thorpe, who you'll have oh, met yep. when you've been up there. Yep. And managed to co-opt him onto the, the team for the day. First time he'll be broadcasting in a radio leads capacity. Very good. Uh, yeah, Western Storm were chasing 282 in just 43 overs. They got 250 for seven. 87 from Sophie Luff and half centuries from Fran Wilson and Nat Wraith. As McElroy bowls and Hill defends back to the bowler and there's no run 
We did our first Western Storm BBC commentary in Cardiff uh, this summer when they played a, a double header. So I uh, enjoyed doing that. Hopefully we can do more in uh, in future, but Western Storm are more based at, uh, at Taunton in yeah. particular and, and Bristol. As that is defended by Hill up to mid-off and there is no run. I've done a few this year. <laughs> I'm thinking it might be about half a dozen. Certainly went to Scarborough, did a game there and then off up to Durham for our four-day men's match. Mm -hmm. uh, done one up at Chesterley Street when they played there and uh, some at Headingley as well so uh, we've, we've tried to get involved obviously not as easy when there is so, there's so much men's cricket around as well McElroy sets off again two slips behind George Hill who's playing off the back foot into the offside route misfield slightly but uh, the ball doesn't run too far just as far as Ul Hassan at mid off and there's no, no run and if this one came to a and end within three days, which is looking unlikely due to weather at least. Um, certainly probably pop to uh, sail, I think, on Wednesday and cheer him on. McElroy examines the ball somewhat suspiciously. Shaven-headed left-arm bowler. And uh, that's driven back past him. He can't get much on it in his follow through punched really from Hill and there'll be a couple of runs as Kieran Carlson slips as he picks the ball up and holds his back slightly tentatively pulled it up about 10 metres inside the rope but uh, clearly the outfield is uh, a bit slippery after that uh, morning shower well there were several really around uh, breakfast time in the Welsh capital and uh, another one just after 10 o'clock, which was responsible for delaying the start. 3.49 for three. Sean Massoud has 123. George Hill has 59. And uh, Glamorgan are up against it. And George and he took that again so late. And right underneath the eye line. In uh, playing that little punch. One of the features of his play, I think, when he's playing well. As Harris comes in to start this 84th over then bowling to Masood who's got an inside contact on it and diverted it to mid on there's a yawning gap now through mid wicket and uh, with the field he's got set here James Harris certainly going to be going on the, the posh side of straight mid off cover point two slips he's also got a third man wouldn't want to be bowling too much leg stun but he has got two men set back so they might be just keeping that thought in Shan Masoon's mind that he might get a short one. Not with this delivery though, round about off stump and helped into the offside by Masood and there is no run. So they've both kind of got themselves back in again since the uh, overnight 78 hours have been completed, five hours. They've had a little bit of a look at it again. George has added, what, eight to his overnight score. Shan Masood, ten. One more run to uh, tick off a third batting point, which will come with this stroke from Masood, which is timed really well out to square leg, Byron Fields. And uh, a single. 124 for Masood. The applause for that third batting point. So uh, two more to tick off. I put it to Shan last night. First obvious achievement would be to get yourself to five batting points. If you do, if you're good enough to do that, what from there? And he was talking about you know, batting just the once in the match. Mm. That's going to be quite hard to judge, isn't it? In terms of if you're good enough to get into a position where you might want to declare, as, as George Hill's timed this one really well again. Full length delivery this time from Harris. And a tumbling stop by Billy Root at mid on, no run. Because you're not quite sure about these showers, how long they're going to last, how much game time is going to be lost. The, there might be an inclination to, to get to 450 and then say, OK, we'll have a ball now. I know, uh, yeah, and, and, and there might be an inclination. I'm not suggesting that I think they should. 
that they might be inclined to, or the, on the other hand, it might be just bat until we're done, and then we'll see what time's left and try and try and win it from there. Hill pushes one back up the pitch to Harris. No run. Yeah, I'm not sure. 450 on this so far fairly ba batter friendly surface would uh, give you enough latitude to be confident of getting the the follow on, enforcing the follow on. You're talking about. 300 then as a first innings target for, for Glamorgan and if they got there it would be virtually game over maybe Harris to Hill dropping one out into the offside and there will be no run to complete that over yeah again, I, mean, I accept what you're saying uh, completely and it is a good deck but then they haven't bowled that well on it collectively have they and if Yorkshire bowled well yeah um, the, there is there's that side of things to bring possibly into the equation. You know the, the likes of Ben Code, who obviously quality operator in uh, Championship cricket. Don Best, big part to play. You'd feel. Yeah, Code's stats are good, aren't they? There can't be many uh, regular performers averaging uh, under 20 runs a wicket. No, I think he's still. Stewing that at the point he got his 200th wicket, it was just 20 point something, and it, it, it was going to be one of very few players who <laughs> got to 200 first class wickets, averaging fewer than 20. McElroy bowls, and Masood doesn't time that one, playing it back to the bowler. Strange events in the uh, in the Asia Cup where uh, India Pakistan is uh, being taken into a, a reserve day. Funnily enough, it's the only day apart from the final that was only match apart from the final um, that was allocated a reserve day. <laughs> I wonder why that was. And that was uh, a fairly late addition. McElroy bowls and Masood runs it down towards Gully, and uh, they go through for a well timed single 35143 but uh, unfortunately the reserve the start of the reserve day has been delayed by uh, conditions in colombo india uh, 147 for 2 in the 25th of their 50 overs so it remains to be seen whether that particular high profile game can be uh, completed as that's driven by Hill off uh, an angled bat down to wide third man and they only take a single as Harris gets there in in good time the running maybe wasn't quite as sharp as it might have been on on that occasion it's, it's like saying well we, we'll have a reserve day for Yorkshire against Lancashire because it's such a high profile match I suppose <laughs> 352 for three Ancient arrivals. Masood on strike on 125. That's high score for Yorkshire. Plays that into the offside. Oh, there's a slight misfield at point from Byram, but uh, still no run. Just uh, check in on Sean Masood's record for Derbyshire last year. Had three centuries in his eight matches and four additional half centuries and uh, a highest score of 239 averaged 82 in the season for Derbyshire before moving north this season as that's uh, punched off the back foot by Masood this time but straight at Al Hassan at uh, mid on no run 3.52 for three three batting bonus points in the bag it's 450 for the maximum five and we've got another 25 overs of them to accumulate up to the 110 over mark so four and over is uh, just under what they're going anyway McElroy bowls and uh, Masood drives to cover there is no run McElroy just conceding a couple of singles on that over and uh, had a brief chat to him last night. He said, well, it's basically about bowling straight as you can, putting the ball in good areas and just hoping for a bit of uh, assistance from the uh, from the pitch. Bowling straight, who'd have thunk it? Yeah, the right areas, who you know. Yeah. 
Who invented that uh, particular cliche? That's a relatively recent one, isn't it? Right here. Probably, areas. yeah, the last 20 years or so, probably. Re- yeah. It's replaced line and length. Yeah. Yeah. That was being discussed last week by DT. Hard length as opposed to back of a length. Hard length. It tends to get tends to get used as an expression in white ball cricket, although he was clearly derisory of that because he was saying, well, it's just a white ball term, is it? <laughs> when you hear it, it's usually allied to a white ball game. Meanwhile, with a red ball, Harris bowling here at the right-handed George Hill, who drives pleasantly up to mid-off, where it's uh, fielded after an awkward-looking bounce. And there's no run. I heard... Um and spectators suggesting that uh, he'd spotted Sir Geoffrey on the ground yesterday. Oh, really? Okay. I have no evidence to back that up. He was at Scarborough last week. He's actually got taken out uh, on a stretcher on the first day, I think it was. Yeah. The heat was pretty stifling. But he was OK and back the following day. I Good. saw him walking around the ground. So it was OK. Short ball pulled here by George Hill and four. Uh, and to be fair to James Harris, he's, he's, well, he's easily the worst bowler he's bowled today because he's not really bowled uh, much loose stuff after not having his best day yesterday. But he'll know from yesterday that if you drop it short on this pitch against good players, you're going to go. And George Hill over the top of that all the way. It didn't really bounce that high did it either for what no. appeared like a bit of effort into the pitch there has have been occasions where Harris has been the deputed Glamorgan bowler to try and bowl some short pitched uh, leg side stuff but um, not on this wicket it's not advisable and he doesn't have anybody set back for that does he either no, no, no. As he had to Shan Masood in the previous over this time there's a stifled appeal there was bat involved but whether or not there was pad first Probably only those at close quarters know. But I'm guessing why th- that's why the appeal was stifled, but maybe before pad. The uh, promotion contenders Leicestershire are in a bit of struck against uh, Sussex. they 91 for six in reply to Sussex's 2-6-2 all out. Opener Rishi Patel is still there, 42 not out, but the rest have fallen in a bit of a heap. Harris to Hill. He flicks off his legs, long leg McElroy coming into play, one run. Uh, three wickets to the uh, the Greek South African, Aristide Cavellas. And a couple to Jadev Unedkat, who must, uh, must admit is a, uh, something of a new name to me, their uh, latest overseas player. Me too. Masood back on strike. They have the two men in the deep on the leg side against square and backward of square. Will this be a short delivery by McElroy? No, it's a good length ball driven into the on side through the grasp of uh, of Harris in his follow through. I think I said McElroy then for a moment, didn't I? But uh, it was actually James Harris. <laughs> Uh, Andrew Broadbent, by the way, says in case you're not aware, the live video feed via ECB doesn't seem to be working. Bent Nielsen, nice day from Yorkshire's batters yesterday. Plan must be to get 450 if possible and see if Ben Code can find a trick or two in the pitch. Good morning to you, Lily, who is uh, looking forward to another good day's play. And Martin Rowe says, no rugby league today. You've got my undivided attention. <laughs> Harris to Masood. His uh, ball short of length, wide of off stump, and has been cut away through the covers. Very nicely along the deck by Shan Masood. Lovely shot, four runs, 129 to him. 361 for three Yorkshire at the end of the over. So Yorkshire continuing their progress in uh, the first half hour. Um, Edward took some wickets for uh, Glamorgan uh, yesterday. He's taken all three to to fall. He's been on microphone when all three have fallen. I'm sure he won't claim too much personal credit. Uh, Another word from Jonathan and he'll be joined by Edward. Yeah, Jamie McElroy going to continue with that first half hour. Has again been uh, just a, a little victory for Yorkshire, I guess, not having lost a wicket. I think the bowling has tightened up to some extent. and We've obviously seen some good stuff from James Harris in particular. He was asked a few questions this morning, but then he's just let himself down a little bit, hasn't he? In that uh, last 
over or two. McElroy in and bowling to Hill, who flicks that one to Carlson at mid-wicket and will take him on for a single. Lovely languid sort of uh, shot by George. 66 now to him. 362-4-3. Good morning, Ed. Morning, Jonathan. Good morning, everyone. Especially my friends up in Yorkshire. And uh, they'll be delighted with the progress that their team are doing or making this morning. 362 for three. My guess is uh, 550. One of your journalists who I've known for many years said to me now in the corridor, I'd pull in at 450 because really? tomorrow's forecast is awful. Well, I yep. haven't seen it quite so awful as some. There we are. Not ideal, is it? I don't think. McElroy left arm over the wicket to Masood, who punches this one to Ulasan at mid on no run. I was just saying to, to Nick, just as a thought, that they might get to 450 and pull out just to give themselves more time. They obviously can't well, bat again yeah. if they need to. Um, then because of the, the threat of rain over the next couple of days, but yeah. you just don't know quite how that's going to pan out. And the way Shamasu was talking to me in his interview last night suggested that they would just carry on and get as many as they can. And then the weather is the weather. McElroy into Masood, who's flicking nicely off his hip here. There is a long leg in place, so I think he's just going to get there. He is, to flick the ball back in. But good running between the wickets has brought them three. Funny you should talk about that, because I was up at um, Yorkshire when he won the championship, well, it must be 15 years ago, at, uh, at Headingley. David Bias was captain, and the threat of rain... Uh, it's all the radio stations were saying and uh, David batted on and on um, and then he bowled them all very cheaply and it was over in about three days and he was questioned about it because as the players walked from the field it started to, to drizzle I never, even though I'm a farmer he said as he was up in the, up mm. in the north uh, ever take any notice of weather forecast <laughs> McElroy in and that's down the leg side George has a flick at it but misses which was fair enough because it wasn't all that clever back in the day. Um, and I suppose there were people, Matthew Maynard here, I know, was another one that uh, he would disregard forecasts and play as he... You know. Yeah. It, I mean, it's, it's very easy when you don't have that responsibility of making those decisions, isn't it? To, to just... Yeah. It's easy to make that decision. And if you're wrong, who cares? It's just an opinion, but it's the opinions of those... But I would say that the forecasts are far more accurate these days than they than they used to be with these old modern computers. McElroy in, it's uh, drifting <coughs> towards leg stump, and George Hill again, just an effortless little flick off his legs, out to Byram, who's in the deep, easy single, <coughs> and just just batting within himself here, and uh, feeling but good, I think. With this, uh, this pair out there, I suppose it'll be a, a Masood. This is Masood, Darren Goff is here, and uh, I notice Gibson will have a little discussion uh, because that's the way they, you know, I'm sure they, they won't not talk to the coach about it and the captain, not like again in days of old, the captain would make the decision when there were no coaches. Uh, they'll discuss it and uh, and take it from there. But the, the new ball's done nothing at all this morning and uh, it's all very straightforward on this pitch. McElroy to Masood who flicks nicely off his legs again he's timed it well fielded out there by Kean Davis who's still <coughs> involved as a 12th man for Glamorgan and one run to Masood to complete the over leaves him on 133 at this stage Hill on 67 partnership now worth 127 for this uh, fourth wicket unbroken they're 367 for three Yes, and this, uh, I think I mentioned to you and many other commentators, uh, I shall be very, very surprised if this pitch breaks up. Well, it won't break up. It's a test match pitch. And uh, this is where, when Glamorgan had test matches up a few years ago, this is, was the pitch, and it was always played perfectly, a bit on the slow side, as it was in the one-day international last Friday. Um, might little, we saw a little bit of turn, but I suspect that was off the rough, as opposed to... Uh, off the straight yesterday. Again, we must look at the respective bowling attacks. Um, I've voice, voiced my opinion, so has Nick on the, on the Glamorgan attack, and it'll be Harris to bowl from the river end, and bowls to the left-handed Masood, who goes on an expensive shot and will get a single off an outside edge down to third man. Um, 
I think it's worth repeating, as you could probably see, Jonathan, that uh, you've got uh, first change, Ul Hassan, who was asked to come in to be an opening batsman, a reserve opening batsman in David Lloyd's absence, and now all of a sudden he's first change. You've got uh, James Harris, who's been in and out of the side. He's going at uh, around 37 per wicket this year, 26 wickets. Uh, you haven't got to recognise Spinner on the staff, and poor Carlson had about 21 overs yesterday. And I suspect that Yorkshire's attack uh, will be far stronger than this, and that's another thing we have to look at. As uh, in comes Harris and bowls and Hill is on the back foot and pushes it out into the covers, there's no run. Uh, equate all those and you'll, you know you, you, you may think yeah perhaps 450 will be enough well I mean Ben Coe as we've just been saying averaging around about 20 200 and odd first class wickets quality bowler mm. uh, Don Bess in, international honours to his name um, bowled well at Scarborough last week You'd expect to see plenty of him on this pitch. Probably about 40 overs. But then again, you've got a, a debutant in Ben Cliff at you know, first-class cricket. So, Here is Harris. Bowles, good-looking shot. Lovely shot from Hill. Goes through the covers. Nobody moved. Not even the batsman, the fielder. And another boundary to Hill. It looks so good. Moves on to 71. That's a cracking shot, isn't it? Beautiful um, shot. shot the first morning. time he's really put his hands through anything this morning. Mm. He's just been prepared to wait and nudge and push and even previous boundaries have really been more about timing than effort but he, he had both there and it really raced away through extra shot. cover and uh, going back to the, um, this business you see they've got analysts every county now and they look at uh, well Gorbin's hardly played uh, Callaway's out of it Dothway can't bowl yes our bowling must be much stronger than this does the captain say 450 and we'll get in there and get at him because you know as well as anybody that uh, opening batsmen who've been in the field for a day and a half will be rather weary yep. the mm. concentration levels will not be quite so high as normal Harris in again and uh, balls to Hill Hill is on the back foot this time just watches it and pushes it up to mid on still the two slips which is uh, a little bit surprising we see nothing really go off the scene um, and you talk of all that, and the analysts say, the captain, perhaps last night, look at this, that, and oh yeah, yeah, I think 450 might get them quickly, and we'll have a crack at them. Maybe. I don't know. And Matthew That's Fisher's obviously a big miss, but John exactly. Thompson just keeps on, just keeps on keeping on. Um, and George Hill, of course, is out there now. He, he opened the bowling in the uh, second innings last week at Scarborough in the absence of Matthew Fisher. And it's Hill who tries to flick it down the leg side. A good take by Cook. And then Matthew Revis, um, who's you know come into the side in the last three seasons now, is making his name as an all-rounder. He got his highest first-class score last week, um, 106, and uh, three for in the second innings, two for in the first innings as well. So you know he's and this is in a all pitch, time. I think you'll agree is where if you put it there, there and there, you bore the batsman because it's not a quick pitch where you can just that uh, that was a very rare shot through the covers. I think I mentioned it to you yesterday where you hit one on the full half volley length mm. because of the slowness of the pitch. But um, these two look in particularly good form as Harris is in bowls. And that's a piece for LBW and he's given. It looked pretty straight and the umpire no hesitation then in giving him out. So the fourth wicket does fall after an excellent stand. And I picked up my fourth wicket in uh, four dismissals <laughs> this time. It's Hill goes LBW to Harris for 71, 372 for four. Let's have a look at it. Yeah, no hesitation. The finger from no. Mark Newell was straight up, wasn't it? We are looking from behind, but we will get a front shot probably. Yeah. George Hill. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, going to gonna get the front on view here, yeah. Ed. So uh, let's have a look. He's bowling it from. Yep, reasonably close to the stumps, oh, not yes. spot on, but yeah, let's hit him in front of probably middle, maybe slightly offside of middle. And he hung about, and I'm sure it wasn't any dispute, it was just sheer disappointment. He played so well, he didn't play a false shot, no, and he thought, oh no, but it uh, it gives yeah. heart to Glamorgan and, and a wicket, the first wicket in the innings for James Harris, yeah. And I mean, when you saw 
the LBW for James Wharton yesterday from the angle that McElroy was bowling it. I thought he was pretty hard done by, but I think that, uh, that George can't have too many complaints. And when he saw the shot on the replay, he didn't really put his bat out there as if he was trying he to play it, did he? It was kind, well, he was kind of slightly... Uh, it's almost like he was trying to play behind his pad. So uh, very unfortunate because he was in tremendous nick there and he really... I've said numerous times this season that even though he's had a 100, there's just been something about George's game that's not looked quite as it had done previously. But I think last week at Scarborough and here, I think he's, he's very firmly, if he was ever away, if you like, on his way back now, he's playing more fluently again. Mm. And I think it's just a matter of time before he, he ticks that box of another... How old is he? ...big score. He's uh, 22. Oh. And he's got three... Um, tons to his name, yeah, and uh, I think he's obviously clearly what a great uh, age, Jonathan. Good, Dodge. Really good player for a, a long term future. What a great age, Ed. We'd, we'd love to be back there, wouldn't we? <laughs> well, time, well, yeah, that would take a long discussion, I think. The new batsman, <laughs> we've got we've got time, we've got nearly three days if you want to, <laughs> if you want some counseling. So, a uh, change of bowling as well at this um, Cathedral Road end because uh, Andy Govin is on, bowling right arm over the wicket, and his first delivery has just been played into the offside by Masood for a single. Jonathan Tattersall, Yorkshire's keeper batter, or one of them, Harry Duke, of course, as well, who made his debut on this ground a couple of years ago. What's happened the to other him? One. Yeah. He's around still. He played in the 50-over the, um, competition. Am I right in saying that Tattersall was left out initially at the start of the season, or would it be last season? And then he came back and fielded in the side. That's right. Yeah, I thought it would happen. Competition for places. Good. Et cetera. <clears throat> so here's uh, Gorvin once again. It's right across in front of umpire Peter Hartley as he goes by, but then spears that one down the leg side, and Chris Cook uh, makes a good job of taking an awkward-looking delivery. If Glamorgan can pick up two wickets, I think they'd be quite happy to have two points from this game. But uh, Yorkshire, got plenty of time to pick up the maximum. Uh, George, George Hill, by the way, 124 deliveries for that uh, 71. Very composed and proper innings, as you say. And 11 fours within, as uh, Govin's in again, and Tadassol sort of curtain rails with his bat and brings it inside the line. So just to recap on Yorkshire's card so far, top scorer, of course, is the man out there, Shan Massoud, 135. 93 for Finlay Bean, who opened the batting with Adam Lythe. He made 49. They put on 98 for the first wicket. And uh, 127 partnership for the second wicket between Bean and Massoud. Before Bean went, James Wharton didn't last so long, but as I say, it felt for m to my eye, a little bit unlucky with that LBW. But George Hill, I don't think he'd have too many complaints as the fourth man to go there. Just uh, didn't manage to get bat on ball as Tadassol flicks that one in front of square on the leg side and gets off the mark. 3.74 for four. So uh, midway between the three-point and four-point mark as far as batting's going. Matthew Revis due in next. Don Bess, uh, the man after him, Jordan Thompson, got some runs in both innings up at Scarborough. He's at nine. They've got Ben Cliff listed at ten and Ben Code, if that's the case. Toss-up, is it? He's, well, <laughs> Ben's going to be absolutely livid if he's 11 again. He's had some runs this year. As uh, the latest Govin delivery turned to the leg side of straight by Shan Massoud, no run. And if you, uh, and in case you weren't aware, maybe joining us more recently, because we've been underway for uh, 45 minutes today, concussion substitute, the first one in Glamorgan cricketing history, right. Dan Douthwaite replaces Ben Kellaway, who got suffered concussion symptoms having banged his head fielding a ball yesterday. As Masood flicks this uh, Gorvin delivery to leg, uh, McElroy does the fielding. Masood takes him on and gets through for one to complete that 89th over at 3.75 for four. So, Douthwaite 
can bat at number eight, but he can't bowl because he's not a like-for-like -like replacement as a bowler for Ben Kellaway, who is replaced. On that topic, um, <clears throat> I can just about remember it. Or can I? Or was it before I started doing this job? I'm going back a few years. If you had a substitute, did I mention this to you yesterday? If a substitute came on the field as a fielder, and, okay, I'll give you an example. The old Yorkshire uh, fielders of old, like Truman would, all, uh, Fred Truman would always be at like slip. John, Jack Hampshire would be at slip. Um, great slip fitter Phil Sharp would always be at slip. I'll just break off as Harris bowls his first ball to Masood, who beats him outside the off stump. Rare occurrence. And shall we say one of those trio set? They were 12th man or coming back for injury. If they were acting as 12th man. And if a Yorkshireman got in injured, um, and Phil Sharp came on the field, not allowed to go to slip. <laughs> Ken Taylor is another name, marvellous cover fielder back in the 60s. The same thing would happen. And he would not be allowed to field in his specialist because everybody had their specialist fielders, which uh, is <laughs> very interesting. Harris bowls, and he just jabs down as that as the captain and pushes it away on the offside. What if you're a specialist third man or fine leg? You know, like you've yeah. got to go. Got to go in the covers. Well, that's where your man would go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but this rule now, I find, um, you know, why can't, if a poor chap's concussed and on the first day, why can't you have a like for like? Yeah. Um. <laughs> Here is James Harris, bowls to Masood. Masood gets a good length ball and pushes it out into the covers. Where Key and Davis feels three seventy-five for four. There's always with something like that. There's always the potential for murky waters, aren't there? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Uh, turning square. You know, you don't want him to bowl. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Um, yeah, but I, not just when, involving when it, any. You, not and this is just for any any game of cricket. Not. But if you diagnose though, Jonathan, then I think you've got to take the word. Yes, he's not, he's not well. Harris bowls, Masood drives through the, not quite through the covers, it's a tumbling stop there at mid-off by uh, Carson. And uh, Harris now, after getting that wicket, is bowling a better line here, especially to Masood, who goes down and is going to have a word with his new partner, Johnny Tattersall. Um, but there yeah, are Douthwaite is itching to get a bowl, no doubt, but he can't. But he will bat an eight. Sometimes he gets run, sometimes he doesn't. But Morgan do back down with Chris Cook at seven. Pretty deep. Still the two slips, especially for the new batsman. That's, uh, in comes Harris. And balls to Tattersall, who clips this off his hip. And he'll get his second run down to fine leg. Well, it's fielded. There by Jimmy McElroy. It's um, a cloudy, darkish clouds. Nothing to worry us, I don't think, about rain. If you look to our far left, you see Caffilly Mountains. And if you, if you can't see them, it's raining and coming at us. I think I need my eyes testing. Oh, yeah, I yeah. can't see them. Yeah. So, <laughs> but it's, it's not, not pleasant watching. Although it's still quite warm outside, is the next ball is driven past point backward of square uh, on the offside and they go for a second run had that been a, uh, a proper throw because it went 10 feet over Chris, Fox, uh, Chris Cook's head he could have been in trouble end of the over and uh, it's 379 for 4 and there are 20 overs left for bonus point purposes which as I mentioned a moment ago should be within Yorkshire's uh, way to get them because they've only lost four wickets and the captain is leading the way by example. Harrison, one for 109 at the moment. It's been hard going for the experienced Glamorgan Seamer. Gorvin, meanwhile, is about to start only his 11th over. And Neil Dutton says, Morning, Deutsch. You can't help but feel responsible for the demise of Young Hill. As uh, I turned 
on this live stream and literally the first thing I saw was the ball thud into his pads. Is anything I can do to soothe my conscience as Tattersall plays one into the leg side and Billy Root fields no run. Or turn the stream off. <laughs> I think it, it's got to be something like wear a wear a horsehair shirt for the, the remainder of the the match, the duration of this match, surely. Yeah. Got a sprinkling of spectators. Our good friends of Yorkshire are here. I saw them coming in this morning. Enjoying their couple of days down here. Here comes uh, Govin then, number 11 on his back. A ball that wobbles a little bit in towards the right-handed Tattersall, who flicks it out into the leg side. And uh, Kieran Carlson makes a, a sliding stop, really. It almost feels like, even though the rain hasn't been around for about an hour now that uh, it might still be a little bit greasy on there the the rope was pulled around the ground and actually just looking it might be drizzling very slightly always while know they're out there umbrellas are a put there not okay we'll go with you as Tadasol opens a face gets a full length ball and runs it out backward of point and they get a single yeah, can't see an umbrella, but just looking at the backdrop of the trees. Maybe it's my imagination. It just felt like there, was a, there were a few spots. But uh, there's no discussion between the umpires. and Certainly play continuing. And, uh, today's we have it, <coughs> the 96 overs. Delay again this morning of half an hour. The over eight is plus four. Here yeah, is Govin again. Masood punching quite <laughs> deliberately into the offside. <coughs> and there is no run. Talking yesterday of uh, outgrounds, Harrogate, I said I'd been to. I once did the Har the Tilcon Trophy. Have you heard of that? Yeah, I have indeed. Yeah, which Glamorgan won there. Morgan won the, the, the Tilkin Trophy. Trophy many years ago. <laughs> and As, uh, uh, this is driven by Masood. I think he might get it past Kieran Carlson. He does. That's going to be four down beneath our commentary position. One skip off the rope and into the boundary boards and takes Masood to 143 in Yorkshire to 384 for four. Lovely shot. That was an amusing day because it had poured down, and I think a part of an innings pour down at lunchtime and everybody went in to the hospitality tent at Tilken and had given up any hope of playing and then about far, half past four they said the umpires are out there I think you better get out to this tent everybody and players were in there as well here's uh, Govin and that's punched out to the cover sweep of Byram for a single to Masood 144 Four to him and 385 for four at the end of that over. And uh, Glamorgan went out there, and the players, I think they might have had a bowl out. If memory serves me right, Steve James, a very prolific Glamorgan, former opening batsman, England player, of course, um, who I think, and everybody in his own admission, um, could not bowl. Managed to bowl a straight ball and uh, get somebody out. But I remember it and. Um, I remember going to Harrogate. You've probably played there. Have you all been there? And yes. I've uh, been to Harrogate a few times. Yeah. That pleasant ground. Mm. And uh, and that was that. Good to see that uh, Darren Goff is down here. Yes, oh, so I'm out in the middle it. earlier on. I've not uh, spoken to him this time. I've not seen him to speak to, but uh, he was out in the middle, wasn't he, before play started? Trying to catch up with him. He's a huge friend, big friends of Robert Croft. Toured with England for so many times. Big friendship. Yeah, they've probably so, commentated together at some point as well, no yeah. doubt. Change of bowling here, um, yeah. Ed. Ul Hassan. Ul Hassan is coming round the wicket and bowling to Sean Masood. Plays his first ball down towards fine leg for a single. And uh, I wonder if uh, he'll go over the wicket to the right hand because I don't quite know why he's bowling round the wicket, and I think he is. 386 for four. So the 145. He did say to you in your interview that I saw last night, 
Jonathan, that uh, he hopes to stay around and get a big one. But yeah, he's doing all right so far. Yeah. Of course, Adam Lyth had a big one against Glamorgan in the Headingley match, 174. That's the next ball, which is tucked away by Tattersall, and he'll get a couple up towards the uh, mid-wicket boundary. It's just a little backward of mid-wicket, and uh, no problems there. Al Hassan, who's bowled very little, you know, made his debut this year in first-class cricket as an opening batsman. And now pressed in Glamorgan's lack of bowling resources into first or second change. Yorkshire encroaching on that 400 mark, 388 for four. As uh, well, Hassan from the river end bows the right handed Tattersall, who clips it in exactly the same position, but this time it goes just a little bit straighter down to fine leg for a single. He moves on to six. Yeah, you, got, it, it, you can't bowl at Johnny's legs. That's the one you know, place you're going to hmm. suffer, generally speaking. Very strong off his legs. Then comes Ol Hassan round the wicket to the left hander, which is clipped away up towards mid wicket. It's a race for the fielder who stops it at Byron just inside the ropes, and they go for another comfortable two runs. 82.2 overs left today. Plenty of cricket if the weather is kind. Might just get a bit cloudy towards the six o'clock mark. At this time of year, generally does. The tall Sean Masood there. Encroaching on his 150. He's 147 not out in the next ball. Again is clipped out in that same area, but this time... It'll be fielded by Byram and returned for just a single. Nick is uh, on his way back to turf one of us out, probably you. I'll go then. Yeah, you once he arrives, you know, the sentry's orders, up you get it, march off. 392 for four. Well, Hussam coming in again, bowls a Tattersall. Tattersall is forward and sort of half blocks it and completes the over. 392 for four, Sean Masood is on 148. Johnny Tattersall is on six batsmen out this morning. A very good innings by George Hill. He was LBW to Harris. I don't think anybody have any arguments about that decision. Uh, for a well made 71, having shared a partnership of 132 with his captain. Nick, good morning to you. Is it good? Yes, it. Oh, no. Oof, we're just about on the uh, over the cusp, aren't we? Yeah. Sun's over the yard arm. You can have a G&T. Uh, G&T before then, if you want to. <laughs> Yorkshire, 394, two for four. I know you're just back from holiday, Edward, but there's no need to. I wasn't <laughs> drinking gin, Nick, where, but before the <laughs> day, certainly not. But they were two hours on, you see, out in that part oh, of the were. world. <laughs> Gorvin runs away from us and bowls to Masood, who turns it away comfortably off his legs, ball on leg stump, and uh, throw sails over the top of Chris Cook. Thankfully, it is uh, backed up. James Harris, I think it is in the distance, who doesn't know his own strength. 393 for four, Yorkshire relentlessly moving towards maximum batting points at 450 Clamorgan well I suppose scrambling to get a second bowling point they need another two wickets for that in the next 18 overs as Gorvin bowls down leg side to the right hander as well and Gone. he's strangled him down leg side Tattersall has got something on it and Chris Cook has made a fine diving catch and he will be Kicking himself all the way back to the pavilion, Johnny Tassel. A horrible way to get out. It was uh, down leg side. Tassel trying to smash it away towards square leg. And Cook accepting Jonathan. gratefully the chance. Diving to his left about uh, a foot off the ground. An excellent take. And Gorvin has his first wicket. Yes, it... Um 
It's a horrible way of getting out. And he knew he'd, he was on his way. He walked out straight away. And uh, you say, and I was reading an interesting article, Nick, about this. They say strangle, you know, you strangle. Mm. Well, why play the shot? You know, it's like playing a false shot out of the off stump. You never say strangle, do you? Or you get a short ball, you hit it straight to cover, or you strangle. Well, yes, it's just a phrase that goes with that particular dismissal, isn't it? I don't know how it started, to be honest. No, I did why, because uh, it's a dismissal. That's it. It is, but uh, I suppose your eyes light up as a batter, don't they, when uh, you get a ball there? You think, well, it's a relatively low-risk shot, but that was the risk. Court Cook bowled Gorvin is uh, Tattersall. Ravis is at seven. He is going well this season with the bats. He's played seven championship matches and he's got 388 runs at 43. So uh, it's slightly higher than his bowling average. So I think you can fairly say that uh, Ravis is performing better in this discipline. Glamorgan, for only the second time in these four sessions, have got. Uh, Two wickets relatively closely together. There were 21 runs added for that uh, last wicket between the 88th and 93rd over. Just looking back at the corresponding game start of the season at Headingley, mm. six of this Yorkshire side played against uh, against Glamorgan. And let's have a look. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, and six for Glamorgan. Mm. Overseas have changed. <laughs> And uh, openers have changed. Uh, Byram, I think, that missed that game with a back strain at the last minute. Gorvin bowls outside off stump, allowed to go through by new batsman Revis. Yeah, Glamorgan gained a neutral lead there from 139. And then, well, they batted on and on and on and left 492. Yes, the, there was... Uh, Discussion about that, but Matthew Maynard insists that, uh, or insisted at the time, they wouldn't have been able to start bowling because there was light rain falling and the umpires wouldn't have let them start a new innings. Yeah. And I still thought 353.80 there would have been. Uh, it's a game that Glamorgan would have won, of course, because. Glamorgan uh, Bowles defended on the offside by Revis. Okay, Thompson was there, 55 not out, but Ben Cord was not really renowned as any. I don't think he had to face, did he? No, not out naught. And uh, Glamorgan will uh, rue perhaps that decision. And indeed, they just won the one game this season. The Yorkshire won two, have been affected by the rain. Three times they haven't been in a winning position, Sir Jonathan was telling me earlier on. As Gorvin is into bowl, just back of a length to Revis, who takes advantage by cracking it through the offside for four runs through point. Sat up nicely for the uh, the tall figure of Revis, who bumps gloves with Sean Massoud, and he's up and running with four, 397 for five. And you just cannot bowl back of a length on this pitch. It's not in this pitch. Morgan with effectively four medium paces and not getting any speed off the surface. Got to try and uh, pitch it up more as uh, Revis got off the mark stylishly. Faces up to Gorvin again and he drives it back to the bowler and there is no run. End of Gorvin's over then, a successful one. Conceded five runs, but got the wicket of Tattersall. Caught behind down the leg side for six. Gorvin now one for 55 in his 12 overs. 397 for five. Yorkshire on the verge of their fourth batting point. Glamorgan need one more for their second bowling point. Yes, and you weren't, uh, you weren't thinking of that yesterday when the score was mounting up and mounting up, and you thought perhaps one bowling point it would be. They should, because they've got a fair number of overs left. They've got 19 overs. 17. Uh, 17 overs left to get uh, one wicket for a second bowling point, which will be some solace for them. As Ol Hassan decides to go around the wicket again to the left-handed Masood Bowles, the first ball, and it's clipped away on the onside. And uh, that will bring up his 150, and that 150 was made of 191 balls. 
An excellent innings by the uh, Pakistan captain of Yorkshire. And Revis goes up and gives him a good fist pump there, or shake hands, or whatever you can. The gloves going together. And uh, when you were out, we had an interesting discussion about um, declarations. And I was speaking to Chris Waters, who for many years has been a cricket uh, correspondent for the Yorkshire Post, who's down here. Good to see him down. Just wait as uh, in comes Ul Hassan. Bowls to the right handed Revis, who gets right behind it and plays it back down the pitch. Met him in the corridor because said, I think I would come in at 4.50. But uh, I suspect they'll go on and get 5.50 or try to get 5.50. But uh, tomorrow's forecast is anything but uh, good. So I think 4.50. Just uh, going to leave you for a minute to sort out a, a technical issue. OK. In comes Paul Hassan. Bowls to Revis. Revis clips it away. Beautiful shot. Four runs for him. A half volley on leg stump. Well, it was then... Hammered away for four. 402 for five. Another bonus point then as the 400 comes up and uh, that was a poor delivery which got the treatment it deserved. Another one should be within their capabilities before very long. 450 is the maximum fifth point. 402 for five. Here's the next delivery outside the off stump and uh, a couple of oohs and ahs as uh, Revis left that but uh, from here it looked perfectly safe. Let's have a look at it. It's probably excellent judgment or perhaps it was a little bit too close for comfort. We'll just have a look at that on the playback. No, oh, it was very, very close to the top of the off stump. A little bit lower and it would have castled him. But remains on eight two boundaries for Revis as he starts his innings. Still two slips. As uh, the next ball comes up, is pitched up and driven back. And the bowler feels in his follow through. Just having another look in slow motion look at here. It's been slowed down and. Oh! Nearly clipped the top of the off bail. Wasn't a great leave then. Well, Hassan is in this time and it's uh, it's beaten him. Not outside the off stump, but he missed time. You're trying to flick it away on the on side and hit the top of the pad. Boundary in that over, but other than that, it was a uh, pretty accurate uh, six deliveries. 402 for five then, now uh, Yorkshire. We will have lunch at 1 o'clock today as opposed to 12.30. If you're wondering where my two core commentators are, one's going to treat a technical issue and the other one has probably gone for a little stroll because he'd been on for most of the morning or talking to Yorkshire listeners somewhere. So I'm left on my own. Andy Gorvin who had the wicket of Tattersall in the last over, will continue to bowl to the Yorkshire captain. Sean Masood, who's on 150 not out. Here he is, coming around the wicket. Corbin bowls the first ball, and he's clipped away in the leg side, and uh, they will take a single. Steady progress this morning by uh, the Yorkshire Batsman, even though they've lost Hill, who was LBW Harris to 71, and Tattersall caught Cook Bowl golfing down the leg side for six. The light, okay, but not great at the moment. Golfing in and bowls, and that's clipped away by Revis down the leg side, down to fine leg. They go through for a single, and that is all they are going to get. Nick is back. Technical job done? Uh, yes. The, uh, let's see, uh, a gremlin in the works at Cardiff HQ for a couple of minutes, but luckily we managed to... Uh, we were alerted by Salford, so uh, hopefully we should be back with you loud and clear on the BBC stream as well as on the Glamorgan 
and uh, Yorkshire streams. Gorvin then is in to bowl and uh, worked away on the leg side by Masood. It takes two runs. Didn't think there was two there Lovely. initially, but uh, running hard on that occasion. And if you had back. Michael Nisa there, that might have been very, very close. He had a rocket arm, didn't he? Certainly does. One uh, run out from Hove at Remember Hove last that, yeah. season, where uh, the batter looked completely <laughs> surprised to see the it ball uh, pinged over the top of the bales. Overseas in batsman, it, I forget now, it was the opening batsman, fine player. Gorvin is in on leg stump again and takes it away. Shot. Do you know, why did he bowl in that? line for him again know. back for oh. two well, it's a direct hit from the deep there would have been an end of him probably and uh, well yes he was just back in time there Sean Masood as Chris Cook repairs the stumps it was uh, a direct hit from deep backward square from the deep and uh, Masood really had to work for two there he was keen on getting two straight away and uh, he is no, really been home. Uh, just. Yeah. He's oh. home. Good decision by the umpire. That's on leg stump again and uh, <laughs> come off the pad for a leg by this time. 409 for five. But uh, Gorvin's angles are not good at the moment. But why doesn't he go over the wicket then? Because he's drifting down. Three successive balls have gone down there. If he came over, perhaps his line would be better. And not aiming at that leg stump because it, it's just what Masood is a very strong leg side player. He's very comfortable with. He's over the wicket to the right hander. It's through low outside off stump and uh, Revis offering no shot on that occasion. He has nine. Sean Masood has 155. If you're just joining us for the first time today. Well, we started half an hour late anyway at 11 o'clock and uh, Yorkshire have lost the wickets of George Hill, leg before to James Harris for 71 and Jonathan Tattersall caught by Chris Cook off the bowling of Andrew Gorvin for six. But uh, Yorkshire have four bonus points to Glamorgan's one at the moment. We have 15 more overs to get bonus points and luncheon will be uh, back at the... Normal summer time of uh, of one o'clock before we moved everything forward. All has had to continue from the River Taff end bowls to the left hand in Masood to place it up towards mid on. Umpire Newell uh, had a word there with Matt Revis and pointed out to him that uh, he is running down a little bit down the middle. So uh, keep that uh, keep out of that area, he says to him, and. Um, something you do and try and just rough the pitch off quietly as a professional it's been done for years as all her sand goes mm. and bowls and that's missed time there by the batsman just you know get it on the length for a spinner and uh, yes yeah, so oil oracle on twitter um disbelieving the situation with Glamorgan not able to, uh, not choosing to replace Callaway with another spinner you must have one <laughs> well Sissoti is captaining the second team and they didn't leave until last night for uh, for Hove so right. they could have kept a hold of him there is some next delivery comes and that's firmly hit the middle of the bat but it's uh, sharply fielded at mid on there's somebody called Richard, is it Richard Lewis? But he's Rodri not, Lewis, he's I believe. He's not even on the staff. So he no, I think they were allowed, could have registered him, apparently, overnight, had he been uh, required. Um, <laughs> I mentioned An Andrew Salter, but he yes. said he's out in Namibia on a ride bike or something. Is he? <laughs> uh, not surprised. But it's Ulhassan in bowls, and this is clipped away. The number of times he plays that shot. That's running up towards the mid-wicket boundary. Byron picks it up, and uh, they will take three runs quite comfortably. But you've got the options of uh, Sissoti or potentially Lewis playing for the second team today. <sighs> yeah, strange decision. Uh, they could have been uh, summoned here once it was uh, known that uh, or kept here. 
since there's a, obviously a strong possibility that uh, Callaway would be judged yes. uh, medically unfit. Olusan, in his 12th over, comes in and bowls to Revis, and Revis plays that away on the onside, up to square leg, where they'll amble a single, and takes the score to 413 for five. Both second 11s of these two counties in action today. Yorkshire are at uh, Guildford, where Surrey are batting first, and they're 76 for one. Dom Leach with the wicket for Yorkshire. Morgan, as I said, uh, down as Hove and in with some trouble with the bat. Well, Hassan again in over the wicket. This time he's gone. Has been drifted down the leg side, coming around the wicket, as has uh, Gorvin. This time he'd reverted to over, but it's still past the leg stump. Past the end of the over. 413 for five, Sean Massoud, 158 not out, and uh, Matt Ravis is not out, 10. Jonathan Dodge was telling us has uh, had a particularly good season, not so much with the ball, but with the bat. Indeed, uh, 43 batting average, 42 bowling average, which uh, tells its story, I guess. In the second 11, then, Glamorgan at Hove, 104 for five against uh, a fairly strong Sussex side, with, I make it uh, seven of whom have had first team experience. Rather fewer on the, uh, the Glamorgan side as Gorvin starts a new over. Balls to Revis, who defends to Carlson at mid on. Glamorgan losing a clatter of early wickets. Uh, not out batters at the moment, Asa Tribe on 14. Lad from Jersey, who's been uh, who's studying in in Cardiff at the at the moment, and has had a couple of hundreds for Glamorgan seconds. Uh, Tom Norton, another youngster with him at the wicket at the moment. See Henry Hurl is back on duty after England under 19s. Gorvin bowls, and Ravis is defending that on the offside and. Uh, Gorvin hurried across to pick up himself just in case they were going to attempt a quick single. But uh, it's Will Smale keeping wicket there. He uh, interchanges with Gloucestershire Glamorgan Smale. <laughs> <laughs> Has done, but he's been mostly Glamorgan in recent months. Playing uh, in the T20. And um, in the squad at the back end of uh, the 50 over competition as well. Gorvin in balls full length, driven but not timed by Rowis back to the bowler. Have you finished your season, Nick, on the field, having completed three games in three days last week? <laughs> three game days in five days. Uh, three, three games in five days. Yes, that was a bit of a, a strain on the body, having played only three games the rest of the season. So uh, you doubled your games in yes, three days <laughs> in the last week. Runs dog, victims. No. Not behind much, not much <laughs> as uh, another delivery is played firmly defensively by Revis out on the on side Qu quite a bit of uh, keeping wicket I think it was I did uh, the whole of a Saturday game and uh, half the Sunday game as well so that was uh, that was quite strenuous on the knees in the back I would have thought Oh, it's, it's do you, an, it's do you were one of these who just puts your hands on your knees or do you go right down? No, I, I go down. Uh, at the age of... <clears throat> it's, yes. uh, it's not good on the knees, I can tell you. Gorvin in. Driven by Revis through the offside. He'll pick up at least a couple of runs here as it's hauled up just inside the boundary. In fact, they're back for three... Well run from this pair. Sean Massoud seems to be on the, the same wavelength as his uh, partners this morning, which he wasn't always for a, a while yesterday. It's been a nightmare to run through the really wickets with. Yes, there was some, a series of uh, slight misunderstandings where one was uh, a good chunk of the way down the pitch and the other wasn't. Now then, what did you think of last night's football after this ball? 
Rugby. What's the matter with me? Football. Football tonight. Um, Masood takes a quick single to mid on there. He's safely home. In fact, that was well judged because it was wide of Ul Hassan who had to make ground to his left field and in the end didn't shy at the stumps. 417 for five. Masood has 159 revis, 13. Yes, the narrow Welsh victory over Fiji. Well, uh, fortune, I think, favoured Wales, didn't it? But there was some tremendous defence in the as Ducks, well. Yeah. Two hundred and forty odd tackles made. In it was astonishing when they were on the Welsh line for a, a succession of more. They still couldn't get through. Kieran Carlson's going to have a bowl out of his uh, staunch effort yesterday. He went for some runs, but uh, he filled in because he's not a regular spinner. No, I, it was a wonderful game and had that uh, Fiji player taking that ball. I thought he was going to take it and romp around yes. the end of the post. Yes, Semi Ran Randro played uh, a lot for Bristol in the last what, couple what, of years. Is he, what position is he? Or is he a centre. He was a centre, yeah, was yeah. he? A star player, the inside centre. Oh, and he missed that ball, oh my word. Let's see if Carson, who's bowling from the river end, can do anything against the left-handed Masood. He's got a slip, he's got a, had a victim caught at slip in this innings, and here's his first ball. And it's short. And uh, gone down to long off for a single. But thoroughly enjoyable game. I've had mm. some very strange uh, reports, you know, well, I went up the paper shop this morning, glanced at a few, and I'll tell you some quotes which I couldn't quite believe. Ellis Ken says, we can win this World Cup, and I'm confident. And I would beg to differ you there with Mr. Ken. <laughs> In comes Carlson and Bowles, and uh, he's pushed away. They've they got to say it, though, haven't they? Yes. Yeah, if you're in answer to a direct question, can you win it? Well, yes. Yeah, if we score tries, perhaps. If we score. <laughs> I've dropped goals. Well, yeah. you have to pay tribute yeah. to England's efficiency and well, down men, for all the game. And, you exactly. know, they took their points as, as they came. And um, the art of the drop goal. Yeah. In comes the next ball. Drifting down the leg side. This turn on the corner. This could be close. But no, it's. Uh, Revis is a big man, and um, he came bounding down that pitch. And uh, they been going to Nice for a week, and I couldn't think of a nicer place to spend a week resting if, before they start training. There's, there's Nice on the coast in the south of France. On the Med, yeah. Beautiful. Expensive. Been there, have you? <laughs> yeah. Cut away, backward point, and... Uh, there is a easy single. Yeah, that um, area of uh, Côte d'Azur tends to be a bit pricey once you get. Uh, That's how you've been there, is it? What is it? West, uh, uh, east of Marseille, the uh, down towards the Spanish border is much more reasonable. Next ball is pushed away to backward point, uh, backward square rather. They think of a single, but uh, decide against it as. The fielder, Eddie Byram, who's been done a lot of racing around. He'll want to race around at the crease later on today. So that may be some time away. Yeah, five singles already this over. Carlson being milked. A hundred and one for a hundred and five. And there's a, another one that ends the over. Jonathan is back. Four hundred and twenty-three for five. Masood is a hundred and sixty-two not out. On and on go. Yorkshire and his partner Revis is not out 16. Nick and I will change places and uh, Jonathan will be back. Yes, yeah, so victories for both England and Wales to get the World Cup underway. The Rugby World Cup and... Uh, I think Wales' match probably uh, sent the blood pressure of supporters up a bit more than England's did. As Wales just about held on. A lot of uh, comment on the yellow cards and the penalties and whether Wales should have had a, a yellow card earlier in proceedings. I think the referee was a little bit slow in giving warnings, but then he was looking for a lot of penalties for against Wales in defence as... 
Gorvin Bowles, and that's jabbed away on the offside by Revis. Masood wants a single. Revis sends him back because it was more or less straight to Douthwaite at point. Masood seems to have got spring heeled boots at the moment. He's uh, running for everything, Jonathan. Yeah, I mean, he's taken on the field a lot and won the race today. And it, 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 although he can be frenzied and take big risks and put his partner under pressure, talked about that quite a bit yesterday. I think today, actually, he's got, he's nailed it. He's, he's, he's run much good better today, he hasn't he? Yeah, he really has, yeah. Didn't seem to be on the same wavelength as a couple of his partners last night. But uh, today, they've both run, mostly. As Gorvin Bolds, full length, up in the block hole, driven by Revis, up to uh, Carlson at mid-on. No run. It's... If the ball's not driven hard at you at mid on and mid off, um, you know it's it's not easy, is it, to cut off that single because once they've played and they go, mm. those first three or four strides. By the time you've got the ball in your grasp, they've gone eight, nine, and they've probably only got a couple of strides to go as you get the throw off. It's it's not easy to uh, to run them out. So if you're confident when you're playing the shot, you get through. Gorvin Bowles driven firmly this time to Al Hassan at mid off, so. There is no run available. Maybe that those two fielders are just a couple of metres too far back. Yeah, I'm just going to say that. That's off, that, that can be the case. I mean, Shamasud himself, when you watch him field when uh, Yorkshire come out, he will often get taken on and beaten for the single by the batter because he'll be maybe a stride or two deeper than you think. But it depends on what you're... De why are you fielding there? Is it, are you fielding there for the, driven, the firmly driven ball just to field it? There's Gorvin Bowles. Revis does drive, and this time they will take a single. Carlson has a shy misses. I think Revis was OK because that was very straight into Carlson's left. Ultimately, you're trying to cover all bases, I know, but um, if the skipper says, right, I want you there because you know, you're stopping the big booming drive, that's one thing, isn't it? And therefore, you would be a little bit deeper yeah. than uh, if you're trying to prevent the quick single. And then you'd be saying, Look, get yourself in tighter near the wicked end somewhere. But then you risk obviously being beaten by the firm drive and four runs. Yeah. yeah. As it is, they're sort of trying to do both jobs. 4.24 for five, Yorkshire. Gorvin to Masood on leg stump. Worked away nicely towards the mid-wicket boundary. Douthwaite with the fielding. Strong arm. They don't attempt to second. 25 for five. Did I return to you talking about holidays by any chance? Um, Edwards was mentioning um, one of the, uh, the rugby sides training in, in Nice, which uh, led to a, a little uh, discussion as the delights of the south, south of France. That reminds me of when I went to Skegness in 1976. <laughs> and lived to tell the tale. Did actually go on a rugby tour to the south of France, would you believe once? Ooh. Gorvin Bowles, Revis Blocks. T tell us more. Got back in one piece, obviously. Yeah, school rugby tour. Um, my old school, which was called Benton Park, up in the northwest of Leeds, between sort of on, on the Harrogate Road between Bradford and Harrogate, really. Um, we went in at the Easter of 82. We couldn't get enough players to go ourselves. Our big local rivals were Geisley just up the road a couple of miles and they couldn't get enough players to go either to fill a team coach mm -hmm. so we amalgamated went on right. a joint tour we played separately but but to make it cost effective we filled the bus with two schools which was interesting as you can imagine travelling <laughs> all the way to the south of France on the way there but much more interesting on the way back really when we all got to know each other here's Carlson and uh, Masood flicking this one back out of square leg and uh, Gorvin fields no run so uh, actually there was a really good sort of camaraderie out of mm. it in the end. We both played in this European schools tournament. Uh, and out of that was my first ever appearance on BBC Radio Leeds. Is Gorvin to Masood who steps back and cuts. And McElroy does the fielding at point. And that was because um, I was chosen to go into this big studio, I remember, Oof. when they were doing a feature on school sport something like that yeah, yeah. I was asked to talk about this this tour for some reason it was a few months later Carlson in and that's flicked around the corner by Masood 
He'll pick up one through mid-wicket. Was it that experience that uh, sparked your interest in, in radio then? Uh, I can't say that it definitely was, no. I just I think I was just always listening to, you know, radio-wise, it would be Saturday afternoon sport, wasn't it, back yeah. on Radio 2 when you were out somewhere, maybe with your parents, and it was on the radio. Carlson over the wicket, and Revis drops that into the offside, and there's no run. Um, and then particularly local radio, being a, a rugby league man, mm. the, the Leeds, Leeds RL used to be on the local radio broadcasts and listening to those commentators doing the, the local stuff and the local cricket on a Saturday afternoon that they used to have on Radio Leeds as well. Carlson bowls to Revis, who drives firmly into the offside, but uh, fairly tight in on the one. Sam North East, who did the fielding. So those were all the things that sort of inspired me, those voices and people to want to have a go. Carlson in and bowling to Revis, who drives that one out into the covers and we'll pick up a single to complete the over at 427 for five and there was one specific presenter john boyd um probably won't be listening boyd but if you are hope you're well and uh he was a bit of an inspiration really because i just like to listen to him he'd give an opinion he was knew he seemed to know everything about you know <laughs> all the sports he'd covered league united rugby league uh, yorkshire cricket and he'd moved from the BBC to, to a local uh, commercial station up there, Radio Air at the time. And uh, I was at a dinner when he spoke and I went to speak to him afterwards. I'd be 17 at the time and said, I'd love to see what goes on with the radio show. And he invited me in. So that was the real key. Mm. And then he went back to the BBC subsequently, now retired. Here's Andy Gorvin starting a new over from the Cathedral Road End and bowling to Ravis, who plays it back to him. So I spent all this Saturday afternoon feeding Boydy scores and things like that. <laughs> and he probably did it with you know with loads of people, but that obviously stuck out in my mm. memory. And then about ten years later, something like that, I was uh, helping him out producing his program for BBC Radio Leeds. <laughs> but I saw him a few months ago, first time in ages, um, at a cricket reunion and had a good old chat. Oh, good. Here is uh, Gorvin then. On this still cloudy first session, bowling to Revis, who plays it defensively to Al Hassan at mid off, and there's no run. Remember those football broadcasts in particular, Nick? Uh, European matches back in the sort of late 70s, early 80s, uh, when you'd have your Brian Butler's on doing the commentary, people like that. Welcome to uh, five Sports Extra listeners who have joined us with Yorkshire on 427 for five in their first innings and Sean Massoud, 164 not out as Gorvin bowls to Matthew Revis who plays it too uh, deep-ish mid-on and has a comfortable single for 28 for five. So for the benefit of uh, our... New listeners, Yorkshire have lost uh, just a couple of wickets this morning. George Hill was leg before to James Harris for 71. The score on 372. And uh, Jonathan Tassel caught down leg side by Chris Cook. Good low diving catch off the bowling of Andy Gorvin for six. But Yorkshire remaining firmly on top. With this stand starting to flourish as Massoud drives to Carlson at uh, mid-off this time. There is no run. Glamorgan have their first concussion substitute in terms of a an active replacement in the match in that uh, Dan Douthwaite is on for Ben Calloway, but Douthwaite is only allowed to bat and not bowl because he's a medium fast bowler and uh, Calloway is a spinning all-rounder. Gorvin bowls and uh, that's... Not gone very far from the bat of Shan Massoud as it dribbled away on the offside. Massoud wanted a single. He's run adventurously in this session, rather better than yesterday. But there really wasn't one there. No. Now, that's uh, one of the few today, but there was plenty yesterday, weren't there, where he was calling for one. And uh, once you put that, put that doubt in your mate's mind out there, 
Gorvin into bowl, worked away on the leg side by Masood comfortably enough. Douthwaite doing the fielding in from square leg for 29 for five. Well, I think what we've seen in this knock from Shan Masood is actually brave. As Yorkshire followers, if you like, those of us who are going around the, the nation watching them play, there's not been enough about his innings so far to tell you really what his major strengths are but it's very clear from this knock that anything that's straight uh, or leg side of it is going easily going that way he seems to have absolutely bags of time off his legs um, he's quite prepared to drop and go so he's an accumulator isn't he rather than being a a completely dominant you know player who played down here of course somebody like a, a Viv uh, who, who bossed it out there in a different way he's he's nudging and pushing and he's putting uh, some of the bad balls away with some really elegant looking shots he's just flicked that first delivery of the over to Sam Northeast at straight mid wicket and there's no run on this occasion in comes Carlson again round the wicket he's tried to sweep that one really fine missed out in terms of how he's playing his shots, he looks a completely serene, sort of unruffled player. It's once it's left the bat sometimes, he looks a bit more ruffled in terms of his decision-making about what he's going to do with a run. And he's just stroked this one away nicely through extra cover, full wide of off stump, picks up a single. Yeah, very few... Uh blemishes on Masood's innings, nearly played on to McElroy when he was on 80, ball bouncing over the stumps and a first dodgy first couple of uh, deliveries, an LBW appeal and an inside edge, but uh, the vast majority has been serene, a good word, Jonathan. Carlson over the wicket and Ravis just dropping this one into the leg side now and also to, to, to give him credit, and I don't think you were in the box at the time, but uh, first up this morning, James Harris bowled significantly better than he had done yesterday from the River Taff end and he did get one past Shan's inside edge with a ball that really did jag back so uh, on another day it might have uh, been a different story now then Revis just launching this one over the top of the man who's in about three strips um, from where they're playing at uh, straight mid wicket um, Got it clear of him, just put the hand up as a token gesture, a couple of bounces, and it's uh, raced away for four. So the maximum batting points clearly looming. What They've got eight overs and one delivery to get another 16 runs. Then at that point, it's going to be interesting to see what they decide they're going to do. Are they going to be following weather forecasts and pulling out then? Don't see that myself as Revis drops into the offside. Final ball of the over, no run. So 434 for five after 102. Revis on 23, Masood 166. Already a partnership worth 41. Uh, just from the way that Shah was talking to me on the interview last night, don't see them pulling out immediately. I think they'll, they'll carry on. And just the way that things have gone with Yorkshire with these sort of decisions in recent seasons... They do tend to go longer than anybody else who doesn't have to make that decision wants them to go. Yes, you'd expect uh, at least another session out of the the visitors batting, unless they, of course, uh, bowled out. So McElroy, Glamorgan's tidiest seamer, returns to the action. 202 for 57. His figures off 22 overs has been the most economical of the bowlers. Elsewhere, the uh, the Asia Cup match between Pakistan and India has uh, resumed on a mysterious reserve day as McElroy bowls and Masood drives, doesn't time it. Goes to Ul Hassan at uh, mid on. India 186 for two after 31 of their. 50 overs in Colombo. Funny how that particular match was allocated to reserve day and none of the other group games were. <laughs> 434 for 5. Other games in Division 2. I'll give you after uh, McElroy's next delivery to Sean Massoud, who drives nicely to mid-off, but quite firmly, Carlson fields and there's no run. 
Gloucestershire against uh, Derbyshire. Gloucestershire bowled out for 377. 132 from uh, the inform Ollie Price. Six wickets for Anuj Dahl. Derbyshire in reply are 20 without loss. Sussex against Leicestershire at Hove. Lunch there. Sussex seven without loss in their second innings. McElroy bowls and uh, punched on the leg side by Masood. Fielded by subfielder Kian Davis. Uh, and that is a substantial lead for Sussex of 161 runs. Leicestershire, promotion contenders, well, shot out for just 108. And I'm sure listeners in Worcestershire will be glad to hear that. Patel's 48, the only resistance really for Leicestershire. As McElroy bowls, and that's driven back to him by Masood. Carlson fields at mid off, and there's no run. 4 for 14 for Ari Cavalis for Sussex. Morgan's promotion hopes, it seems, slim going into this game after defeating Worcestershire and fading by the over largely over the course of uh, the three and uh, three quarters sessions we've had so far. Driven by Massoud, this time eluding the sprawling McElroy in his follow through. And uh, it's timed well enough to reach the ropes at long on. Shan Massoud moves ever onwards to 166. It is his first century for Yorkshire. 170 now. 438 for five. Division one scores lunch at Canterbury. Kent were bowled out for 446. Zach Crawley got 158 of them. Wickets shared between the Nottinghamshire bowlers. They are 15 for one. With uh, Michael Hogan back in the Kent team, formerly of Glamorgan, taking that early wicket. McElroy to Massoud. Short outside off stump, slapped away. Well fielded by a tumbling Billy Root at cover. There's no run. 438 for five, Yorkshire. 103 overs gone, so a further seven to get bonus points. Yorkshire just have the 12 runs needed for maximum. And Glamorgan one wicket for their second bowling point. At uh, Old Trafford, Middlesex. Well, they were 19 for five at one point, so I suppose 194 all out is a, a decent effort in the end. Sam Robson was uh, last out in the opener for 86. Three wickets apiece for Tom Bailey and for Luke Wood for Lancashire there. And at Edgbaston, struggling Division One side, North Ants were bowled out for 250. 77 for Gay, 78 for Nair. New recruit, Karen Nair. Seven wickets for Ollie Hannon Dolby for Warwickshire, who won without loss in reply. Lunch here at one o'clock because of a half hour delay at the start. And Carlson bowls to Revis, who plays it back to him, and there's no run. So Glamorgan losing their other spinner, Ben Calloway, to concussion. Dan Douthwaite, who replaces him, can bat but not bowl. As Carlson bowls and Revis plays it up to long on for a single, 439 for five. So with Douthwaite at eight, that leaves Glamorgan with quite a long batting lineup, but uh, short of a spin bowler. And uh, some surprise in the media box that uh, Glamorgan didn't replace uh, Callaway with uh, the. Uh, Left armour at premises Sodia. As that's driven up to uh, long on by Masood for a single. 440 for five. Or potentially if Rodri Lewis, an all rounder off spin bowler, who's uh, with Sasodia in the seconds down at Hove today. Played away on the offside by. Uh, Revis, and there is no run. Correction, it can't be at Hove because the, the first team are playing there. 
Sussex first team that is Carlson in bowls to Revis turns it away nicely on the leg side there's likely to be a couple of runs here especially as McElroy is unable to gather it cleanly throw comes in over the back of the uh, top of the stumps but they're comfortably home for two and indeed Rodri Lewis and Sisodia batting there together at the moment for Glamorgan seconds which is at the Blackstone Academy ground in Hove so they are in Hove I was right there but not at the main ground Carlson Bowles driven back to him by Revis no run end of the Carlson over four runs have come off it he's bowled 25 overs now one for 117 Yorkshire 442 for five Sean Massoud has 171 Revis has 26 eight runs to get for the maximum bowling point batting points for Yorkshire six overs in which to do it and uh, all very much in Yorkshire's control at the moment the game as we uh, wonder how long they're likely to bat on Jonathan Doidge is back with us yeah, just had to go and update uh, the listeners to BBC Radio York here's McElroy then left arm over the wicket and Masood left handed of course pushes that out into the offside and there is no run always want to know what lunch you've had <laughs> not had any yet uh, yesterday the, the debate continues was it beef or was it lamb um, well I thought it was beef but uh, so did I but I've been overruled by more people I've eaten plenty of both over the years but uh, definitely definitely thought it was beef myself who knows what it might have been <laughs> horse <laughs> it was McElroy to Masood who's flicking at one angle down the leg side good take by Chris Cook no run. Yes, the uh, magnificent French menu phrase in the uh, lower end establishment, hamburger à cheval. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't dress it up, it's a horse burger. A <laughs> uh, little bit of debate between Gorvin and McElroy before he makes his way in for this uh, latest delivery. Pleased to say that the two piles of sawdust at either end have not don't think been disturbed since they went out there following that delayed start oh Masood's had a flash at one here short of length it's a rare delivery really from McElroy that's been quite as short as that and having done it and got Masood to commit to a shot that he's not played very well might see a bit more of that now he got nowhere near <laughs> over the top of it his reaction said it all didn't it head in the air what on earth did I play that for McElroy thought for a moment it might have taken an edge. It's been a pretty good study of concentration out there, but he lost it there. 171 to Masood, who's flicking off the legs again once more. Stick it straight, and uh, it's going to go, even if it's just tick, 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 the singles box every time. Another one to him. One uh, to the total, 443 now for five. The partnership makes it to 50 which is why you'll be hearing the ripple of applause Richard Gibson good afternoon to you says uh, I know you can't control the weather especially in Wales but I rushed back from Sainsbury's <laughs> for the start brackets other supermarkets are available etc uh, couldn't you at least commentate on a few rolls of how's that when they uh, don't start on time yeah that'd be quite good fun as McElroy goes short to Revis from round the wicket and he's successfully out of the way of that one I remember we played loads of that at home. Obviously, probably the rainy days, I would have thought, in particular. Yeah, those uh, little six-sided rolly things. Not quite dice, are they? Um, no. Well, there are always yeah, too many, course. almost too many stumped. You had to sort of tweak the rules a bit, didn't you? You'd be on a hat trick and then you'd bowl a no ball. <laughs> you just think that's never going to happen, is it? Uh, McElroy in, and that's turned uh, square on the leg side by Revis. And uh, through for a single. Uh, good uh, morning, Jonathan, says Russ Walker. Pleasing to see Yorkshire making such encouraging progress. I think we need 550 plus small change before we declare. Lots of time at our disposal, mindful of the weather. 
Wishing you and your associates an excellent day. Thank you. Um, Nick Briggs says, uh, great four days of championship cricket at Scarborough last week, culminating in a convincing Yorkshire victory. Then to add the icing to the cake, I was back at North Marine Road yesterday for the over 50s finals day, where we, the Silver Tykes, were victorious in the great Fox Plate final for the second year in succession. Oof. Well done, you. Played <laughs> against Nick a few times in that over 50s, a couple of times. Not on the right side of the result, I've got to say. <laughs> Kieran Carlson to continue. 1 for 117 from uh, the River Taff end, and Revis plays that one all along the ground fairly gently up to long on. There is a very long single available. This group of spectators up behind. Uh, Long on, or long off as it now is for Masood, who've uh, got uh, silver letters spelling out happy birthday. So happy birthday to whichever spectator in the crowd is celebrating today. Carlson bowls to Masood, who steps back, gives himself room and forces through the offside for a comfortable single as Yorkshire tick towards the 450 mark, 446 for five. I would have thought they'd they'd bat another session if they can. Maybe stick Glamorgan in after tea tonight. Carlson bowls. Revis drives, but uh, fielded at cover by Sam Northeast, who hasn't seen too much of the ball today. How's he been batting this year? Has. Uh, out comes the reverse sweep from Revis. Doesn't make contact. Appeal from Carlson is turned down. Um, he's he's had his moments, but he hasn't been as imperial as he was last year, Sam Northeast, mm. when he really had a, a golden year. Just the one century in Championship cricket. As Revis is forward to Carlson, defending ball dribbles back down the pitch. Morgan's most consistent operators have been uh, five, six, seven, really. Carlson, Root, and Cook. As Carlson is in, Brevis tries the reverse again and has made a complete hash of it and is bowled. Glamorgan have uh, got a second bowling bonus point. Revis has gone for 28. I'm not quite sure why he adopted those tactics. The first reverse sweep he missed, and the second he missed and was dismissed. I think he might have clipped that on, you know. Um, not easy to tell from behind Chris Cook. Yeah, I think he, yeah, he has, hasn't he? I mean, it's missing leg. It's missing leg by some distance, and he's he's got something on it by the looks of things. Just see, we're looking at it now from front on, whereas we're just looking at a replay from behind him, which is where we are situated. Yeah, he must, he must have dragged that on. He kept, that's missing leg, isn't it? Well, what became oh, missing, leg, yes. What became leg, yeah. And he turned himself round. Yeah, so he's, uh, he needs to work on his execution there. Unfortunately, Matthew Revis, after those last couple of shots, uh, got himself out, unfortunately. 28 to him, 4.46 for six. Well, Glamorgan have got three wickets in the, the session. A bit reasonably satisfied. Yorkshire have added 116 runs. Obviously, from their very strong overnight position, Yorkshire have been in in charge by and large. But uh, Glamorgan just dragging things back a, a little bit. And if they can get through these last four, at least they had to have the, the minor satisfaction of having uh, dismissed Yorkshire rather than to, uh, having to wait for the declaration. As Don Bass is in as eight. Uh, not prolific, particularly prolific with the bat in Championship this season. A high score of 49. Uh, yeah, he's been batting a little bit lower down on quite a few occasions. Uh, down at eight. But uh, he can do the job. And certainly on a pitch like this, you would think that uh, he'll be capable of putting on a few. We've got a couple of more emails to get to while we've got a break, uh, Nick. Just a, a quick word on Bass, uh, while it's relevant. Uh, King Pear against Glamorgan is Headingley. Leg be uh, bowled by Nisa, no shot in the first innings. Mm. 
Leg before to McElroy in the second. Yeah, he had a pretty miserable first half of the season with the bat. Well, pretty miserable first half of the season, really, I guess. And uh, he's been out on loan, of course, to Somerset for a couple of weeks, to Warwickshire for a week. But he's been back and bowled pretty well at Scarborough last week. Um, Malcolm says, um, with regard appertaining to the, uh, the season, being a lost cause, points deduction, ruined games, um, great things are to emerge a stable opening pair and a future skipper in George Hill he thinks um, BBC West Yorkshire support at gmail.com McElroy to Masood for the first ball of this 107th over turned into the leg side no run and it's out Jonathan Doidge or remind me of yours at Nick Webb 2017 on the artist formerly known as Twitter X Nick Webb, 2017. Uh, Rev, by the way, Matthew Revis, bowled by Carlson for 28 of 46 deliveries. And uh, that included three fours. As McElroy comes in, left arm over to Masood, who's flicking it to Gorvin at mid on. No run, just the four needed then to tick off maximum batting points, a relative rarity for Yorkshire in recent seasons. A lot of talk back in Andrew Gales there about getting first innings runs on the board, not getting them often enough for his liking. And there's been a few occasions since uh, Otis Gibson's been head coach as well, where they probably haven't maximised some opportunities, but they're looking like doing so here as Masood flicks another single square on the leg side. And varying degrees of levels of wind or however you want to put that yesterday horizontal flags early in the day and then they were limp later on at the moment probably somewhere between the, the two and, uh, fairly overcast as it has been throughout it was pretty dim when we arrived this morning but it's not as as bad as that light wise now and perfectly playable McElroy switches to round the wicket to bowl to Bess, who does hang it out there. Wide of off stump. I think we're going to get uh, just two more deliveries here, you would imagine. Sam Shan Masu's doing a bit of gardening. <laughs> 12.59 showing on the scoreboard clock away to our right. 174 for Masu. Remember that Derek Randall in it? Hmm. <laughs> 1977, McElroy in again. He's running back, in fact, uh, now to his mark. Try and make sure they get through before one o'clock ticks over. And he has jogged all the way back. <laughs> but Don Bess has just had a wander over to square leg. Chat maybe with Mark Newell. In comes McElroy short. He's got underneath this one, Bess, but it's going to bounce well short of long leg. It will get him off the mark with a single. It is the end of the over. 12.59 still showing. The umpires, in fact, one o'clock is now showing. <laughs> but the umps, How hungry are the umps? Mm, the we're going to go. Quite peckish. Yep, we're off. That's it, 1,300 on the board. So Yorkshire have added uh, 118 runs in the morning session for the loss of three wickets. And their main man, Sean Massoud, is still there. 174, not out. The wickets to fall. Hill, leg before to Harris for 71. Tattersall caught Cook, bold Gorvin for six. And Revis, bold Carlson for 28. So commentary resumes on BBC Sport Online at 1.40 with Yorkshire. 448 for six at lunch.
We welcome to see our field now the boys and girls from St. Mary's Primary School. Who are going to be giving us a display together with the music coaches of their quick cricketing skills during the lunch interval? I've got some lunch schools from around the country. We'll start at the Blackstone Academy ground on the outskirts of Brighton. That's where the Northern Second Eleven are playing the final Second Eleven Championship match of the season, starting today against Sussex. Sussex won the toss up to the bowl and at lunch to Morgan. 114 for 7. The rest of these scores are all on day 2 of the LV Insurance County Championship. Starting at Edgbaston, where Warwickshire are one without loss at lunch, but that's our four passenger to dismiss for 250. Leicestershire were dismissed this morning by Sussex at home for 108 and at lunch Sussex 7 without loss and Sussex leading by 161 runs with all 10 second innings wickets remaining. Lunch at Bristol where there's been bad light and rain this morning. Lunch at Bristol sees down to 20 without loss and Trevor Gloucestershire by 357. Middlesex have been Yorkshire 448 for six at lunch, so the visitors still on top, but Glamorgan pegging them back a little bit this morning. Sean Massoud, their main man there, is still there on 174 not out. George Hill went for 71 wickets this morning for James Harris, Andrew Gorvin and Kieran Carlson, and Glamorgan fielding their first ever concussion replacement, Dan Douthwaite in for Ben Calloway, but not able to bowl because he's not the same type of bowler. Yorkshire 448 for six at lunch. For this match they're available free of charge from reception which is situated on the ground floor of the Patches Pavilion. That's where you can also purchase a copy of the 2023 Glamorgan yearbook or alternatively you can buy one and much much more from the Glamorgan Touch Shop. Sports is situated opposite to two. The shop will be open until just the turn of the park this evening. So, as always, a wide range of trick equipment and other items, including the replica, the walking kit, plus a range of recently published cricket boards. Now, as far as refreshments are concerned, food and drink can be purchased from the kiosk situated in the concourse area beneath the pavilion stand. Food and drink can also be purchased from the mobile unit beneath the cassette hand stand. Snacks and drinks can also be obtained from the vending machines situated at the rear of the indoor school, which is on the ground floor of the National Cricket Centre. The CT4 Museum of Welsh Cricket is open today. It's situated on the first floor of the National Cricket Centre and contains a number of displays celebrating the long and very proud heritage of cricket here in Wales. And amongst the displays, there's one celebrating. The long-standing friendship between Don Bradman and Doug Davis. Don Bradman, the Australian batting maestro, and Doug, a cricketer here in the South Wales. They were pen friends for over 40 years, and we're very grateful to Doug Spann for having a selection of the correspondence. There's also a special display celebrating the 75th anniversary, which happened last month, of the Morgan winning the county championship title for the first ever time. Back in 1940. There's also another one celebrating the success of Welsh school day. Sophia Smith, who, besides playing for Western Story and the Invincibles, represented the England of the Mind team earlier this year in the ICC World Cup in South Africa. There are also a limited, sorry, there's also a selection of second hand cricket books and old Glamorgan books which are available for purchase in the museum and the museum until the end of the museum. Finally, Glamorgan Cricket would like to welcome everyone here today to Survivor Gardens. We stand against all forms of discrimination and there is no place for it in our schools. We will embrace and celebrate differences everywhere, knowing that with diversity together 
Dedicated to racing the game in Europe and Open Cricket, you can report any issue or concern in confidence by alerting the university. Thank you very much for helping us to raise the game and to call out any form of discrimination.
Good afternoon, welcome back to Sophia Gardens for this second session on day two of this county championship match between Glamorgan and Yorkshire. Nick Webb and Jonathan Doidge with you as Yorkshire resume on 448 for six. Sean Massoud is 174 not out, Don Bass is one not out. Wickets in the morning session, George Hill 71, Jonathan Tassel 6. Matt Ravis, 28, a wicked piece for James Harris, Andy Gorvin and Kieran Carlson, but the Morgan bowling figures are not a thing of beauty. And uh, Yorkshire on the verge of a maximum haul of batting bonus points, just two runs away. Three overs for Glamorgan to try and get another three wickets for maximum bowling points. The players have been given a guard of honour onto the field by uh, local school children, which is always good to see. And it'll be Kieran Carson to resume after lunch as we try and kick our screens into action. 4.48 for six. Carlson then from the River Taff end to bowl to Don Bess. Just a single to his name and uh, he's forward defending it. Back down the pitch and there is no run. So Colin Ingram is at slip. There's a backward point, a sweeper on the cover boundary. A normal cover fielder mid off, mid on, mid wicket as uh, Bess steps back and plays straight to cover. There's no run. There's a deep mid-wicket as well, and a backward square comes short fine leg 
for the mistimed sweep, presumably, as uh, Bass steps back and forces through the onside. There's a chase for Douthwaite round the mid-wicket boundary. And Bess is back for a couple of runs, which bring up the 450 for Yorkshire, much to the delight of their travelling faithful. Yep, maximum batting points. A relative rarity, but not, uh, not completely against the run of play, as it were. Carlson is in to bowl to Bass, who comes down the wicket. There's an Peel, a very optimistic one since Bass had come a long way down as the ball bobbled up to backward point. I think just uh, Kieran Carlson getting into the session by exercising his vocal cord without <laughs> any realistic hope. <laughs> Clearing his throat after lunch. 4.50 for six. Carlson in to bowl and he's beaten Bass there. Poking forward through to Chris Cook who removes the bales just in case Bess though had just about left his uh, right foot anchored Carlson sending long arm back towards the birthday celebrant in the crowd as uh, Bess drives that one pleasantly through wide mid off that'll be away to the ropes for his first boundary Bess moves to seven Yorkshire four five four for six and Carlson looking with a rather rueful grin on his face so happy birthday to uh, the celebrant up there at long on not uh, not his best delivery and Don Bess it's always lovely to see one along the carpet all the way which that was four from the moment it left the bat so takes it to seven at his first boundary we're going to see James Harris at this uh, Cathedral Road end Masood on strike on 174 Ben Nielsen thinks that Matthew Revis's dismissal was a daft shot <laughs> he's already missed one of those shots earlier in the over no matter how much he was supposed to press on he says there has to be better options for me not, not as much daft shot as just needed to execute it better didn't he as I said I think when he was out just uh, sort of missed the first one and then mis-executed the one that he eventually went to by clipping it on there'll be uh, plenty of time to practice and I don't think it's going to be vital to the outcome of this one there'll be other things going to play before anything like that uh, dismissal gets cited as Harris bowls and Masood opens the face and runs that one backward a point down to third man. Another single. Is this the first time Harris has operated from this uh, Cathedral Road end? I think his previous spells have all been from the river end. You might be right. Yeah, McElroy's right. swapped about a bit, hasn't it? Mm. Harris, shirt hanging out, collar up. Asks for one or two people to move around in the field. He's going to go with third man, long leg, mid-wicket, two slips, point, cover, mid-off, and uh, he's captain at mid-on. Bowling here to the right-handed Don Bess, with a little bit of shape in towards the right hand. It was a big swipe <laughs> wide of off stump. Interesting to see now that they've finally ticked off that maximum batting points what their intent is here a lot of overs left today 65.4 plus two further days gut feeling is that they'll just keep going there's little pressure on these tail enders though it's uh, quite a nice uh, feeling I guess to come in and play with some freedom with uh, Sean Massoud still at the other end yeah here comes Harris again wider of off stump this time and Bess is into a square drive it's a shot that he plays well generally speaking found Douthwaite on this occasion who's out of point pitch looks in good nick I just had a walk round actually went down to ground level first time I've been down the river Taff end round the back of the stand not a lot going on there's not a major walkway is around the back there it's quite a, quite no. a narrow path I imagine it'd be interesting when it's full here for internationals after you sir no no after you no please <laughs> that sort of feel about it 
Harris in again. Ball once more just gently shapes in really towards Bess, who plays it from the crease into the offside this time. Well, the thing is that there aren't actually that many people up at that end of the ground because of the uh, the planning restrictions, obviously, when they're reconfiguring uh, Sophia Gardens. So it's a maximum of what, about seven rows of uh, seating mm. at that end of the ground. Seven rows of fairly steep seating as well, so you get a good view, I imagine, from wherever you sit down there. Harris making his way in again past umpire Peter Hartley, and that's a lovely shot by Bess. Again, typical Don Bess shot. Any width outside off stump, and it's uh, short of length. He'll punch it away, he'll drive it away, cut it away, those sort of shots. And with this one, yeah, just a punch square on the offside. Lovely shot. Yeah, it's a, a good place to watch from at that end because it is... Uh, Pretty close to the action if you're reasonably straight to the the wicket. You really feel as though you're on top of things. Short straight boundaries here at Sapphire Gardens. In comes uh, Harris again, number nine on his back. Fairly close into the stumps, once more a little bit of shape. Best does get an inside contact on it towards mid-on where Carlson fails to complete that over at 459 for six with Bess 11, Masood 175. And uh, we saw Jaffa Chohan, Yorkshire's leg spinner, who's yet to play uh, a first-class game for the county, but played in some of the T20s earlier in the season. He was out having a run around at lunchtime, so clearly here, I've not seen him uh, at all yesterday, don't know if he's joined the squad since the start of the match yesterday or maybe come down this morning or if he was here all the time but uh, wasn't visible yesterday if he was Carlson to come around the wickets for the left handed Sean Massoud on 175 not out as uh, he adds one to that, tucking it away neatly on the leg side. They won't come back as Byron Fields adds deep square. He was talking to you last night about going big, wasn't he? He certainly uh, turned that into a big hundred. Yeah, just looking at his, his best uh, scores, his highest first-class score, 239 for Derbyshire against Sussex last season. Got a 219 for them against Leicestershire as well. As Carlson bowls and Bess is on the defensive playing it back to the bowler. Um, he's had four of the scores north of 150. So he's kind of ticking off his own little <laughs> top six list as it were at the moment. Carlson into bowl. Uh, oh, there's almost a running mix up. Sean Massoud is sent back and uh, just about gets home in time. Pass prop forward, never had any intention of going for the single as the ball just ran out off uh, an edge and possibly a pad. And Sean Massoud was dashing around to uh, give memories of his uncertain running yesterday, saying he's been. Until then, rather more certain today. Carlson bowls, best drives. Carlson fields well in his follow through, tumbling across in front of the non striker. Second 11's in action today. Yorkshire at Guildford against Surrey. The hosts there, 109 for three. Wickets for Leach, Milnes, and Gunn for Yorkshire. Carlson bowls, best plays defensively on the leg side. And there is no run. Time of year when uh, a few trialists around. Morgan seconds down at Hove. The academy ground there is best defence. That one out on the offside. No run. And the over 460 for six Yorkshire. And that is the 110 over mark. So it's 5-2 on uh, bonus points in Yorkshire's favour. Uh, the second 11, Glamorgan, have uh, recovered slightly into 207 for 8 in the 35th over, so it's been lively going there. Um, 
minor recovery, well, a hundred partnership, in fact, between Rodri Lewis and Prem Sisodia. Lewis just out for 46, Sisodia is 40, not out. And uh, two candidates who might have uh, come into the first team to replace Callaway, but uh, Glamorgan opting for Dan Douthwaite, even though he's not allowed to bowl. James Harris is and uh, he's going to bowl at this cathedral road end here to Shan Masood one slip in place and in he comes now then Paul shaping away from the left hander but he's flicking it into the leg side which tells you something about the line on which it started he's picked up two they've got a third and a third man on a fine leg also Douthwaite is out there had a fairly squarish mid-wicket sweeper and also a square cover sweeper. In fact, Matt Douthway going all the way around to square leg, deep backward. Harris then. In he comes again past Hartley. Once more. A little bit of shape about the delivery, but Masood watched it well and just punched it into the offside. Well, has sanded the fielding, no run. 233 deliveries Shan Masood has faced here. He's got a fairly constant strike rate, hasn't he, right throughout? Just playing the game on his own terms. Yeah, 70-odd, 70 76, 16 fours. And this 178 not out. The sun offers to uh, break its way through. That won't do any harm for the batters out there. Harris, that latest delivery, once again, Masood solidly behind it. It's been nice to see uh, David Lloyd, the Glamorgan captain, back around the place after his loan spell at Derbyshire, albeit not able to play in this one through injury. Harris in again, Masood, I think he's trying to flick that to leg and it ends up going fairly straight. Carlson around from mid-off to field it. Yeah, Jaffa Chohan, as I mentioned, was having a run around with a physio and uh, missing a potential possible call-up because of a uh, finger issue. I think it was the official line given last week. But you wouldn't be surprised to see him get a chance at first-class cricket before the end of the season with a couple of games still to go. Masood pushing this latest delivery to Jamie McElroy, who is just to the onside of straight. No run. Well, it's the ideal opportunity, isn't it, to uh, get youngsters into the team with, uh, unfortunately, no promotion Issues depending upon it for Yorkshire. And uh, virtually no chance of Glamorgan as things stand unless there's a cricketing miracle in this game. Harris in again. Masood flicks it to McElroy but takes him on. And he's been very successful with those sort of little dinks either side of the wicket, particularly to the onside throughout uh, today's play. And he's done so again. Another one to him. He'll keep the strike on 179. And after 111 overs, Yorkshire 463 for the loss of six wickets. Scoring rate still, as it has been, I think, just about throughout, Nick, uh, above uh, the four and over. Yes, it was uh, 4.5 at one point, I think. Certainly the afternoon session yesterday, Yorkshire went at fives. As Glamorgan were unable, really, to get any sort of control at all. Yorkshire still very much in the driving seat in this game. As Carlson starts new over, right arm around with his off spin. Past umpire Newell, bowls to Sean Masood, who steps back and plays it into the offside. McElroy round from point employs the good old fast bowler's size 11 to stop it. Or as I said last week, when Zach Chapel did the same at Scarborough, where's the nearest village? <laughs> at least the ball ran truly and he made contact as uh, Bess down the wicket, driving up to 
long on single taken just not much not a feeling at all really is there of, of them being challenged here you know uh, what I'm saying yep As, uh, that's played through the offside by Sean Massoud and up to wide long off for a single they're just able to knock it round and this is not a pitch that's taking any sharp spin and Carlson really is just plugging away one wicket to his credit today as Bass plays that one up to mid off no run in classic cricket cliche fashion we're probably only really going to find out about it when both sides <laughs> have batted in this instance because if a side comes out and bowls well Yorkshire may do, might not, but they may do, then we'll we'll get more idea. Carlson bowls a bit quicker, whipped by Bass to mid wicket. All oh, the sand fields. No run. Yeah, this is not Glamorgan's most threatening attack of the season by any means without Van der Huchten. Nisa only playing half a dozen games this season. As Bass plays this one through the offside, we'll pick up a couple of runs here, surely. No, to deep point. Um, that was strange. I thought that was a fairly long two there because Byram had a, a lot of ground to cover, but they just opted for the single. Bass has 13, Shan Masood 181. It's 467 for six. And just looking in from the outside, because we only, obviously, when we you know we're around on the circuit we see each other a couple of times a season if that and some years and so you just get a snapshot of the opposition but it does without those two that you mentioned it feels fairly significantly blunted if you've got that pair and you've got a McElroy backing up as well um, you know, that suddenly makes it a different feel like you know Yorkshire as I said missing Matthew Fisher here so they're not at their strongest bowling wise but they'd feel like there's potential for a, some more threat as uh, in comes Harrison, bowls at best, punches back to him, no run. Yeah, Glamorgan did manage to bowl Worcestershire out twice with only wicket, one wicket from Van der Huchten before he went off injured, but that was a considerably more helpful, or less batter-friendly pitch. And uh, with little help from the pitch, it is uh, looking, as you say, like a, a slightly blunt attack in this game for Glamorgan. in once more and that uh, misguides that one down the leg side and best clips it nicely off his legs down to fine leg for one I think um, the other thing is you know what different points of difference have you got to offer well left arm spinner unfortunately can't bowl Douthwaite's come on can't bowl as well so they are to allow them that at least uh, you know they're a man down in terms of number um, off spinner left arm Left arm and right arm are opening bowlers, uh, both of similar pace. Yeah, Glamorgan have got four bowlers all working at probably similar paces, haven't they, in this game? Yeah. Three so there's, right arm, one left arm. There's no massive point of difference pace-wise. Harris is in again. Masood has a flash at this one as he's done a few during this knock. He's allowed a few of those, I guess. 181 and uh, misses one on the rise through to Cook. But Yorkshire, they've got Ben Code again, who's, you know, just on the nippier side of, of medium, early 70s. But he's he feels, you know, much more accurate than what we've generally seen from the Glamorgan bowlers. And, and I'll take um, McElroy out of that comment, if you like, because he's definitely been significantly more on it. Harris has bowled better today, but still looking at just the one wicket on the board as uh, Masood drives him. It's a wide delivery once again, and there you go. Just as I'm giving him a bit of praise for how he's bowled by comparison to yesterday, he throws a loose one up, half volley, wide of off stump, and Masood, he just, just gently eases his hands through that, nothing more. Timed it superbly. Four runs. 472 for six. He's on to 185, the Yorkshire captain. So Yorkshire, uh, Ben Code. We've got Ben Cliff bowling uh, right arm seam up. So two right arm seamers that will probably be opening the bowling. Matthew Revis has got a bit more pace um, than Ben Code. Not, not sure how he clocks up 
against Ben Cliff on the speed gun. But he's got the height as well, so you've got a little bit of a point of difference there. Off spin of Don Bess, of course. As uh, Masood flicks a straighter delivery, and Harris is remonstrating with himself. You can tell the body language is not happy that having thrown it wide, he's now overcompensated and been picked off for two through straight mid wicket. 187 now to Masood, 474 for six. Uh, who else have they got uh, in the Yorkshire? I've got George Hill, who's different again, feels more skiddy trajectory. He's more um, likely to get the ball to swing. And, of course, Jordan Thompson, who can do both. If, the, if there's a little bit of an offer and a swing in there, he'll be able to do that. And he can certainly hit the seam as well. In comes Harris again, and Masood flicking that to the onside of straight. McElroy fielding, no run. What Matthew Fisher would have given you over and above all of that, he, he's got the most pace of the lot, and he's got the height as well. He's, yeah, just a beautiful action. Really good, generally speaking, really good wicket to wicket bowler who'll do something with it. Freddie Jones asks, would Douthwaite be allowed to bowl if he agreed to try and replicate a similar action to Callaway? Well, I guess he would if he if he could bowl off spin, but I've never seen Douthwaite bowling spin even in the uh, the silly stages of matches. I dare say Yorkshire might say, go on then, give it a try. <laughs> yeah, there's... Um, yeah, it's just that they can't replace a spinner with a seamer, basically. So, yeah, I suppose if Douthwaite could bowl spin... It probably would be allowed as uh, Carlson bowls and this bill for LBW as Bass came across his stumps. Did he get any bat on that? It's run down to fine leg for a single. It is a leg by, but the appeal was turned down as we see a replay on that one. Hmm. There's a lot going on there. Bass a long way across. And an immediate appeal from slip, keeper and bowler. Not out, said Mr. Newell. Four, seven, five for six. Carlson bowls on leg stump, turned away by Masood to Harris at Backwood Square. I guess the next potential Glamorgan bowler would be Billy Root. Bowling a bit of off spin. As uh, that one is driven by Masood, back past Carlson for a single up to long off. But uh, Root has only bowled in the very closing stages of that uh, game at uh, Derby, where Glamorgan didn't take a wicket all day on the last day of the game. Carlson bowls to Bass. Another appeal for LBW. Bass had come down the wicket and got a bit of a tangle. Mark Newell again is not interested. Masood's knock, it just it's almost like he's just knocking it around in the nets, isn't it really? Yep. Um I don't know if that's a comment on both the pitch, the this pace or lack of in the pitch and the and the way that Glamorgan have bowled, but just made it look easy. Carlson bowls, best drives, a couple of bounces up to mid off. No run. Root in that uh, Derbyshire game for the minute of it. For Yorkshire listeners who haven't heard me uh, which I'm on about bowled with both arms in the space of one over as Carlson bowls driven into the offside by Bess no run bowled five balls of off spin and the uh, the final ball of slow left arm just to prove he could <laughs> I'm told Ben Callaway has actually done that in the past uh, at sort of age group level, bowled uh, both right and left arm spin. Haven't seen him yet try it for the first. 476 for 614 overs gone, and Yorkshire just uh, poddling along nicely since lunch. No real acceleration. No, they've, they've actually hit the field quite a few times in the last couple of overs. Um, you can see Bess has got the intent to try and get on with things, but he's whacked it to the fielder on the deck a few times. 
So it's going to be James Harris to continue, and he's bowling right arm round the wicket now at Masood. Good delivery, which is angled in and then holds its line and has a player on 188 playing and missing. So uh, a little moral victory, as they say, for the bowler, but doesn't take a wicket. Masood just has a wander and recomposes himself with a bit of gardening. Still, just one delivery below 60 overs remaining in the day. A lot of cricket still to be played. wonder what position we'll be in come 6 o'clock-ish. As Harris... Oof, now then, <laughs> Masood drops that just off the cut strip into the leg side. There is a fielder at uh, straight mid-wicket who's fairly tight, Al Hassan. And two or three strides from Masood, two or three strides from Bess, and then Masood hit the brakes and Bess had to turn tail and managed to get in, fortunately for him, there wasn't a direct hit. That is the, the danger, clearly the danger sometimes with Shah Masood. When we saw him do it early in the season in one innings, you thought maybe it's just a bad day, but every time you watch him play, you know that that potential is there now <laughs> as he pushes this one out to mid-off and Carlson does the fielding. No run. Yeah, T is meant to be at 340, but uh, with 32 overs left is the overriding factor, and I think that's likely to be, yeah. Well, like about 4 o'clock, isn't it? Yeah, 10 to 4, 5 to 4, maybe 4 o'clock. Depending on how much Cal Carlson bowls, I guess. Harris turns then. And in he comes. And that is dropped out into the offside where Masood punches... Another single. Um, and thanks to Harrison Allen, Yorkshire's analyst who's listening in and who's just uh, overheard me what I was saying about Ben Cliff and the speed gun and how he, share, you know, how he measures up against uh, some of his teammates. Um, he says, we have Cliffy averaging 76.5 on the speed gun in a couple of twos games this year, maximum 81. So a little bit generally by the sound of it a little bit quicker than Ben Code but not really at uh, Matthew Fisher pace here's Harris it's short of length and best misses out on one he's trying to turn down to long leg so dot ball I guess also Matthew Revis is uh, well Harrison might come back to me with a comment on this but uh, I think around about sort of 80 in the 80s when he bangs it in with the slowest. I know Jordan Thompson, there was talked two or three seasons ago that he put on an average of about three or four miles an hour during the winter. Harris is in, and uh, that is punched by Bess up to McElroy at mid-off, who's wringing his right hand, having fielded it. Clearly not managed to catch that right. End of the over, though. So 115 gone in this... Uh, Yorkshire first innings, the only innings of the match so far, they're 477 for six, having won the toss. Seems like an age ago yesterday <laughs> morning, and uh, decided to bat first. Masood 189, Bess 14. Yes, and just uh, carrying out a few checks, this might be the most overs that Carlson has bowled in an innings now, as he goes into his 31st. I'll just have to uh, check the Derbyshire game, as he bowled a lot there. As any comes, bowls to Masood, who takes a single down to long on very comfortably indeed. 4, 7, 8 for 6, Masood to 192. After Hand over for a potential 200 before too long. Bass on 14. Carlson bowls. Bass turns it away through the leg side. Single taken out to deep square. Thanks again to Harrison. Matthew Revis averaging 78.3, maximum 83.3. Thank you. Carlson to Masood, who plays that into the offside, fielded at 
cover by Ul Hassan, no run. So Carlson bowled 30 overs, not for 102 against Derbyshire in their uh, second innings. He bowled 30 overs in the second innings of the first match of the season against uh, Gloucestershire. As uh, that is turned on the leg side by Masood. No run. So it's certainly the most he's bowled in an innings this season. Two for 123. And last season he only bowled 21 overs in total. As that's uh, punched away, flat batted through the offside by Shan Masood for a single. <laughs> it's rather strange in that they keep pinching these... Uh, fairly rapid singles but sometimes when you think there might be a, a two available out somewhere close to the boundary they don't uh, always attempt it there we are Masood's got enough runs under his belt to uh, allow him a few vagaries of running Carlson to Bess who's defending that one back to the bowler 480 for 6 it remains after 116 overs Scoring rate, 4.14. And that's uh, Sean Massoud moving on towards what he's clearly aiming, hoping to make into a third double century. He's, uh, he's also made a 199 <laughs> in a, a match between Islamabad and Karachi Whites. Ten years ago, that one. That was uh, the first time he was close to a double ton didn't actually tick that box until April of last year he's on strike here facing James Harris who continues at this Cathedral Road end of the ground straight delivery flicked into the onside Al Hassan does the fielding lobs it to McElroy, designated ball shiner by the looks of things at mid on. Turned out into a lovely afternoon here in Cardiff. Harris wide on the crease, right arm round the wicket, <laughs> and Masood again flicks it in the general direction of McElroy who's had to come in 10 yards to field and that was uh, a good decision on the running front just almost taking the pace off the ball Shan Masood so he can get through for the one hit it too well and obviously running a bigger risk the ball's going to get to the fielder that stride or two more quickly and if they are a good swooper <laughs> you know what I'm saying and he's swooping get down low pick it up and maybe do all of that and hit the wickets they practice it every morning in the little training drills then maybe you could be in peril switching back to over the wicket <laughs> Don Best needs a bit of chalk there he's pulled that again comment on the pitch the pace or lack of in the pitch because he's banged it in halfway down Best is uh, looking out somewhere down towards the city as if he's pulled that one over the stand but actually got it right on the end of the bat mm. no no run just wobbled in the top pocket and stayed out Those of you watching in black and white, the pink is next to the yellow. Ba -bum. Harris turns. And makes his way in again past umpire Peter Hartley. Shape in towards Bess. Who looks like he's trying to play that straighter than it went, which was backward of square leg. But he'll still get one run for it and checks the toe of his bat once again. These lads, you know, they look at the bats. They? How, many, how many bats do you think they get a season? <laughs> You'd love to give one a try. Just they probably get most of us through our careers in club cricket. Oh, no, I can't use that again. It's uh, <laughs> cloth that one a couple of times today. Oh, yeah. Chuck it back in the bag. Harry switching back to round the wicket. Bowling to Shan Masood on 192. It's wide of off stump and he has hit that straight to short extra cover and he won't get a third double century 
because it's been taken by Sam Northeast. It was all a bit slow motion, really, but uh, at last, I guess you'd have to say from Glamorgan's point of view, uh, James Harris has found the right length with a little bit of shape away. He's just reached for that one, Sham Masood, and he's hit it straight to Sam Northeast and gone for 192, 482 for seven Yorkshire in the 117th over. Great stuff, though, from Sham Masood. And uh, good to hear the home support as well acknowledging what has been a, a super knock, hasn't it? Full of risky shots and lots and lots and lots of uh, singles where he's taken on the field. He'll be disappointed not to have ticked the double century box, but he wanted a big one, and I think you've got to say he got one. Indeed, Sam Northeast pouching a good diving catch down low to his right at cover, but uh, it was that. Uh, as if for a moment, as though that had been hit all along the ground because there was virtually no reaction from uh, the Glamorgan fielders initially, as uh, as if they hadn't been trying to get rid of this guy since, uh, what, early, early yesterday when he came in at three. 98 for one. He's steered Yorkshire to the heights of 482 for seven, has Sean, Sean Massoud and... Uh, that is undoubtedly a position from which Yorkshire can uh, attempt to dominate the course of the match. There's Jordan Thompson, averaging 27 in first-class cricket in the eight matches that he's played this season, but I see he's struck more sixes than anyone else. You may have done. I don't keep records on that sort of thing, I've got to say, but uh, he did strike some last week at Scarborough. That's the sort of feature of his batting if he, if he has a, a going day. Um, the ball will tend to disappear and he had a couple of decent days last week, 30 odd in the first innings and then in the second he made uh, 64 from 75, yeah, four sixes and four fours in that left handed um, there are rarely dull moments when Jordan's batting and Durham are now officially promoted from Division 2 even though they're not playing at the moment, courtesy of Leicestershire's failure to uh, register batting points today. Durham are up to the first division, well done to them. Harris then to Jordan Thompson, who goes back and across, and there he go. That wasn't dull, was it? He's gone first ball, LBW. It looked a really good shout, and uh, all of a sudden, James Harris... He's on a hat-trick, and uh, Tomo has gone for a gold, and Yorkshire 482 for eight. I don't think on first uh, viewing you can have too many arguments with that decision. We'll just have a benefit of the replay for those who can see the streaming. From keep a touch low is my initial impression. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, he's gone back, hasn't he? angled in towards him it, I mean it, it hits him in front of all three where it's going on to can't be certain but it felt like a good shout and no great surprise to see Peter Hartley lift the finger of doom struck just you think just in line that. just out yeah. Like everything in county championship, umpires call Johnson. Yeah, it is. it's <laughs> actually marginal on where it actually hits him, yes. I think. So, um, but he'll, he'll obviously say he's not out. Would undoubtedly have <laughs> smashed into the stumps, <laughs> but uh, he's going to see it again slowed down. In yeah, terms point of where of it's tracked, in, fractionally, ooh, yeah, whether that's yeah. on off stump or fraction outside. <laughs> Yeah, you're going to need to see that with all the technology, aren't you? Um, <laughs> there's some doubt as to whether it strikes him in line or not, but he's, I guess he's knocking, probably knocking out middle. Um, anyway, Peter Hartley didn't hang around no. to debate the decision. Jordan Thompson has gone. And ben Code, as I said, didn't I? He'd be disappointed if he was batting 11 and he's been sent out at 10. <laughs> uh, just to clear up Sean Massoud's knock, by the way, 192 from 256 balls, 361 minutes he was out there, and he hit 17 fours, that uh, strike rate. Not that it matters, really, but uh, 75 precisely. Six hours at the crease, that's a long time. The likes of which most of us can only ever dream of. <laughs> In a season? <laughs> 482 for eight. 
as uh, Kieran Carlson will start the uh, the next over. Perhaps I could uh, have the honour of Harris's hat-trick ball as well, in case he achieves that. 482 for eight. There's uh, Code and Bess are the partners. Bass on 16 will take the first ball of the new over, comes down the wicket and plays it to short mid on. So Glamorgan are going to have a substantial time to bat, it seems, today. Unless we get a real tail end flourish from the visitors. Carlson bowls. Reverse sweep from Bass and it's running towards the boundary. What did it hit on the way through, if anything? Bat. Oh, he got Bass on it. Mm. That went almost directly behind the, uh, the stumps. And... Uh, I think it might even have gone through Cook's legs or just past his outstretched pad. I don't think it bounced that much again, Nick. So if you think he's trying to play it square and it looks like it's not bounced that much, so he's got the bottom edge of the bat on it, which hence pulling it round that bit further straight behind him. Bass moves on to 20 and plays the next ball to mid wicket and there's no run. Just signs. Well, I mean, with that ball and the Harris LBW, that uh, the ball isn't getting up that much. Yeah, so that's uh, clearly going to be interesting in Yorkshire when they've got 480 odd on the board. Carlson bowls, bit of turn there, played off the back foot by Bass into the covers, no run. So Glamorgan will definitely have to uh, apply themselves, accumulate rather than speculate too much. Best down the wicket, bit of turn again. He'll be keen to see that, even if he was hit on the pad by that one. Bess, who will almost undoubtedly be bowling his off breaks at some point, maybe the over before tea. As he drives at a wide one, gets it over cover, and uh, Byram slips close to the boundary but manages to recover to keep it down for a single Bess has taken the bowling with that 487 for 8 here on BBC Sport Online if Jonathan has got a, an update uh, in a few minutes might be a, a venture for him to uh, be replaced by Mr Bevan you're not coming in no <laughs> Too much like trouble, you, Bevan. <laughs> These airwaves are sacred. <laughs> and Edward's been on them longer than most, as uh, Jonathan Deutsch will be back in half an hour or thereabouts. 56 overs remaining in the day, so another 24 before the T interval, when there may well be a change of innings. As here comes James Harris on a hat trick for Glamorgan. Can he do it? Harris runs away from us, bowls to Dom Bess, who defends. No hat trick for James Harris. Check in the press area, is it? Uh why isn't he declared now rather than just going on? Because the forecast tomorrow is not at all good. Mm, it's a bit variable, isn't it? Some suggest, some forecasts suggest the rain might be through in the morning. And but the point is, you know, 482 on a slow pitch and the yeah. are lacking in confidence. Get to 500. Well, if they can. Harris to Bass and he... Bangs that one to mid off, no run. Perhaps there'll be less entertaining running now. Sean Massoud has uh, departed. Yeah, he'd slow down, didn't he? Uh, well, obviously, he was looking at 200. He's just objective. knocking it round, really, milking it. Yeah. But he failed. 17 boundaries in his 192, uh, doubling his previous Yorkshire best. And this is fifth match. Harris bowls and Bess gets a bit tucked up and plays to Al Hassan at cover. And there's no run. So Harris now has three for 127. 
Possible five for on, I suppose, if he finishes them off. Not probably one of Harris's uh, favourite fivers, even if he does get there. Well, somebody said he could nip in with the cheeky little five for. <laughs> As, uh, he runs away from us. Balls down leg side. Best gets something on it. It is just saved inside the fine leg boundary. And I just take the single. I think that's Gorvin down there in the far distance at the River Taff end. 488 for eight. As uh, McElroy doing the polishing. And uh, new batter Ben Code is on strike. He's averaging 17 this season. 106 runs to his credit. Not bad for number 11. Well, he's 10 today. He's been he's promoted. Today. Yeah. Harris is in. Bowls and Code hits that firmly enough to cover. No run. With uh, Ben Code, the figure that uh, wor will worry Welsh supporters is that uh, his 28 wickets have come at 19.85. And if you're yeah, he's a regular he's bowler and going under 20, uh, you're doing something right. A, uh, yeah, he's used for bowler. I've seen him bowl quite a bit. Especially on television, tall man gets it down. This is his ninth match of the season. As uh, Harris in to code, and uh, he's off the mark here, playing it nicely enough through point. Deathweight chasing, and be back for a second run. 490 for eight. Yorkshire. Lots of uh, overs left to be bowled in this match if the weather doesn't intervene. 54 overs uh, today and uh, possibly 96 apiece in the last two days. So Yorkshire will hope that this uh, weather won't interfere too much because they are in a very good position. But uh, it does um, puzzle me rather, rather than amaze me, it just puzzles <laughs> why they don't give themselves more time to try and dismiss Glamorgan twice, because uh, if Glamorgan get to 350 odd, which presumably be around that figure for the follow on, then they'll have saved the game, but uh, the Yorkshiremen, they've always known their cricket, and they know best. <coughs> Carson then comes in and bowls the first ball of the over and Bess is off the back foot and tries to hammer it away but it just trickles to short mid on which will tell us again as we've seen many times Nick you can hammer it as hard as you like and then it doesn't come on to you just trickle along the ground Carlson in driven this time and uh, there's a single which is parried First of all, by Sam Northeast out to the man at mid off. And they go through for a single. Yes, yeah, looking back through the records, I believe it's the first time Carlson has bowled more than 30 overs. So I was innings. just beginning to wonder that. 30, the 30 mark twice this season. 33rd over. It comes in, bowls, and Cole is forward. No show of aggression at the moment. In he comes, Carlson again, and tosses this one up, and it's a uh, thick outside edge. You go for a quick single, Harris hurls it in, but Don Bess is home. Cole moves on to two. Bess is on 22. No doubt discussions going on between Otis Gibson, the coach, Mahmoud, the captain, and director of cricket, a well-known Darren Goff. Here's the next ball, which is driven firmly down to long on. It's run rate still over 4.11. In comes Carlson Bowles. And this is defended by Code. And that is the end of the over. And it's 493 for the loss of eight wickets. So we've seen, what have we seen, five wickets fall today. And the main news from the county championship as a whole is that Durham's
promotion has been assured because of uh, Leicestershire's failure with the bat. Leicestershire in third place cannot now catch Durham, so they're assured of a top two place and almost certainly they'll win it. Well, many congratulations to them. They're such a good side. I think we said down here, Nick, when we saw them only the second game of the season. They look such a good side. They're well led. They got some good signings from uh, loan signings and also signings from abroad that they've kept all season. Harris bowls and that's pulled by Bass down to square leg for a single 494 freight. And uh, in Marcus North, as we knew here, a very good cricket man and uh, they deserve it and I'm sure that they'll hold their own in the first division next season and it'll save you a 300 mile trip <laughs> indeed unless is, we uh, go up there of course on a <laughs> one day match that would be fun uh, yes <laughs> oh no uh, 494 for 8 yes yeah. well Paul Martin uh, travelled all the way to Neath and didn't see a ball bowled as Harris bowls a full toss that is um, just about dug out by code Tempted yes. Yorker just uh, over pitch slightly. Do you remember the, the coach came in here and spoke to Martin for a good hour and a half in the afternoon session? Ryan Campbell, yeah. And said, I don't believe in draws. No. And they've won a lot of games this season. One of the few counties that decides at times, yeah, we'll, we'll take a gamble and leave them a mm. reasonable target and give a time to our bowlers. Morgan was saved by the rain against Durham here in Cardiff and batted through the final day to draw it in Chancellor Street as Harris bowls and yeah. uh, Codes takes a big swing at that, gets it off the bottom of the bat, back to the bowler, no run. Uh, Chris Cox saved Glamorgan, didn't he, up there? Yes. Got a hundred? Yeah, I told him, he saw, saw him the night before, I said... About through the final you coach him, did you? We told yeah. him. Get that front, get yeah. that front foot forward. Yeah, no. <laughs> but... Yeah. Well, it, I'd seen Cook back through the final day against here, Notts, yeah. here against Knotts and over in Bristol as well, so I knew he could do it. Against Mr Broad and Co. Harris bowls a short pitch delivery that uh, Code manages to get out of the way of. In the Asia Cup, India posted 356 for two against Pakistan in Colombo. Virat Kohli 122 not Shubman. out. Uh, Shubman Gill f briefly with Glamorgan made 58 Rohit got a half century unbeaten centuries for both uh, Kohli and Ra KL Rahul it named a few good players eh? yes as uh, Harris runs in balls a swing by code head up and the ball goes off the bottom edge and the pad down to backward square for a single Four nine five for eight. Elsewhere in Division Two, Derbyshire sixty six without loss in reply to Gloucestershire's three seventy seven at uh, Bristol. Derbyshire the visitors here next week, and uh, Leicestershire all out for one hundred and eight at Hove. So six eighty one for one in their second innings, leading by two three five. Do you know they lost their last seven wickets for about thirty odd? Harris in bowls and that's through him. <laughs> Bess making room and not making contact. I think that 738, something like that. Where are we? Um, it was last eight went for 35. Oh, yeah. yeah, so remarkable. 73 for two and against the new overseas Odnad Kat and uh, our favourite Greek South African Aristides Carvelas. Yeah, I looked him up the other day, never Undicat or whatever his name is, and left arm seamer. Four ninety five for eight. I can't we get something like that here? Well, yes, uh. Glamorgan not able to uh, sign a, a bowler of sufficient quality for these last three games, although it was it was obvious that Nisa wouldn't be here at this stage of the season. Yep. There we are. In comes Carlson to bowl yet another over, and uh, he's caught a slip. I think he nicked that. He did. Low catch for Colin Ingram, and Cord is gone for four. Surely they're going to declare now. Yeah, we'll give the number 11 a knock. On championship debut, we want to see Ben Cliff. 
Yeah, straightforward dismissal there with code pushing forward. Oops. Edge just about carried to yeah. Ingram had to really make sure he got his fingers underneath it. Just about kept it off the turf. 495 for nine, but it doesn't matter in terms of bowling bonus points because we are well past the uh, 110 over mark. So Glamorgan just about managed to get the two. The six down at that stage. And uh, a few uh, cheap wickets or cheaper wickets towards the, the tail. Well, at least the averages look a bit better for <laughs> Carlson and Harris for their oh endeavours. Three for 142, Carlson and Harris. Oh three for 131. Could be worse. Are you allowed to uh, read figures like that out before the watershed? I have to wait till 9 o'clock at night, don't you, to... Uh, don't you remember? No, you wouldn't have been there. Dear old Byron Denning, the late Glamorgan scorer. And in that ground, that lovely yeah, ground at Abergavenny, where it was a run harvest. Yeah. I think it was against Worcester, Graham Hickman's score, they made 500 and something, or even more. And uh, here is the Glamorgan scorecard, said Byron, and uh, uh, the Worcestershire scorecard. And I would advise small boys, when I read the Glamorgan bowling figures out, to put something over their ears. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, drew plenty of laughter. He was such a witty man, was Byron. Yes, who also said... And, f and we were playing that one-day match at uh, Penterch yeah. on the outskirts. <laughs> and he said, from the CN, <laughs> everybody roared. I know in Biden, he, he probably did it on purpose. Yeah, nowhere near the sea. And so. It was the sea from Penterch. <laughs> oh, about uh, 10 miles away, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Yeah, and uh, yes, these figures. Uh, there we are. They've taken three wickets. And the last man... Ben Cliff. Ben Cliff making his debut. First Championship class debut, yeah. Debut, and he will play a face, rather. <laughs> Carlson who bowls. And a correct push forward. He's a 20 year old who's played uh, a couple of List A games yeah. for Yorkshire. Here's Carlson. In he comes, bowl to Cliff, who gets right behind that and threatens to get his first run in championship cricket, but uh, is sent back. Th halfway through this over, three balls for Carlson to try and get four wickets. Then the innings, and uh, see his batsmen get their pads on. From the river tough end, he comes over the wicket, tosses this one up, and Cliff is hit it out into the outfield and they are going to get off the mark <laughs> what's that applause for yeah, off the mark presumably <laughs> from the uh, <laughs> the Yorkshire travelling faithful yeah yeah he whacked that one away I think that's a proper number 11 interested shot. for a moment it was still uh, bouncing by the time it got out to him and there's a bit that's of a heave yeah. to cow corner now then two balls to go try and deny best the single and here comes Carlson Bowl. So Betts has played it up towards mid wicket, and there is the 500. 500 is up for Yorkshire, but they're not going to declare. Which, um, yeah. Well, they've got one ball left in the over, so there's yeah. no point in declaring during an over, and I suspect Nobody's the tailenders will just have a heave now. Stirring up there on the balcony. Has Last ball of the overboard. But pleasure. This could be a run out if he gets it in properly. He's gone. What a foolish run, but there we are. Poor old Cord gets run out as he was called for an impossible signal there from Bess. And the innings close, a nice symmetry here, Nick. 500. Yeah, Ben Cliff goes for one. Yeah. He got off the mark and then he was uh, run out by his partner. Well, the sun, the throw, and I uh, don't think Chris Cook needed to intervene as it uh, took out the middle stump. So 500 all out, which is nice and uh, nice and neat to remember. Don Best, 28, not out, having uh, sawn off his last man. <laughs> Carlson, three for 147. Harris, three for 131. Uh, McElroy was the the tidiest bowler but uh, 
no further success for him today. He finished with but two even I can work out next that they follow on is 351. Indeed, yep. That's nice and easy, isn't it? It is indeed. Uh, so we'll take a break. We'll be back in just under 10 minutes for the Glamorgan reply to Yorkshire's 500 all out. For those of you who would like to keep your score sheets up to date, I'll give you the bowling figures in just a moment. So Yorkshire, all out in 122 overs for 500. Don Bess was unbeaten on 28, with that total of 25 extras comprising 5 buys, 12 lead buys, and 8 no balls. Here are the Glamorgan bowling figures. Jamie McElroy, 25 overs, 5 maidens, 2 for 65. James Harris, 28 overs, no maidens, 3 for 100. And 31. Ben Callaway bowled 7 overs for 21 rounds. Zainal Hassan bowled 12 overs for 50 rounds. Andy Gorgon 16 overs, 1 maiden, 1 for 69. And Kieran Carlson 34 overs, 1 maiden, 3 for 147. There are 50 overs remaining in the day's quota. Just to bring you up to date with one score from elsewhere, it's the opening day of the second eleven championship match, the final game in that competition involving the Morgan second eleven against Sussex second eleven at the Blackstone Academy Browns in Brighton. Glamorgan, after being put into that, made 210. Top score there was Rodri Lewis on 46. Captain Prem Sosovia also made 43. And in reply, in the 8th over, Sussex currently 37 without loss.
Welcome back to a very sunny afternoon here at Sophia Gardens where the Yorkshire team are walking out onto the field, spring in their step because their batsmen had done the job for them. They were out with a nice symmetry of 500 runs exactly in their first innings. Might have declared just a bit earlier and Masood apparently was uh, trying to get his double hundred but uh, he fell short of it by eight runs. And Rather slowed up after lunch. And um, De Morgan now, the first. I'm just trying to wait until the public address system. He probably won't hear me. And uh, the Morgan batsmen are out there at the moment, the two opening batsmen. And they, of course, the usual opening batsmen these days, Eddie Byram and uh, Zain Ul Hassan. And. Uh, in that innings, 192 for Masood, fine innings all round. Uh, I thought George Hill played a lovely innings of 71. 
the other batsmen were out yesterday, the main batsman, and uh, Don Bess, who rather cruelly ran his number 11 partner out on an impossible run, was undefeated on 28. It'll be Ben Code then to open up, and he will be bowling to the left-handed uh, Byron. In he comes and bowls the first ball, and Byron gets forward and edges it down into the gully period. Two slips. Debatable whether we would call that a fourth or fifth slip or a gully. Perhaps we'll go to gully. Cover, mid-off, and a extra cover. And uh, a long leg, the mid-wicket and a mid-on. Very much a conventional field. Or oh, Interesting to see that the extra cover, because of the slowness of this pitch, is on the drive, which is a wise move, I think, given the state of this slow pitch. Cord round the wicket. Bowls to Byron, who leaves outside the off stamp. There's a gasp for what reason I don't know. It's probably just to encourage the bowler because it's a good yard outside the off stump. And uh, Byron, who didn't have a particularly happy time of it in the last game at uh, Worcester, he was out for naught in the second innings and one in the first innings. So he'll want to improve on that. I think the, in these days of social media, um, Ed, the, the fourth or fifth slip debate needs to go to a vote. <laughs> Next ball is down the leg side and uh, helped on its way. It might be helped by the pad down to fine leg. Let's see, umpire Newell says, yes, it came off the pad. And Glamorgan on their way, they won without loss. A lot of uh, yelling going out there, as you hear at every side in the county these days. Giving encouragement to the bowler, it's Ben Cord. And he's bowling for the river tough end. And, uh, Really beautiful afternoon, fluffy white crowd, plenty of blue sky. And it'll be a shame if the rain does interfere tomorrow. Let's keep fingers crossed as Cord comes into Ul Hassan and bowls to him. And Ul Hassan goes forward. Very defensive player. He doesn't play a lot of shots, but he is a young player thrust into this opening slot for Glamorgan in the absence of the departing David Lloyd, who would be playing in this game but he's broken a, a rib and he will be going to Derbyshire next season sadly and uh, Glamorgan have to do some signings before that season comes along one feels that's a beauty beats it, but he didn't get his foot across there at all did uh, Ola Hassan it was a lovely outswinger from Cord who went through to wicketkeeper Tattersall Yep, you'll see him attacking top of off stump. Keeps it simple, Ben out. Hit the top of off is the uh, message from all the, the coaches. He'll do that. He'll be all right. He'll play for England. Here's the next delivery. And uh, he pulls his bat away then, in fairness. Uh, pretty good over by court. It's a maiden for him. Just a leg by one without loss, uh, Glamorgan. And... Uh, it will be from this end. Will it be Jordan Thompson or will it be Ian Cliff? Or I'm sure that uh, Jonathan would tell us who it's going to be. I want to be honest with you. I'm not. I wasn't sure until I saw Jordan Thompson walking back with his sweater off. So it's going to be him. He has plenty of experience now opening the bowling for Yorkshire. He was kind of thrust into that with injuries during the COVID period, really, and. Uh, He's lost that spot when both Fisher and Code have been fit, which is more often this season. Ben Cliff, I thought, might get the nod, as uh, that's what he's been brought in to do, but it's he's not going to be entrusted to the new ball here, in with 500 on the board. And it's uh, Jordan Thompson to Zayn Ul Hassan. Three slips in place. Ring field with that Ben Cliff, in fact, at short extra cover for the mistimed drive and good start by Jordan Thompson, who bowled well last week in the second innings, in particular at Scarborough against Derbyshire. That was a perfect first delivery for him. Wide on the crease, round the wicket, and uh, yeah, angled in, a bit like a couple of Ben codes in the previous over, angled in towards the left hander and then just held in, held their line. Around about fourth stump, drawing the 
Belter into playing a stroke. He's driven this one firmly, just over pitching this time, Jordan. It's a lengthy chase for Shan Masood, who's going to win the race, and they're going to get a comfortable two. So aside from the ring field, just Ben Code. Uh, in the deep, he's down at long leg, not all the way. George Hill at first slip. Adam Lyth at second. Finley Bean at third in the white floppy. Matthew Revis is at mid-wicket. Bess mid-on. Masood mid-off. Cliff short extra cover. And James Wharton has gone in at point. Here's Thompson. Straightens things up this time. It's been flicked away through mid-wicket. Revis giving chase. Going to get back for two. Matthew Revis much more often sporting the white floppy than the cap, but uh, he's taken us by surprise to some extent. He's I tell you keeping what, his guessing with the cap on today. In the days of Illingworth, Truman, Hampshire, you wouldn't have had floppy hats out there. You would have had the Yorkshire cap on, wouldn't you? You would. There's Thompson in, wide of off stump, and Alassane leaves. Yep, well, of course, the floppies didn't really come in till... 70s, early 70s, I remember. Not only that, uh, your pros telling me that they would always don blazers, mm. take their boots off for lunch, and if it was extremely hot, they'd be excused the blazers for tea. The traditionalists of Yorkshire. Thompson in. And Al Hassan punches that up to Shan Masood at mid-off. I think I'm right in saying. Around. I think I'm, I'm getting the impression that you you're quite impressed by that. Very impressed. Yeah. And also, their first overseas player was the great Sachin Tendulkar. It was. And 1992. Uh, hugely popular up there. He wasn't a bad player either, was he? He was. He was all right. <laughs> Fancy. It's all right. He, he struggled a bit. Once he got past 200, I thought he, <laughs> he had issues then. His technique used to go to pieces. Uh, Thompson is in, and that one just kicks a little off the pitch, and Elisan makes an adjustment to drop it out into the offside. So a uh, bit of a feel of a loosening over for Jordan Thompson. A couple of good nuts within. He's gone for just the four, so uh, five without loss after two Glamorgan. And, of course, the first thing they'll want to do is to avoid... The three, possibility five, of being asked to follow on, yeah, three five one. Looking at Johnson when he, uh, Thompson when he's running away, he's beautifully built for a fast bowler. At the back there, he's broad, broad shoulders, thick thighs and legs, and that's what he wanted. And, uh, on the Yorkshire theme, it reminds me of dear old Fred Truman, and his fantastic build, and also that, that run up he had in the action. Magnificent. Still reckoned as one of the finest actions the game has seen. And you're not going to disagree with that, or you won't be let in back into the broad acres. Anyway, here's Code. Comes around the wicket, bowls, and uh, forward comes Byram and pushes it back down the pitch. If I disagree with that, not only would I not be allowed back in the broad acres, <laughs> but if I did manage to steal my way in somewhere, I'd never, my dad would never speak to me again. <laughs> uh, FS. So they've moved the slip out, out here, haven't they? The Adam Lyther stayed at kind of one yeah, and a half slips really. And he's come pitch. up, yeah, he's come up quite close. And now George yeah. Hill's gone to about third, three and a half slips, and Finley been outside him as well. Caught in bowls, and this is uh, beaten. As Byron lunges forward, and he goes through to Tatterson. It definitely feels like a f it's all-out attack, doesn't it? You know, with the well, with the runs, with the it's the power of runs. The yeah. scoreboard pressure, as they say, and uh, you know, you've got you've got thinkers out there. Probably live as in the they did that. The senior pro, he's the senior pro, surely, isn't he? Uh, in this side, yeah, yeah. be the thought so by a long way. Age-wise, yeah. And in comes Cole. This is a nice looking shot there, and it's uh, hit him on the boot as it rebounds. It's a good looking shot. It would have gone for four had it evaded that uh, size, what, 11, perhaps 12 boots. Well, it also knocked out middle stump at the, at the far at end. end yeah. yeah. So we'll look at it again. Firmly hit. Yeah. Yeah, he just got a little touch on it. I'll tell you what. Trying to pass it through to the inside forward there. Was he? He must have been in pretty in a fair bit of danger if Ben Code got something on that of being run out of the non-striking mm. end. We saw Finley Bean 
lose his wicket that way at Scarborough last week. Now then, look at this field. I try and describe it in its entirety in the moment. A slip, a wide gully, a man on the drive, and a silly mid-off. As in comes Code and bowls, and uh, yeah, in fairness to Byram, he took his bat away. So they're juggling about, and uh, one can only applaud the captain. See whether Messrs. Goff and um, Gibson might have had something to do with this. But perhaps not, because they did start with a couple of slips, the authentic uh, field. But uh, good thinking, because uh, Nick and I have often said this season, because of these slow pitches here, that you can drive hard, but you drive too early, and you just loft it short of cover, where these are. Code is in, and bowls, and that's left outside the off stump, goes through to Tattersall. The score remains on five without loss. But it's an innovative uh, field, and you're just striving now to try and get more superiority because they are very, very well placed, having scored 500. And we thank them for that because when we just say how much they're behind and how much they could have got, you just take it away from the, the number of 500. Not 536 or anything like that, as code is in bowls. Again, he does play that a lot and takes his bat away. Through to the keeper. Good over though. Five without loss. Four to Ol Hassan. Byram yet to score. Yeah, and I don't have, don't have a particular aversion to 536, but I know what you're saying. Good for the maths. Uh, Simon McIntyre, still stuck in Kent, says, Firstly, I agree with your earlier messenger regarding novelty shots. Too many unnecessary dismissals from scoops and reverse sweeps. They might uh, well be confined to tip and run competitions. On a more serious note, I'm concerned about the wicket-keeping situation at Yorkshire. Stumper, the different case to the other outfield positions, as there's only one of them in his side. As Jordan Thompson comes in from this Cathedral Road end, it's a controlled opening of the face. I think I'd give him the benefit of the doubt from Zayn yeah. or Hassan, and he's run it down through third man for four. Yes, it's, uh, it's not often that uh, Ol Hassan is on the mark and going before Byram because he's, gen he's been pressed into this and, in my opinion, has done a very good job, the young man, pressed into opening in first-class cricket when he's been middle order in second-team cricket for half the season. Yep. And uh, one can only applaud him. Thompson in again. I'll continue with this. Simon McIntyre email in a moment but uh, he's running in from wide on the crease starts it wide and it goes further away so a dot ball so Simon says back in 1985 David Besto God rest him was the incumbent in the wicket keeping position for Yorkshire and both kept and batted well but he was in his mid 30s at the same time Yorkshire had a young man called Steve Rhodes who was highly regarded played in junior internationals and was becoming frustrated at a lack of opportunity at his home county recognizing this uh, the powers that be offered him a compromise with David Bairstow continuing to take the gloves and bat in one-day games with Rhodes keeping in the championship. As uh, Thompson's latest delivery is again wide of off stump and Ol Hassan chooses not to play. Uh, apparently this was unacceptable to Bluey, says Simon, with Rhodes then being lured by Duncan Fernley to Worcester, where he enjoyed a long and successful career, including test appearances. When Bairstow finally gave up the gloves a few years later, Yorkshire didn't have a ready-made replacement. Richard Blakey. Drafting in, sorry, did, yes, didn't have a ready-made replacement. Drafting in Richard Blakey, yeah. a fine batsman, but who needed to be specially coached in the art of stumping. More in a moment. It's a long one. Thompson in. It's wide of off stump, driven firmly this time by Al Hassan, but straight to Ben Cliff at extra cover, no run. Uh, he goes on, some might argue that Yorkshire never had another top-class stumper until the arrival of Johnny Bairstow, who's now in his 30s. Harry Duke has shown that he is talented with both bat and gloves. At the age of 21, I can't avoid the fear that he could also be lured away to a lesser outfit. Somewhat depressed, the season is drawing to a close, but with, uh, what with the weather and off-field issues casting a shadow, perhaps a new start can't come soon enough. Thanks to Simon down in Kent. Here is... Uh, Thompson and leaning on this one all the time giving himself a chance of being run out here because he's pushed it straight to James Wharton who missed with his throw at what was probably just over one stump from almost uh, square on and uh, he gets back 
does the striking batter. But uh, for all we <laughs> were querying Shan Masood's run running between the wickets, particularly yesterday in the sort of first almost half of his innings, that was uh, a an judicious piece of running. Yeah, you can forgive Dom best because he had a number 11 within innings which coming to a close and he ran his partner out trying to farm the bowling, but that was madness. Thompson in again, this one, he's got the ball to swing the other way this time, for the first time, and uh, Olasan dealt with it okay, swinging in towards him, he turned it to Bess uh, mid-on, and there was no yeah. run to completely over. So that's, uh, yeah, the, just uh, some comments on the that, keeping situation. Um, because I remember that era, of course, in my in my youth, when I was starting along, and uh, Richard Blakey came along and went on an England A tour, if I, I think I'm right, but... Did, a lot of people didn't realise that Richard Blake, he was a superb short leg before his wicketkeeping days. He was one of the best, if not the best, short leg in the country. And uh, he went on and did a good job. But uh, Rhodes' dad, I think Steve Rhodes' dad played for Yorkshire or what, one or the other. Anyhow, here's Ben Cord to start his third over, comes in and bowls, and that's nicely played for a single and gets uh, Byram off the mark. See, they always reckon that Bluey wasn't the greatest keeper. He was a very fine chap to come in at now in six or seven and, of course, played for England in one-day internationals. But um, big, big man. Blakey was, 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 was a very good keeper. Not as good as, as some they've had there. Yep. Uh, Billy Rhodes, who uh, you're talking about, Steve's dad, yeah. did coach me a little bit in my youth. Did he? Yeah, he was. I think I'm right in saying he did play for. Did he play for the York Yorkshire or did he play for Worcester? Um, he played for Notts, didn't he? Was it Notts? Yeah. Yeah, I knew he played first class cricket. Um, yeah, Yorkshireman, Bradfordian, but played for Notts. Yeah, I remember him telling me I met him at Worcester, and he said he played against my great friend and Glamorgan legend Don Shepherd on many occasions. I must find out. I don't know quite what um, Bumpy's doing these days. In comes the next ball, and it's played with an angled bat out into that gully, or fifth slip, or call it what you may. Ten without loss, Glamorgan. Yeah. Such a rich and varied history, Yorkshire. I've taken a great interest, of course. Um, in the history over the years. Are you trying to get uh, a retirement home up there? Is that, uh, mm. is that the idea? You are. Trying to get a retirement home up there, is that the idea? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's left outside the off stamp, but uh, um, having driven near yeah, the whole place, I think, is a fantastic place, Yorkshire, all around. And that uh, drive up to. Um, it's, it's a long drive from us, of course, up to Scarborough. But you see all that wonderful countryside. I'm very, very fond of the place. Next year, perhaps, I'll try and, and come up. If, oh, well, yes, there will be these two in the same division. It's Code Bowls and uh, a tentative push for Ul Hassan. Ten without loss remains the score. Uh, nice fellow was Billy from what I, what I recall yeah I, I, I just remember his enthusiasm that. as much as anything and you know one of those sort of coaches I suppose like hopefully good ones are in that just a very encouraging sort of a character last ball of the over in comes Cord and bowls oh, they bowled him on the forward push last ball of the over he's gone forward he's uh, looking and thinking what had I done wrong I suspect he may have played down the wrong line so success for Yorkshire success for Cord as uh, Ol Hassan has gone for eight we we'll just watch it again I think he might have just played inside it yeah and hits the off stamp back perfect delivery but he did come a little bit across yeah I think he's going to be absolutely delighted with that because do you know what when you look at that delivery again that feels like the, that's the ball that he's been setting him up for so he's he's, yeah. he's bowled it he's nipped it nipped it and nipped it and then that one had pretty much gone straight on and he's playing 
inside that. He played inside it as, as I thought, the way that he did play at it. So he'll be disappointed. And uh, that's the fall of the first wicket. And Glamorgan already in the spot of bother. It's 10 for one as we wait the arrival of Colin Ingram. And uh, Glamorgan needed a score from their overseas player. Not that he is uh, overseas, as it were now, because he's living in Wales and will remain there for the severe foreseeable future. So Colin Ingram striding after a good piece of bowling there from Code. He um, zipped it through and hit the off stump. Yeah, final ball of the fifth over that one, yep. so they'll be delighted to have got a got a start, as it were, with the ball. 20 balls for his eight and one four for Zayn Ol Hassan. Didn't look the most comfortable, did he, against Ben Code? And that's, that's the difference we're, we're talking about when we're speculating about how many Yorkshire will need. You don't know. Clearly, you never know, but... If you're going to try and bat once and bowl the opposition out twice, you've got to you strike in the first inning. You've also just, yeah, you've got to bowl well and hope that there's enough in the pitch to give you that, you know, that bit of an edge. And uh, you know, we I think we all agreed that Glamorgan, as a collective, there were some bright spots within it, but clearly didn't bowl well enough. 500 yeah. runs. They didn't have the bowlers, did they? They're regular Says bowlers. That. Yeah, here's Jordan Thompson then from the Cathedral Road End. And uh, Byram pulling his bat inside the line of that one. Still the two slips and a gully. Finley Bean looking like uh, something from Bill and Ben in his floppy hat that's not quite stiff brimmed like some of them are. Jordan Thompson, sleeveless sweater on, he's got his hairpiece in tie that back out of his face and he comes in again and that uh, has definite swing in towards the left-handed Byram Turns going back one to, to Revis, um, no run Zane Wolfson had to make his debut as an opening batsman against uh, only Robinson down at Hove Byram was out for five Labuschagne for one northeast for five Carlson for eight Robinson creating havoc and the young man has been batted there for some time for his 22 which made, showed immediate promise. Code in, and inside the line, Byram, no run. Yeah, he got 20-odd and 40-odd, didn't he, down there? Yeah, he's, um, yeah, I think, if they don't sign a top-class batsman for next year, which is <laughs> debatable, then uh, they'll have to stick with him and hope has, that he improves. Has he been going in at the top throughout? Has been no, it's yeah. mid-order for the second team. Oh, mid-order, right. Second team. Okay, interesting. He's not. He's only made the 150, hasn't he? But he's got starts in most of his innings. Yep. You look down his card for the season, Zayn Al Hassan, and here's a start for Byram as well. Jordan Thompson, half volley wide of off stump, and got the treatment there from um, Eddie Byram. He's on to five, 14 for one. The shot that left handers are known for, aren't they? They always look better from. For some reason, when left-handers play the cuffer drive, I don't know why. I think of people like David Gower and uh, those in their prime. Yeah. Good to watch. Got right over the top of it. Absolutely nothing wrong with the shot at all. Jordan Thompson might have a think about the delivery in bowling. This one now, he's switched to over the wicket and uh, therefore slanting it slightly across the left-hander this time. He plays it out to Wharton at point. No run. Eddie Byram, well, he made uh, 81 in his first knock of the season, and that yep. remains his highest score. Has made it past 50 on three other occasions. Yeah, and he was injured for months because uh, he got hit down in a one-day match at Sussex. Thompson in, and with an angled bat, Byram plays it, it down um, at the feet of Finley Bean. End of the over, 14 for one after six. It was in a, a 2020 game there, in the blast, and uh, Mr. Tymal Mills hit him on the hip and took a piece of bone out from his hip because he's he's not as slow, is he, Mr. Mills? No. <laughs> and uh, 
poor Eddie Byron was out for a couple of months, missed a lot of cricket until he came back after the um, yeah after a long break. 18th of May, the match against Sussex in the Championship was his last. And he came back after Champo the 2020, game, I think. And then came back. Well, the next Championship game was obviously last week's against uh, Worcestershire. Now then, the code is uh, going to continue to this remarkable looking field. Just think of uh, four people in a semicircle. I think you might get it right. <laughs> Anyway, he's bowling for left-handed Ingram, yet another left-hander, and bowls to him. Ingram uh, is off the mark with a little tickle down to fine leg. I think that came off bat. It's confirmed by Ampire Newell. And uh, Morgan will move on to 15-4-1. It sort of feels a bit like a rounders thing, doesn't it? You're on first base, you're on second. You whack it over there and leg it. How can we describe this? Uh, the fifth slip, I will, because it's not square enough for a gully. Then you have a deep gully. Then you have a man on the drive. If he was back 25 yards, he'd be extra cover if you've got that. And then a silly mid-off, just off the cut strip, about three yards. As Cord comes racing in from the River Taff end and bowls, and uh, this is defended around middle and off by... Uh, Eddie Byram and it trickles up to the man there. Jeff Marshall says, uh, Jonathan, probably an impossible question, but I wonder how many times a team has scored 500 with five players in single figures. That's Jeff in uh, where in Hertfordshire. Thanks for your message. BBC West Yorkshire Sport at gmail.com. I dare say it's not impossible, it's Jeff. Been, I've seen it done this year. We, so don't have, uh, we don't have Andy Zaltzman in the box with That's us, unfortunately. A, uh, a look, I know, come on, but. Now oh, then, there we are. I've, this is incredible. I've turned to the right page. Durham 471 for nine declared, which is yep. it was damn it. Right, Mike Jones got 69. Borthwick 59. Beddingham 73. Travaskis 79. Brendan Cast 91. Coughlin, and I'll break off as the next ball is defended by Court. Coughlin 51 not out. So that's yep. pretty close, isn't it? 29 runs away from 500 and nobody got 100. So there we are, that might have answered some part of the question. <coughs> Leicestershire v Glamorgan, Leicestershire 407, 95, 90, 92, 53, 43. So there we are, it's near as you can get. Ben Cole from the river end comes in again and uh, this time, he goes right across his stumps there, does Byron, and plays it gently away onto the onside. Uh, Johnny Tallisall is going to uh, put his lid on, so, yep, he's going to stand up to Ben Code and just oh, drag brave man. Byron back. He does this quite regularly, actually. Yeah, Cook does it for Glamorgan uh, to most of the quickies. <laughs> Mad they are, wicket keepers, aren't they? This field needs a photograph taken of it, doesn't it? You often wonder. Ben Coe's got another delivery as in this over. He's got uh, one more. I'm going to take a photograph of it. I have seen, Jonathan, uh, after you've taken your, your picture, I'll, I'll, I'll describe it to you in, in action. Go on, you can describe it now. I'm, I'm listening. I've I'm, seen just, I'm waiting for him to bowl this next ball. Who put their hands on their hips and the keeper? As if to, as it's an insult to their pace. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what are you doing standing up to me? I'm quick, you know. Anyway, he's standing up to the stumps. As in comes Cord and bowls, and uh, this is defended. And there's a yell. Why? Because it was played in the middle of the bat, but you get it everywhere. End of the over, 15 for one. Byram is five. Colin Ingram is one. And if he nicks it and he's caught by the wicket keeper, I don't think this, uh, the seam bowler will say much. Yeah, you get... But when it's missed, they do say much. Oh, th th yeah, the insult of, of a bowler with uh, somebody standing up to him. I know, I've been there, Ed. Have you? Fact, you yeah. told them off? <laughs> no, no, definitely not. Definitely not, but uh, there was a match. Well, we've already mentioned one of those keepers who was standing up to me. Yeah. But I forgave him when he took a leg side stumping. Here's Jordan Thompson, <laughs> meanwhile, and uh, Ingram drops one out to square on the offside. And there is no run. Well, 
You talk about that. It, uh, you must have been very proud of the dismissal because I've seen Jack Russell in old film, and to me, he was one of the top three I've ever seen, certainly. And uh, he was standing up to Mike Smith, who was to open the bowling left arm. Mm. Stumpings there. He was absolutely magnificent. Here's Jordan Thompson, meanwhile, two slips in a gully, wide of off stump and left by Colin Ingram. Yeah, I mean, you can't afford to sort of take that attitude, can you, of the insult when the keeper comes up? If, if that's a comment on your pace, so what? You just, it's, it's, if it's, an opportunity, if it's an opportunity to take wickets, then... Uh, he's the boss, he knows if he can uh, cope. Absolutely. Why is he back to Thompson, then? And why isn't it the same for you? He mm. never stands up to Jordan Thompson, so he's clearly significantly quicker, but he's, uh, he's also quicker to the boundary there with one that's wide of off stump, and he's angled that one away between second slip and gully. Bit of a yeah, loose delivery. Played it top of the bounce, really. But he Put hasn't fiddled, fiddled her out of the field, has he, captain, as he's done with no. the board? Perhaps it's one end, which is uh, a little bit uh, intemperate bounce. And yeah. yeah, Jordan tends to be high 70s, where Ben, I think, is more low 70s. Really? So oh. that difference in, in pace might just damage your fingers I if you don't quite get it right behind the sticks. That surprises me. I thought cold was quicker than Thompson. And he comes then once again, Jordan Thompson wide on the crease. And... Uh, Clearly, Colin Ingram plays well backward of square on the offside. He just comfortably opened the face and ran one away towards point, which has been fielded by James Wharton. So any width, you get the impression Jordan Thompson gives him. He'll take advantage, particularly with no third man in place, and clearly we'd expect that with 500 on the board. But he's not really thrown that many up that he can drive. And bear in mind, Ben Cliff is in that position of short extra cover. You want to try and draw him forward, don't you, to to get him to, to miss time one on the rise towards Ben Cliff he or maybe to Sham Massoud at mid-off. Yeah, Ingram is a wonderful cover driver. And you just mentioned that he, he, he likes that area like most left-handers, but he has been dismissed recently by just... Fraction outside off stump, and he's going for it and yep. makes it the slip of the keeper, you know. So, you've got the analysts these days, Jonathan, they work on every everything for every club, so they'll be conscious of that. We just had a dot from Jordan who's coming in again, and there's Baldwin, he's got it right this time, and that looks spectacular. Stumps flat to the ground, and Glamorgan 19 for two, and Ingram has gone for five. Jordan Thompson making things happen again. Uh, a little bit loose on occasions, but he's come up with his first wicket, and that is what Yorkshire need. Another 18 of those. He's bowled four overs, no maidens, one for 16, well, and off it. stump gone. Yeah. Glamorgan uh, yet again struggling as they were in Worcester last week, and that uh, was a beautiful delivery where you oh, mentioned oh, earlier oh, on the oh, top oh, of off stump oh, and uh, those of us who were wondering why did you bat on so long well here's the answer yeah length is the key so he's been a little yeah. bit too short hadn't he of that just fractionally just you know with a couple of those shots that we've seen and he's just got it that little bit further up the pitch ingram's not been able to get forward he's, he's angled in he's held it. its line and he's played inside it very much like the dismissal uh, of Ol Hassan. So Glamorgan in trouble already in their innings there. 19 for two. Remember, there's two and a half days left of this contest and uh, Yorkshire very much on top. And uh, some northeast who um, has been getting his 40s and 30s. And he hasn't got a real big one recently. So he has much to do. The captain also and uh, others. And, uh, Glamorgan up against it. Against it as Nick is lurking behind me. It's a half an hour to cake time, and I shall leave you for until then. <laughs> <laughs> Another plate full, doubtless, for Mr. Bevan when he returns. <laughs> Certainly tested them all yesterday. <laughs> so 
19 for two Ingram. By the way, five from just the seven deliveries, including one four. And uh, Jordan Thompson, there you go, talked quite a bit about just that consistency of what he's trying to achieve or otherwise, but he bowls wicket-taking balls. That's why he's been top of the tree in wicket-taking terms for Yorkshire over the last uh, two or three seasons. And Ben Code has had a, a four-over burst, four overs, two maidens, one for two. Uh, I think this is a, a handy move in the sense that they've got in and among, they've got a couple of wickets, and they're going to give Ben Cliff his first uh, sniff of first-class cricket with a still a relatively new ball, while the opposition are on the back foot. Yeah, good intelligent captaincy with an eye on the future. As Cliff will come in to bowl his first ball in first-class cricket to Eddie Byram, who defends it to short cover, and there's no run. I'm not sure if you uh, picked up a, a little heckle from one of the Yorkshire fielders towards their captain earlier on, who's sitting outside, and managed to pick it up when Ul Hassan started off for a run on a couple of occasions and was sent back both on the original run and the overthrow, and someone shouted, come on, he's running like Shani. <laughs> As uh, Byram shoulders arms to the next one from Cliff through to uh, keep it at Tattersall. So sledging their own captain in the field. I had a message, by the way, from a friend of mine, a sometime uh, broadcasting colleague, Dave Cooper, who says he's actually walking the Pembrokeshire coast at the moment, uh, listening in, and he says a big shout-out for Ben Cliff when he comes on. He came to the West Yorkshire Trials at the age of 13, and three out of the four selectors said no, and as chairman of selectors, I waited till everyone had gone, scrapped the piece of paper and put Ben in the squad. Here comes Ben Cliff, bowls to Eddie Byram. Nice and straight, defended on the offside. It uh, looks like he's got an eye for a bit of talent then, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Hope you're well. <laughs> nice story. So, scoreboard pressure making life difficult for Glamorgan. Plus, of course, some... Uh, Rather more hostile bowling than Glamorgan managed on average. Yorkshire 500 all out, Glamorgan 19 for two under the cosh as Byram defends back to the bowler. And there's no run. And what he wants here, Ben Cliff, he was a, a little bit wayward in the, that game we spoke about the other week, the final 50 over contest against uh, Middlesex just wants to be able to settle those nerves which he's obviously going to have early on and as I say it's, uh, it's a good shout to give him a go right now while he's still got a decent ball to work with a couple of good batters to have a go at Byron faces up to Cliff and oohs and ahs from behind the wicket as uh, Byron made no contact that may have been beating the bat it may have been the last minute Byram leave did he take the bat mm, yes I think he took the bat inside just about in time but it was uh, very marginal never quite tell with Eddie Byram what he's meaning to play or not Cliff from the River Taff end Good start so far to finish his first over, and uh, Byram defends it on the offside. And there's no run, there's plenty of vocal support from the Yorkshire fielders for their bowlers, and why wouldn't they be? They're completely on top at the moment. And I'm sure the Yorkshire supporters in the crowd are enjoying these opening stages. Well, good to see four of the lads was made a beeline straight away from end of his first over. That'll mean something to him. He's come up with a maiden, and uh, they've all just uh, endorse that with a bit of the usual stuff that goes on these days, fist bumps, low fives, high fives, you name it. A bit of body language about it. And he'll feel a lot better about life as he makes his way off down to the long leg boundary. Nerves, I'm sure, already beginning to settle. The first box to tick for him, of course, will be a first-class first wicket. 
if he's able to do that but it's Jordan Thompson at the moment uh, with a delivery that just loops in slightly towards the right-handed Sam Northeast played out into the onside for Revis to field no run yeah, difficult times for Glamorgan's top order Byram on his return to the championship side with just one run across the two innings at uh, Worcester and all Hassan now with uh, three failures in a row having started off with uh, a fair degree of consistency and uh, lots of reasonable scores without going big Thompson sets off in once again past umpire Peter Hartley angled in once more to North East who successfully blocks that to Masood who does a bit of a flick up into his hand no run Ben Kerr just walked across to Jordan Thompson before that delivery and was gesticulating down towards Ben Cliff at long leg and as if to suggest to Tomo that he might think about bringing him out of that position they've got so many on the board and bringing him into a more attacking position but that hasn't transpired Thompson in again oh good delivery which has the beating of northeast wraps him on the pad balloons up into the onside no run Sam northeast with the century in the second innings of the drawn match at uh, at home to Sussex but uh, since then a score of 30 in his last five innings across a couple of blocks of course with the, the one day cup in the middle Thompson receives that ball back and begins to make his way in again right arm over the wicket once more it's shaping in towards northeast and once more he plays it out again towards Shan Masood Revis round to pick it up because he's had uh, stacks of, of runs Sam Northeast in the past hasn't it since a couple of uh, tremendous seasons yeah Stella last year was uh, or his first year with Glamorgan of course so for 1100 runs including that record-breaking quadruple century at Leicester. Plenty with Hampshire as well in his time there. Not the most successful time with Yorkshire in his one match at Northampton the other year as he pushes this into the offside. Best fields, no run, but that, that of course, can happen. Yeah, it was strange really because he hardly scored a run for Yorkshire or Notts in brief visits there after leaving Hampshire, so maybe there was... Something going on in the background. I'm trying to remember now. Yeah, so many of these short ins and outs. The reason that Yorkshire signed him for that one match. He got three and one. And was victim to Ricardo Vasconcelos on both occasions. As uh, Thompson is in. And uh, North East is going to get off the mark with a boundary, which he flicks away pleasantly backward of square. Well, both caught behind, was it? Uh, caught behind and stumped oh. off uh, Tom Taylor and Simon Kerrigan, respectively. That was, yeah, July... Uh, no, uh, yeah, sorry, July of, uh, of 2021. He played, actually played two games. I'd forgotten the other one. He played against Lancashire. And I think that was the match that was abandoned. He didn't bat in the match. So, uh, yeah, two matches, two innings, four runs, high score of three in average two. Sounds like my stats. <laughs> 23 for two as uh, Ben Cliff, having started his first class career with the maiden over, will try to develop that. Bowling to Eddie Byram, who's on five not out off 27 deliveries as uh, he hits that one slightly uppishly past mid wickets. It should run away for four runs, it will do. It's in the air a, a little while as it went in the general direction of Thompson at mid-wicket. But there wasn't a catching chance as such. Typical shot on this pitch, isn't it, so far in this match? There's been so many that have gone wide either side because the the batters are just they're having to wait so long for the ball to get to and they're almost through the shot and they round on it quite often. Barely anything's been driven straight. As 
Byram leaves that one through outside off stump. Goes through to Tadassel. Yorkshire keeping up the volume levels. Not surprisingly, when they're uh, completely in control of this game at the moment, but a long way to go. Another 39 overs to go after this one. So seven overs to go till T, which will be therefore be oof, best part of four o'clock, I reckon. You would think so. Cliff bowls and Byron plays it straight back to him, and there's no run. Let's see how long uh, the Yorkshire fielders can keep up this cacophony of noise. Morgan do on paper bats relatively deep in this match with the Douthwaite at eight. Douthwaite a concussion replacement for Ben Kellaway. Here's Cliff on his way again and Byram defends a no ball up to mid off. Two runs. Morgan I'll take them all and welcome to five sports extra listeners with the news that Glamorgan are 29 for two in reply to Yorkshire's exactly 500 all out. Cliff Bowles, forward comes Byram and there is no run. So Glamorgan losing Ul Hassan and uh, Ingram very cheaply. Wicked a piece for Code and Thompson. And now Yorkshire with the championship debutant, the 20 year old Ben Cliff. Brought into the attack early on by Sean Massoud. Balls and Byram again slightly mistimes it, but uh, through a gap will pick up a couple of runs out towards wide long on. But that one flew in slightly in the air between mid wicket and uh, mid on. So Yorkshire might think about reinforcing that, uh, that area. Yeah, they might do. They might be. I'm not sure they would be, but. There may be thoughts between this pair, even though it's early on in their partnership, that they might look to just put some pressure on Ben Cliff. First time with ball in hand at this level. As Cliff runs in, nice straight run, right arm over, Collins to Byram, who drives to mid off. No run, so. Eight off the over, including the uh, no ball. 31 for two, Glamorgan needing a formidable 351 to avoid the possibility of following on. Our game slightly out of sync with those around the country because we had a half hour delay at the start because of rain. That's so when Division Two, there was T at Bristol, where Derbyshire are 128 without loss. Came and Reese for the partnership there in reply to Gloucestershire's 377. And at uh, Hove, Sussex 123 for two in their second innings, leading Leicestershire by 277. Tom Clark is 51 not out. Ben Code then back into the attack, having had a brief break. He's coming on from the Cathedral Road end to try his look from here, replacing Jordan Thompson. And he's bowling over the wicket to start with here to Sam Northeast, who's pushing at a ball probably about fourth stump, out to point, Wharton fielding. No run. In the Asia Cup, Pakistan have uh, stumbled at the start. They're 44 for two in 11, chasing 357 to beat India. 356 for two centuries and beaten for uh, Virat Kohli and Kel Rahul in Colombo on that uh, reserve day in the Asia Cup. Code receiving the ball back from Jordan Thompson, making his way in once again. One slip and a gully, and it's going to be gully. Finley Bean, who's uh, out of 
position to dash round and pick that up. Dropped out backward of square on the offside. Um, ben Nielsen says two very nice wickets. Come on, Yorkshire, only 18 to go. Jay Grover says I'd be flattered if someone stood up with, stood up to the stumps with my bowling. They just shake their heads ruefully whilst having a cup of tea. The next county over. <laughs> Um, Adam Lyth just called for a helmet, by the way, at slip, which suggests he's going to stand a fair bit a stride or two closer than he was. Once again, a comment on the lack of pace in the pitch. Code in and punched into the offside by Best Fields. North East still on strike. Uh, Swelldale Mutton Co. says uh, even missing Fisher, the lads are doing well here to make that scoreboard pressure count and sometimes it's not so much you know that you need runs over a certain period of time that type of scoreboard pressure it's just the sheer you know that crushing burden of looking at a board and you're hundreds and hundreds of runs behind isn't it what that does psychologically Ben Coe with a beauty absolute beauty that beats North East all ends up Unfortunately for Ben, he didn't start it off quite straight enough. And so, while it looks very pretty indeed, he's um, he's not managed to get his man. Pitched and then swung away, didn't it, after it pitched? Yep. Bit of movement. Just enough to... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> needed a bit less movement, really. If there had been slightly less movement, he'd have caught the outside edge and North East would have been on his way. Yeah, if you had a highlights reel of deliveries that didn't get wickets, great ones, that's that's got to be a candidate for it. As this latest delivery is played by North East. It was around about middle and off this, a bit straighter, and it's been flicked into the leg side. They're still trying this tactic, and why wouldn't you, of having fielders in the ring, but just a few strides closer than they would normally be in trying to save one. And uh, basically catching positions, the two on the leg side, Matthew Revis and George Hill at two sort of short mid-wickets, really. Cody's in, and uh, North East, who is particularly strong off the leg side, as I recall. He's trying to put everything through there, and he's punched that one up to Shan Masood. No run, so end of the 12th. Six to go before the tea break. Morgan 31 for two with Yorkshire having posted 500 exactly. Indeed, the bulk of that Yorkshire work was last night, or through day one, really, 330 for three. Today, they lost uh, three wickets in the morning session, and a further four in a relatively quick time in the, uh, in the afternoon. But uh, it didn't really matter that... Uh, there wasn't much of a tail end contribution. It just meant they could uh, start their work with the ball as Byron defends the first ball of Cliffs over. Message in from Rambo, from Paul Ramsden. Hope you're well, old boy. He said, Afternoon, Doigy. Cliffy is another lad who owes Lightcliff, that's Lightcliff Cricket Club up in the Bradford League, uh, a little, although we can't lay claim to him. He's another Copley kid out of the Halifax League, same stable as Ollie Hannon Dolby. And he spent many hours at the Cricket Asylum in Sorby Bridge. Ben, great lad, and I hope this is the first of many matches for him. Good words from Rambo. Cliff in, balls, and Byron steers it away through the gully, and we'll get four runs deliberately played there from the left-hand opener. And he moves up to 15, and Glamorgan on to 35 for two. Steve West on Twitter says we should be at around 200 on the close, but at what cost of wickets? Well, there's the rub, Steve. 351 is the target for Glamorgan to avoid the possibility of following on. So, uh, Yorkshire in high spirits. Cliff enjoying himself despite being run out for one. As that's driven, but not quite timed from Byram, straight. And the point that we uh, keep making is that uh, a lot of straight shots have 
not been uh, quite as forceful as usual on this ground with short boundaries because uh, the ball is not coming on. A lot of runs garnered square of the wicket. We saw once or twice the ball being hit over the top of mid on, mid off, but not that often. Cliff into bowl, Byram forward carefully out on the offside, and there's no run. Scores in Division 1 at uh, Canterbury, not 160 for 3 in reply to uh, Kent's 4 4 6 all out. Michael Hogan got a couple of early ones, the former Glamorgan bowler. Steve Mullaney is 78 not out. Joe Clark's just gone to Aaron Nija for 62. As Byram drives straight down the ground, well, as if to disprove what I was saying, that is a straight drive along the ground that was well timed and has comfortably reached the ropes up at the uh, River Taff end. Byram moves to 19, 39 for two. Yeah, just over pitching um, on that occasion, Ben Cliff. I guess there wasn't a whole load of that either from the Morgan bowlers, who, if anything, tended to bowl a bit too short. Edward Bevan runs off with a uh, tray of cakes, <laughs> laughing manically. <laughs> uh, as, uh, in comes the next delivery, short down leg side. Uh, Byram decides not to try to hook it. 39 for two. We have got five overs until the T interval. It's a good job they don't do uh, cholesterol level tests for the commentators in <laughs> each break um, at the end of a day's play. Uh, uh, could be in a bit of strife looking at what he's got on his plate, although he's, uh, he doesn't carry any weight, does he? Mr. Bell, no, he's still, uh, still lean. So 39 for two, and Ben Code is going to continue at the Cathedral Road end of the ground. Old Trafford, Lancashire, 114 for three after bowling Middlesex out for 194. And Edgbaston, Warwickshire, 63 for two in reply to Northants, 250 all out. Here's Code then. Bowling to North East, who's uh, punching a ball just short of length, and that's all it needed to be. Got into a good position early there, Sam North East. And uh, that was four from the minute it left the bat. Splits the gap in the offside. Ben Code, who's only gone for six, including that boundary. He's kind of human after all. <laughs> Very tight bowler. And he's a bit of self disgust about that. He's let his opponent in with an opportunity at the start of the over. But can he, can he find a comeback delivery? We've already seen him take the opening wicket. And he bowled Zain al Hassan for eight. And the score was on ten. There he is now, straightens things up, and that was hitting if Sam Northeast had missed. Everything solidly behind it. Yes, Jamie McElroy was talking about the importance of bowling straight on this particular surface. Totally agree, and I think that's maybe, you know, another one of those just... With the Glamorgan bowling, there were just a few issues that were not so far off the mark at times but enough mm. to be picked off for runs and that'd be another case in point how many were hitting from enough of the bowlers Ben Code again targeting the stumps with this one both Yorkshire's wickets taken so far have been bowled Jordan Thompson Castle in Colin Ingram for five <laughs> they've kicked on a little bit since then the hosts 24 Unbroken this third wicket partnership. Four and a half overs to go before the tea break, which uh, should have been taken at half three. Code in and once again targeting the stumps. And Northeast has to play that with care into the offside. Glamorgan's second bid under the pump. They were dismissed for 210 by Sussex at Hove. Rodri Lewis 46, Prem Sassonia 43. Sussex have gone off like a train through uh, Ali Orr, regular first teamer, uh, who made 65. 
and uh, Harrison Ward, who's 90 not out off 73 deliveries. 166 for one. Go to northeast again and uh, repeat, really. Very similar. Round about off, middle and off. Just uh, defended, solidly blocked by northeast. And uh, Yorkshire seconds in the field at Guildford, where Surrey are 210 for three now. Code turns and makes his way in once more. Fairly wide on the crease this time to northeast. Again, gets a straight delivery and again gets in behind it and uh, defends. So just the four off that uh, first ball of Ben Code's sixth over. He bowled six over three maidens, one for six. Ben Cliff's gone for 16 from his three, but first of them was a maiden. Clearly, big opportunity for him to uh, learn his trade against some good players and that. Initial pressure of playing your first first class game, trying to impress, trying to feel like you're at home, comfortable in your own skin at this level. Kieran Carlson next in for Glamorgan, yep. if required today. <laughs> uh, they'll be doing well if he's not required. Uh, Carlson didn't really get in the runs at Worcester, but going well before that. 912 runs for the season. So approaching his best off the top of my head. I think it was 920 odd a couple of years ago when he fell away a bit in September. But uh, 1,000 available to him as that is slashed by Byram to Bean. Did it carry in the gully? There was oohs and ahs, and uh, that may have been a chance. And He's got a very good pair of hands, Finley Bean. Went hard and low. I'm not sure it quite carried. It may have been a half volley. Yeah, I think it probably was. We'll have to see it from the other angle. We've seen it from behind him. A bit difficult because his body's slightly obscuring it on the potential bounce. Cliff Bowles, Byram drives into and through the offside. The chase for Sean Massoud up towards the wide long off boundary, but uh, Byram has timed that one sweetly and sent the ball racing away for four. 47 for two. Yeah, he's, he's just tried to put. It felt like it was an effort ball there from Ben Cliff, and he's over pitched again. So I guess we're going to find out a little bit about how quickly he learns. He's done that a couple of times now. It's got a slip and a gully as he comes in to bowl. And Byron runs this one past point and will pick up another couple of runs at least. It may just reach the ropes. It has reached the ropes just using the pace of the ball there, Eddie Byron, and steering it away. And uh, Glamorgan get a little bit of acceleration off uh, Ben Cliff. That's taken them to 50, 51 for two in the 15th. Yeah, and I suppose that there was always the danger of this in his first uh, spell. He's gone over pitch, over pitch, been driven twice for four, one straight, one through extra cover. And this time he's just tried to adjust and he's over adjusted and gone a bit too back of a length and then goes back with a square on the offside. In comes the next delivery that uh, Byram gets the outside half of the bat and squirts to point. And that, you know, if he can blueprint a delivery, he's going to be somewhere near that uh, on a consistent basis and he might find a bit of joy. So has he got the ability to, to do that, to land it and land it and land it and not get bored? The sort of stuff that you see so regularly from, from your Ben Codes of this world, you know, from your Michael Nieces when he's playing. There we are, at least Yorkshire have got plenty of runs to play with as uh, Cliff bowls to Byram who drives back to the bowler who feels well in his follow through and uh, prevents any run being scored. But when, you, when you've when you got 500 on the board, it doesn't really matter if he goes for 30 or 40 fairly quickly. It's an experiment, it's, a, it's, it's a giving him the opportunity and I suppose you've got to 
try and let him bowl through this, haven't you? Yeah, absolutely. It's not as if the Yorkshire are only defending 200 and uh, it can be quickly uh, hunted down. As you say, give him a decent spell. Cliff in to bowl. Byram on the defensive, back to the polo fields again. 51 for two, Glamorgan. Northeast has eight. Byram has 27. The men out. Ul Hassan for eight. Ingram for five. A wicket apiece for Code. And Thompson. We have three overs to go until T. Uh, has Don Best got the, uh, the contract for an over before T uh, <laughs> written probably, in? Probably. It probably will have, won't he? Um, it's going to be Code continuing at uh, the Cathedral Road end to start with. But if. if you know, the old sporting cliche for us we commentators of a game of two halves or whatever the manager's comment that was that Ben Cliff over was kind of an over of two halves on <laughs> the first half it was one length and another and the second half is the bit that you want to take away with him because that was that was good stuff his code there you go right on the money see straight up and even he sometimes has an off day but he's just so consistent in terms of where he lands it and if there is anything there, he'll find it because he'll just drop and drop and drop. And if one keeps low, you better watch out at the striking end. And there's just been an odd one or two, it's particularly back end of Yorkshire's innings that were beginning to keep a little bit on the low side. Code after a word with Jordan Thompson comes in again. Oh, dropped him. Adam lies. You see, there's the danger of standing in so close. His reactions clearly weren't quick enough to get his mitts around that. Sam Northeast, the edge found by Ben Code. Good delivery once again. He'll be considering himself unlucky, but it was quickly on to Adam Lythe. Those who can see the streaming getting this again, pushes at one. Round about just outside off stump, and it's through Adam Lyers' hands before he's really got chance to react. He closed them on the right line, hmm. but unfortunately, the ball had gone. One run. Yeah, damned if you do, damned if you don't. If he'd been standing back in a more conventional position, it may not have carried to him. About a metre further back, and he might have been okay. We think about where a slip normally stands in relation to a keeper, and he's always behind him, isn't he? You know, in a traditional yeah. opening bowler's sense, but he's standing what must be three yards, two yards in front. Oh, inside edge is it this time from Byram? Or a, he might not have actually got anything on that. Johnny Tattersall going down the leg side takes a, a tumbling stop, and it could have been just low bounce that, which, if it was, just a couple of deliveries here that uh, are not going to please. The home batting side. We might get a chance to see that one again as well. 52 for two. And uh, a little bit of something happening here just before the tea break. Tattersall is now putting the lid on. And he's... Is he going to stand up? I thought it for a moment. He was going to put the lid on stay back. He's going to stand up. Ben Code, three to come in the over, round the wicket. Byram gets something on this and turns it into the leg side. Best fields, no run. Yeah, it would have been interesting to see that previous delivery again for those who can, just to see if it was inside edge, if it if it kept low, or maybe it was just it just beat everything. Adam Lyers just moved for a moment to leg slip, but has gone back to orthodox slip. George Hill is feeling a catching position just off the cut strip. At a very straight, short mid-off. Shan Masood to move wider at mid-off. As Code is in again, and that is flicked into mid-wicket where Bess feels once more. He's already got stripes all over his kit, Don Bess, from shining the ball, which, from this distance at least, after 15, nearly 16 overs, still looking in pretty good, Nick. Remember, Glamorgan, of course, changed the ball, didn't they, after what was it? Nine overs, seven overs? Seven overs, seven overs and again yeah. after 40. Three fielders in the arc, then in the offside. Hoping for a, a catch, a mistimed push drive. Something like that. Code's final ball, they overturned at 
to Jordan Thompson at mid-on. End of that, 16 gone. And uh, unlucky, I think you'd have to say, Ben Code, not to come out the other end of that over with a wicket. He's got seven overs, three maidens, one for seven against his name, Glamorgan, and 52 for two. Two overs then to survive until T for Glamorgan. <laughs> so uh, Cliff's first burst in first-class cricket is at an end because uh, Dom Bess will get the penultimate over before T. Different contracts all over the spinners, obviously. It's usually just the last one. Uh, but uh, hoping maybe for particular success from that end. 52 for two. Looks like we're uh, in for a moderately late finish. There's a bit of uh, n wind, obviously, getting up. Breeze on the effects microphone there. Don Best then with a slip and a short leg bowling to northeast who drives to mid on and uh, doesn't take the single. 52 for two. Northeast settling, facing up to Bess, who drives to mid on again. No run. Tom Bess, just the 21 wickets to his name in first class cricket in 2023. As uh, and he comes. Pounds to northeast, who defends it to short leg. No run. That includes a fifer in the very first match of the season, the defeat by Leicester Shire at Headingley. One, uh, sorry, five for one hundred and fifty-eight. As uh, down the wicket comes from northeast and drives it straight to short mid wicket. No run. I seem to remember he got a bit of tap from uh, Manus Labuschagne. He did, didn't he, in the Headingley match? Sadly, no Labuschagne with us at the moment for Glamorgan. As Northeast again plays to short mid wicket and there's no run. It didn't bowl in the first innings in that match, then 10 overs, no maidens, none for 76 in the second. Wasn't his week. 52 for two. Bess to Labuschagne, defends on the offside just for a change and uh, with an over to go before T Glamorgan 52 for 2 in reply to Yorkshire's 500 all out make an update for BBC Radio Wells in a moment OK do you want to carry on? An over to go before T. Glamorgan, a 52 for two in reply to Yorkshire's mammoth innings of 500 all out. The Pakistani test batter Shan Massoud scored 192 of them. Glamorgan eventually bowling at Yorkshire out in the afternoon with three wickets apiece for Carlson and Harris, but they're expensive ones. Glamorgan then lost Zainal Hassan for eight and Colin Ingram for five. Eddie Byram's on 27 not out as Glamorgan look to survive and limit the damage in this evening's session. Session with an over to go to T. Glamorgan 52 for two. So code from the Cathedral Road end for this uh, last six balls of the afternoon session. Wide on the crease, bowling here to Byram, who gets a ball short of length and helps it on its way around to Ben Cliff coming in from deep backwards square. One run. Still. Uh, only breezy out there. It, there's uh, cloud cover. You wouldn't say, although the pitch conditions for batting are good, that uh, conditions are terrible as far as bowling's concerned. I'd be happy with a bit of bit of grey overhead. Code you're going to bowl over the wicket to Sam Northeast. Yeah, quite pleasant for spectating. I slipped out for 20 minutes earlier on. It's, uh about what you'd hope for for this time of year, really, after the uh, the sizzling temperatures of last week. Yeah, it's got a little bit warmer as the day's gone on, hasn't it, as well? It's a bit more pleasant out there as Cody's in. Angled in towards northeast soft stump, and he drops that back uh, to the bowler in his follow-through. Still got George Hill just off the cut strip. Matthew Revis 
is a bit wider at a short mid wicket he'd be a dozen yards off the bat James Wharton's just been dropped a bit more like on the one in front of square on the leg side he'd be two or three strides in front of umpire Mark Newell Adam Lyons still closer in under the helmet at first slip but uh, although he couldn't get his mitts on a chance that went straight through his legs from northeast in the last over he's kept the same position another dot ball there from code northeast pushing into the offside five points to the Yorkshire so far maximum five batting points and a wicket away from taking the first bowling point Glamorgan picked up a couple of those in the 110 overs that's code in and that's punched up to Thompson at mid off and there's no run two balls remaining Yorkshire who lost uh, two points last week I was doing post match reports saying that they'd got 20 points which they mm. did from their win but then of course you're not usually around for those meetings and subsequently they lost uh, two points due to a slow over rate in that match so it was an 18 point win in the end they'll be keen not to squander any more of those and they're level at the moment on the over rate as code is in again of oh, northeast looking to flick to leg and just about will give him the benefit of the doubt <laughs> just he about controlled that one in his push forward we had very strange scenes at the end of the worcester game where Worcestershire were obviously going to win but uh, with nine glamorgan wickets down and 80 odd still needed to win they realized they were behind the over eight so they uh, bowled spin frantically for about 10 minutes yeah we had this last year i remember johnny tallisall taking the pads and gloves off and bowling a few leggies at uh, old trafford against lancashire this time last year when they were trying to avoid the drop so every point counted and they didn't want to lose anything on the board in that respect code is in and that's pushed into the offside by by, by uh, northeast to complete the 18th over and the second session on day two then so 32 overs remaining northeast not out on nine byram not out on 28 it's been a good afternoon again for yorkshire two wickets with the ball one each for ben code and jordan thompson and glamorgan 53 for two commentary resumes just after 4:25 here on bbc sport online
Hamilton to bring seats, Nottinghamshire 169 to 3, still trailing in Kent by 277 runs. A reminder that score sheets for this game are available free of charge from reception, situated on the ground floor of the Thatcher's Pavilion. That's where you can also purchase copies of the 2023 Glamorgan Yearbook. You can also obtain a yearbook plus much, much more from the Glamorgan Cup shop, which is run by Missouri Sports and situated opposite Gate 2. It will be open until just the turn of 5 o'clock this evening. And as always, it's a wide range of cricket equipment, other items, including replica Glamorgan kits and a range of recently published now, as far as refreshments are concerned, food and drink to be purchased from the kiosk situated in the concourse area beneath the pavilion stand. You can also purchase food and drink from the mobile unit beneath the cassette power stand. Snacks are also available from the vending machine situated at the rear of the indoor school. And finally, congratulations to Gary Hinder a long-standing Glamorgan member who sat celebrating his 66th birthday with friends at the River Island. Happy birthday, Dan.
Good evening and welcome back to Sophia Gardens where Glamorgan are just resuming their first innings on 53 for 2 in reply to Yorkshire's 3 uh, 500 all out. 3 5 1 is the target for Glamorgan to avoid the follow on and they lost the early wickets of Zainal Hassan bowled by Ben Code for 8 and Colin Ingram bowled by Jordan Thompson for 5. Both men playing down the wrong line. Eddie Byram is. Uh, taking guard again after tea from umpire Mark Newell and uh, he is on 28 not out I'm Nick Webb alongside me is Edward Bevan and bowling is Dom Bess who delivered a maiden first up from the River Taff end he's bowling with a slip and a short leg and and he comes to Byram, who turns it through short leg. I think I'm right in saying, Nick, that this is the first time that Byram has faced uh, Bass in this innings. The ball going away from the bat. There is some r rough there. But we saw Carlson getting some turn in the Yorkshire innings. As Bass bowls and Byram stretches forward, defends to mid on. Players fairly close in at cover and mid wicket effectively on the drive even if they're not quite crouching as uh, forward stretches Byram again and defends back to Bess bit of evening sunshine as the uh, shadow of the floodlight pylon stretches towards the middle and that of our media center out on the outfield as well Byram down the wicket but then plays defensively once he gets there Nick, there's a gentleman down there dressed in white and the most wonderful old cricket blazer, the striped one, as if he's playing for the gentleman against the players. You know <laughs> what I mean, don't you? Yes, I, I, know I if get you can the picture. See no, I can't quite. As best yeah. bowls, Byram stretches forward. Just by the entrance. <laughs> Defence to, uh, to mid-wicket. Oh, yes, I've got him now. Yes. I don't know it's what real the purpose old school, is. Old school blazer, that, isn't it? <laughs> 53 for two, it remains as Bess just changes the field for his last ball and brings short leg into point to get into uh, Byram's face as much as anything. Bess in bowls, Byram stretches forward, ball squirts just past point down to Gully. So uh, Don Bess bowls a second maiden to start his uh, day's endeavours. 53 for two, Glamorgan need a further 298 runs to avoid the possibility of being invited to follow on. You put it perfectly there, Mr Webb. <laughs> but I think you, there will be no possibility. There will be the question asked, would you like to follow on? What did Probably, you say not. No? Probably not. <laughs> A burly figure of Jordan Thompson is going to bowl this end, do bowl quite well. And bowled Colin Ingram with an absolute booty for five. He'll be bowling to Sam Northeast, who is on nine. And these have put on 34 for this third wicket. Here goes Thompson running away from us and bowls, and uh, forward comes northeast and plays it gently up to uh, mid off. 
two men on the on side for well normally you get fielders for the reverse swing on the drive and innovative field placing we've seen from Yorkshire this afternoon we saw it when Cold was bowling at the other end Thompson and bright sunshine runs away again gun barrel straight northeast comes forward suspect he's batting out of his crease because he got right to the pitch of that and took another sh little shuffle forward slip the gully a cover an extra cover and a mid off on the off side that's the field and then we've got those two men on the drive on the on side very close together captain is at mid on and a long leg as in comes Thompson bowls forced away but straight extra cover Again, there's no run. Yeah, Glamorgan with a reasonable amount of batting on paper on, in this match, but then they had it for the last match against uh, Worcester as well, and they were dismissed uh, twice fairly cheaply, albeit on a, uh, a rather more troublesome yeah, surface than this one. I thought it was a fairly good cricket wicket, put it that way. Well, they couldn't get uh, Billy Root out as Thompson is in, bowls again, down the leg side, clipped away. Helped on its way there by uh, North East and helps him to get into double figures. He moves on to 10. And the score is 54 for 2 by Robbins on 28. Yeah, not to put the, wish to put the curse on him, but uh, Root's last three matches, scores of 98, 52, 84 not out and 30 not out. Yes. He's a good neck at the moment, a little left-hander. 768 runs for the season. He's been consistent, isn't he? He had the odd little poor patch, but uh, he's a good man to come in at six, seven. Round the wicket now, he decides. Uh, Jordan Thompson, as he comes in and bowls to the left-handed Byron, who pushes it away, hoping to get it down to the vacant third-man boundary, but it's intercepted there in the gully. The trouble is with Glamorgan having Chris Cook at seven is that uh, obviously then you've got only room for four bowlers underneath that and you need an awful lot of work out of uh, a couple of your, your top six batters with the ball as well. Yeah, we've got Dothwaite coming in at, uh, at number eight today. And, uh, well, he, he might or he might not. <laughs> Thompson in past and by Hartley left outside the off stump. End of the over. With which Glamorgan are 54 for two, Northeast 10, Byram is 28. The two men out rather cheaply. Zainul Hassan bowled by Code for eight, and Colin Ingram bowled by Thompson for five. Both similar deliveries, which uh, hit one hits the top of the off stump and the other removed the off stump. Both these counties' second 11s are struggling slightly in this uh, final round of. Uh Second 11 games, Surrey 279 for three against Yorkshire at Guildford. And uh, Glamorgan seconds were bowled out by Sussex as best bowls and uh, North East defends. Glamorgan uh, 210 all out at uh, the other ground in Hove. I didn't know there was one, but apparently so. The academy ground. Bess in balls northeast turns it through short leg and that will be the first run off uh, Don Bess 55 for two northeast moves to 11 not out Glamorgan dismissed for 210 this is second 11 Roger Lewis 46 Prem Sosodia 43 and uh, it might be thought that one of those two might be playing here but uh, not so Sussex in reply going very strongly as Byram's hit on the pad by Bass, inquiry, but it dies away quickly. Ali Orr made 65, Harrison Ward is 96, not out. The only wicket there for the occasional spin of Tom Bevan. As Bass bowls, Byram shapes as if he's going to go for a big shot, but then plays it defensively Three through silly point. Ooh. Do you remember that uh, Sunday afternoon at Arundel, Nick? Yeah, it was very pleasant. Glorious weather. Sentries from Colin Ingram and uh, I think it was Luke Wright for Sussex. 
Yeah. The Sussex Century as well. Terrific two, game. Two hundreds in a match in T20. As Byram is forward defensively. <laughs> Needs to not get too defensive against uh, Don Bess, maybe. He's being rather allowed to bowl at the moment, just to single off his 17 balls so far. As uh, Byram clips that one, as if hearing me, I'm sure he mm -hmm. didn't, out towards deep mid-wicket, and they'll go through for a, a comfortable couple of runs as the throw overshoots keeper Johnny Tassel, but it's backed up, and uh, Glamorgan... Moving on to 57 for two after 21 overs. It's a slower run rate than Yorkshire, but that matters not. It's uh, purely a question of uh, Glamorgan getting that uh, 351 target to avoid the possibility of the follow-on. Yes, you're right. They're letting Bess bowl at them and uh, mid-off and mid-on are up not too close, but the orthodox parallel to the bowler. And I can think of batsman past and present uh, wouldn't allow that to happen I'll refer back to that in a moment as Thompson starts in the over bowls and that's a good looking shot that might well race to the boundary it's a long chase for one of the fielders and it's, I think it's Wharton he's, yeah, they go back for a second and I think of someone of this parish MP Maynard now the county coach and countless times I saw him get after spinners who had batsmen around the bat <laughs> in no time at all and they were back patrolling the boundary yeah I mean Byram can hit in T20 but I'm not sure either of those as a natural hitter in championship yes Thompson he's in again and bowls and this is played defensively as is Sam Northeast a good player of spin we've noticed in the past if you want someone to get after the bowling it's more likely to be uh, Carlson or Carlson. Root, isn't it he is another one. We talked of past the present, and you're absolutely right, Nick uh, Carlson. Will shimmy down to the off spin of uh, best. As long as he gets inside the ball, so if it does spin, he can just come and hit him on the pad. Slip and a gully. Uh, the close field is, is this is put by up to mid on. Languid little walk to the ball from the captain, Sean Mansoud. Shalman Sood made 192 in the Yorkshire innings until he, strange, he'd been at the crease for hours and hours and then just pushed the ball gently to a short extra cover and walked off. Here is Thompson, he's in and bowls and this time he's played away and fielded at one of the fielders there on the drive and the on side you can't call them silly mid on and you can't call them really on the drive but they're in between if you know what I mean just waiting for somebody to drive miss time drive playing too early they are specifically catching rather than single yes, saving exactly. positions they don't have to worry about runs at all to Yorkshire 59 for two Glamorgan partnership worth 40 in comes Thompson bowls and that's correct good looking shot straight coming up towards us towards the long on boundary and it's going to be stopped just inside across for a comfortable couple and, uh, North East now beginning to play with increased confidence he gets another couple he moves on to 15 the uh, tall burly figure of Mickey Edwards is uh, oh, on the field him. as a substitute yes. the uh, Australian born Fast bowler with Rather long, long erratic, blonde hair. Wasn't he? Uh, he was against Glamorgan. Yeah, yeah. he's uh, just played the three championship games this season. In comes Thompson, leg side ish, and is played up towards mid on. End of the over, and uh, it's 61 for two. So Byram and Northeast trying their very best to resurrect this innings or rebuild it. Because, um, Having lost the last game heavily, Glamorgan Nord will suffer on this same occasion, having just lost one game up to the beginning of September. Yeah, Glamorgan won one, lost one, and ten draws. Yorkshire won two, lost two, and seven draws. Yorkshire have played a, a game fewer because they have two to come after this. Leicestershire away, Worcestershire at home, and uh, Leicestershire look unlikely to uh, Sussex, though, yeah. keep their... Uh, promotion challenge going 
as uh, Bess bowls and Byram drives out into the offside but it's uh, well intercepted by Hill at cover and there's no run um, Sussex look as if they might win this one yeah, they're 170 for three, uh, Sussex. That's a lead of 324 over Leicestershire. Day and a half left. Did it. As uh, forward props Spiram and uh, defends. What am I talking about? Two and a half days left. Two and a half yeah. days, yeah. Yeah, two and a bit. Hot and favourite. And the final session on uh, day two here in Cardiff, running a little late due to morning rain as Byram defends. Uh, Duncan says uh, in Kent reports that the academy ground in uh, or labelled as Hove is eight miles up the road and Duncan saying he hopes that Ben Kellaway's recovery goes as carefully as possible yes our best wishes to uh, Ben and his family if any of them are listening yep and the youngster ruled Second out that. with concussion as there's an appeal for LPW, <laughs> Byram tries the reverse sweep. There's rather a strangled appeal, and they'll take a couple of runs as the ball trickles down towards third man, retrieved by Lythe. And uh, there was a bit of bat involved, so the appeal for LBW was uh, completely misguided. 63 for two. Byram moves to 32 of those. As... Uh, he pushes <laughs> forward, Bess giving it the full Amdram treatment for a perfectly respectable defensive shot. 63 for two. As uh, Byram tries the reverse again, there's an appeal for LPW. No, no, no. Slightly more serious from Bess this time, but uh, no response from umpire Newell. 63 for two in reply to 500 all out from Yorkshire. See the Glamorgan Championship captain David Lloyd has been uh, spotted here. Nice yeah. to see him Spoke back. Spoke to him yesterday. Did you had, a, had, had a word with him. How was the, the rib feeling, did you ask him? He just said, uh, well, you know, it's coming along, but there we are, he can't play. I don't suppose he'd play in the last game either, but uh, would he, oh, that game would be against. Oh. But uh, I wonder if they'd offer him that game or whether it might be too awkward, really. Well, he was down if to he play, was wasn't fit. he? If he were fit, yeah. yeah he was yeah. going to play in every yeah. game. Um, well, we heard, didn't we, that he was out for the season? Uh, he said probably that, yes. But it'll be very sad to see David Lloyd go on. Mm, quite. And, uh, having seen him start his career. But uh, more of that, I think, again. Thompson will start another over to the right handed Sam Northeast, who pulls a short court ball out to. Fine leg didn't get. Up. He was trying to hit it square, but it uh, in the end ended up down at uh, fine leg, and he gets a single. Yeah, good cricketer David Lloyd, and he'll be much missed. Two Glamorgan, I think you've been asking me a few times in the past two days. I think Doug Glamorgan look for a experienced opener. Do you, do you try and persist with uh, Al Hassan? So. Lots of things that uh, need to be done, I think, before the start of next season. Haven't heard anything of you? BD Not as yet BDIs on eyes and BD ears. Not as, as yet uh, on new signings. Around the wicket comes Thompson, who's played defensively on the offside, no run. Um, who's contracts and who's leaving, who might be leaving, who might be coming here? Or yeah, well, what I mean intrigues me mostly is the overseas position. Yeah, Labuschagne is well, technically signed for next season, but obviously depends on the Australian uh, schedule. Well, a few people have asked me why uh, is th what is the point? The point is that if he plays five games in Glamorgan, win a couple, it didn't happen last year. Uh, and you've got Colin Ingram, who is now that the next ball is defended. What is his position? Is he going to be Welsh next year? Because he lives in Cardiff now. Um, no, I don't think he can qualify, qualify. as, uh, as homegrown, so he wouldn't be playing at the same time as two other overseas players. As, as far as I'm aware, uh, he is in, on contract for next season, as theoretically as Labuschagne. I don't think Nisa is. He made the usual polite noises about how he'd love to be back, yeah. but uh, we'll uh, wait and see on that one. 
In comes Thompson. That leg side clipped away. There might be a couple here. It's going up towards the square leg boundary. The man of fine leg is sliding to stop and does so. But uh, two more runs to uh, Eddie Byram. And he's moved on to 34. Playing quite nicely as is Northeast. 66 for two. Talking about Australian seamers, Nick. I see how. Our friend Michael Hogan dismissed the knots openers at a personal cost of 10 runs. Slater and Habib. So the old Warriors still going well down at Kent. Hasn't played a lot recently. Thompson. Oh, around the wicket. It's in bowls and this is defended. Yeah, on. speaking of, of whom, and in, you've been in, in touch with him, is he looking for any more in the UK or is this his final final season <laughs> how many times have you said that in the past three years <laughs> I, I haven't spoken to him about that no we just get a catch up now and again and see how things are going he's very happy you know they've treated him very very well down there and he's done what they've asked taken a few wickets and he didn't play in the one day he's obviously at the age of uh, 65 now as he is <laughs> hope you're listening Hog. <laughs> Thompson comes in and bowls and this is defended up to mid on effective over that but uh, not effective enough to get a wicket 66 for two Byram is 34 northeast is 16 overs left today 26 overs left 10 to 6 so we're talking about quarter past six but I suspect and I hope <laughs> that Mr. Best will bowl through yeah, Mr. Hogan is not likely to be listening since he's out in the field. And Still out there, gonna, yeah. yeah, nuts, 178 for 6. 3 for Aaron Nijar, the spinner, spinner from Essex on loan to Kent. Bess into his fifth over. And North East defends. He's conceded just five runs so far. Yeah, we're mid-off and mid-on up. I wonder if he'll try and just lift him over the top because he is... You've seen him only with neck in one-day cricket and this sort of bowling, he's there and hits it very, very hard and very long. North East steps oh, back gone. and he's gone. gone. Bess has got one through. North East trying to cut. The bales are disturbed and North East goes for 16. Bess gets his first wicket, 66 for three. Yeah, and Wise to play that shot saying in cricket don't try and cut the off spin until you've got 150 was well, there a little bottom edge we'll see on the replay which yeah, is uh, dangerous to now oh he's dragged oh, that one on yeah. I think so you've had a few drag on Adam Lynch dragged one on somebody else and now uh, yeah we see it from straight on well it's uh, not to his delivery really fairly wide or oh, it's yeah. turned a bit actually that has turned yeah it's hit the rough you could see the desk hit the going. top of off. Yeah. I'm not sure if there was an inside edge. Uh, after all, that turned a long way. Yeah, you could see it hit on that rough outside the off stump. Um, he'll probably regret playing such a shot. Look from behind as if he must have uh, dragged it on, but I think it was just the uh, the sharp spin, so all credit to Don Bass there. Glamorgan, yeah. 66 for three. A long, long way to go to that uh, first target of 351 for the, the follow on. Well, the captain is coming in and he is one, as we mentioned earlier on, not to fiddle around or play defensively, but uh, we'll have to see what his approach is. The approach, is, well, I better get a few runs. I'm not going to push around here and get out for a slow score. We need runs badly. Do I go in and play a few shots? We'll just have to wait and see. And uh, Glamorgan in, in dire trouble at the moment at 66 for three. They've been behind the eight ball throughout this game. And at the moment, it's going to be hard work for these batsmen. Forecast says it's going to be a lot of rain tomorrow, but uh, you know, in these parts, that can quickly change its mind. Yeah, may get a delayed start, but I suspect we'll be playing by around lunchtime, yeah. at least. Mr. Morgan would like a day off, no <laughs> doubt. <sighs> Pass bowls to Kieran Carlson, who's quicker pushing forward to defend mid on and mid off. And just that touch further back, I think, for Carlson. 
to tempt him to hit over the top. There might be a single available to them as uh, Carlson props forward. Morgan, looking back on the records, had uh, five of the 11 players who got two single-figure scores against uh, Worcestershire. All right, a couple of them was the, the lower order, but uh, a few low scores around at the moment. And Carlson pushes that one down towards backward point, asks Eddie Byram if he fancies a single. Byram replies in the negative. So Another bowling point then, first bowling point for Yorkshire, so they're on course here. They've got six already to Glamorgan's two. Yeah, Otis Gibson's hopes for a strong September being borne out so far. As Carlson drives through the covers for four runs, I think. Four runs? Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, look for a moment as though uh, Sean Massoud was chasing it in earnest, but uh, he didn't bother to uh, try to put a spurt on. 70 for three at the end of Don Bess's wicket taking over, in which he's got rid of some northeast bowled by a, a bit of a ripper for 16. Yes, and as we mentioned, Carlson doesn't hang around against spin, and that's a bit of a trademark shot for him now. That uh, uh, he plays it so well and really forces it at the very last moment, uh, the shot off the spinner through the cover. We've seen him play a lot of those shots throughout the season, and very effective. And they do look good when they when they leave the bat and, and go straight down to the extra cover boundary. Thompson to continue then at this the uh, Cathedral Road end. And uh, in he comes round the wicket, bowls to Byron, and Byron pushes it away, but uh, a despairing dive there. There'll be one, certainly, and there'll be two. Is he going to run away for... F f wow, that looked a bit dubious. But uh, I thought he just took his body over the line, but you can never tell. You see, in county cricket, you don't get the replay. No. The field that gets the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, he probably pulled it in in time. Hundred. Score moves on to 72 for 3.36 to Byron, who's doing his best to try and hold his innings together. Here he goes, Thompson again, into the left-handed Byron and bowls. This time is clipped away to one of those two fielders on the onside. There's no run. Sun blaring down on the one of the lights, the floodlights, is coming right across the side and it's just off the pitch. It's going on the pitches to the right of it. You can see the imprint of those uh, those lights. Going well, just it must be quite empire. distracting. I was thinking that, yeah, but it's just... Butter's taking guard in that area. ...forward, uh, just to the right of, of a length and uh, just behind where you expect the ball to land. But uh, it could be. There's somebody coming in of a nervous disposition. <laughs> Thompson bowls. Byram defends up to on the offside. Much work for the Glamorgan batsmen to do. They've got batsmen. They've got these two, of course. And then they've got uh, Billy Root and uh, Chris Cook and Dan Delthwaite, if he gets one of his days, he got 100 last week in the second team, but this is a different kettle of fish. Just the one slip in attendance and a, a deep gully. In comes the next ball, that uh, swings into the batsman. He's pushed back up to mid on. Yeah, a bit of movement in the air there. Yeah. Not express pace there, but uh, just enough from Thompson. Seventy-two for three. People enjoying the sunshine in the far side of the ground. Late summer. Thompson bowls. Bowls a bouncer, and uh, it's well played there by the batsman Eddie Byram, who ducks out of the way. A lot of sunbathing going on on the far side. Yeah, take the chance while you can. You don't know when you're going to get a sunny day at the cricket again. Glamorgan's uh, final home game doesn't Next June, start perhaps. until uh, 
When are we? 26th, the game against Derbyshire here. This erratic. Here comes Thompson, bowls, and he takes his bat away. Through to the keeper, end of the over. The erratic scheduling of the cricket season has continued this year, will probably continue next year. And as in from an item, while well, the game still lasts, well, the, the T20 World Cup uh, in um, West Indies, isn't it, next summer is, is going to influence them. I'm not quite sure why, because... Uh, it's like the test matches uh, you in know, this country. They're, they're very relatively few uh, supporters going to be heading out to the West Indies to, to follow in. Oh, I think in they might. That's, a, that's such a... Yeah, but you're only uh, talking a uh, few thousand across the, the 18 counties, aren't you? Bess, a false start. Short leg and a slip for Carlson on strike. Bess in to bowl. Carlson props forward mm. to defend. No run. Yeah, going to that shot from northeast, it, it um, he would probably regret playing that now going back because it was well, fairly well pitched up. Bess bowls. Carlson squared up. Defends on the leg side. No run. Don Bass, now 17 wickets for Yorkshire this season. This is seventh match. As Carlson is forward defending. No run. 14 tests for Bass between 2018 and 2021. There's Pal to a leech. Jack Leach, rather. As uh, pushed wide of short leg by Carlson. Again, no run. Bright sunshine, very pleasant scene at Sophia Gardens. Yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? As uh, in comes the next delivery. Carlson's gone for that one, and he's hit it over the top for half a dozen up towards Typical. long off. Typical, isn't it? So uh, Carlson wasn't going to ever be bogged down for a long time by... Don Bass giving him the charge and uh, Sean Massoud sportingly raising the arms to uh, denote for half a dozen as Don Bass shows the ball to umpire Newell. Um, I've been Jonathan ushered out in my yes. seat, by the way. Ush, ush. Off you go, Edward. See you in half an hour or oh, so. Thank you. That's the As... Uh, Jonathan Doidge will be back with us before he does his uh, range of radio reports in the evening. Carlson defends the last ball of the over. Have you got anything in the language of heaven, Edward? Have you heard from them? Have you got anything in the language of heaven? Not today. Not not, uh, not called upon to deliver. Anyone think there's a Rugby World Cup going on to take the sporting headlines from our BBC Radio Cymru colleagues? 78 for three, Carlson 10, Byram 36. Still a long, long way to go for Glamorgan. Patience and skill needed to replicate the efforts led by Shan Massoud for the, the visitors. Matthew Revis going on at the Cathedral Road end. For the first time in this match, he took five wickets across the two innings at Scarborough last week in a, his best all-round performance yet I think it's fair to say in first-class cricket with a ton hmm he's in form there he comes then to Ed Byram around the wicket first up and that's dropped into the offside no run mentioned those speeds that uh, Harrison sent me earlier let me just revisit that, that message uh, average of 78.3 MPH and uh, a maximum of 83.3. So he's not slow. Matthew Revis, there's, uh, there's a fair size about him as well. Comes down from a, a good height and he's angling this one in towards Byram and punches out into the offside. And Masood feels it was all a bit of a experiment, I think. Uh, a bit random how he first started. Probably 
think it was three winters ago. Might have been four. Um, sending the ball down with a bit of pace and I thought, oh, I might have something here that we can try. And it's proved to be successful as he drops this delivery, Byram does, out into the offside for James Wharton, who's got the shin pads on under his whites to do the fielding. Shin pads hopefully not needed where he's fielding right this moment in time. Now in the covers. George Hill is sweeping out of point, deep backward point. Tom Bess has gone all the way out to deep backward square. One slip in a gully and a ring field in front of the bat. And Revis goes short. Oh. Now then, he's tried to pull out of playing anything at this as Byram. What is Peter Hartley going to give? Has he given anything? I haven't seen him make a signal. Didn't Ball's disappeared signal over the boundary for four. Yeah. He's, no, he's got the bat on it, hasn't he? He's trying to draw the bat out of the way to a short ball. Is that off the bat or the yeah, shovel? Yeah, off the bat. It was off the top edge of the bat as he's pulling it away. And I think it just hits... Yeah, the top of the blade splice area. Involuntary edge. He's taking the four, though, and he's on to 40 now. And he runs this... Next delivery out to Finlay Bean at Gully, but there you go. If you just want in a sniff as a bowler, that you've got a bit of doubt already in the batter's mind. I didn't actually see him per Hartley signal that at all. No. Seems to be messing around with the, the sweater that he's holding <laughs> rather than signalling the runs. Well, it might have been proper Yorkshire, but it was pretty obvious it's foreign. It? It's gone <laughs> over the boundary. What do I have to signal that? It's foreign to <laughs> It's your job, matey. <laughs> Ravis for Byram, wide of off stump, gone! He's driven at one, wide of off stump, and Matthew Revis makes an immediate impact with the ball. His uh, final ball of his first over, and Finlay Bean, a very sharp catch, dying on him at gully. There was one that dropped just short of him from the other end earlier, off the bowling of Ben Cliff. Well, this time, uh, he's able to get his hands around it, and that is the end of Byram, who'd been building quite nicely for 40, 82 for four. Just look at his shot here. He's down on one knee to play. He's nowhere near getting close to it, is he, in terms of the pitch. And he's going to look at that. When you're playing a rear guard action, oof, he's going to look at that again and again and again and think, why? Got away with one that he was trying to pull out of early in the over, but he definitely went at that. Good catch, Finley Bean. Maybe it's just the sort of ball that you think that is too good a, a scoring opportunity to uh, to pass up if he'd lashed it through the covers but yes he's he, down on one knee and he didn't step into it did he, he didn't move across he, he almost if you watch his back foot he doesn't back away from it but he's certainly it's, yeah look his back foot comes down to get his knee down he's just he's just got nowhere near the pitch of it so not in control Finley Bean is a very sharp catch. I've got to say that you would see him. You know, he's, he's got wicket-keeping experience, but you'd definitely be looking at him for your first slip fielder, something like that, first, second slip. He's been in at third a lot of the time, but I think the long-term option, he's a real good grabber. He made no mistake. So 82 for four which is a sorry state for the Glamorgan innings as Billy Root is out to join Kieran Carlson. He won't be on strike immediately because it was the last ball of uh, Revis is over. Root say, seems uh, to have been in decent nick over the last three matches. And Glamorgan in desperate need of a big score. From someone in the next few batters, as Carlson turns the first ball of Bass's over down towards deep square leg, where um, it's juggled and uh, eventually fielded. 83 for four. Billy Root, left-hander. I believe he's got a brother playing somewhere, but we don't talk about him much around here. It, it, he's not got a lot to offer, to be honest. He's, I think he's struggling to hold on to his uh, international place at the moment. Just the however many thousand test runs is. 
Billy Root on the strike and um, a tentative token appeal first ball as he sits on the pad the Sheffield born left hander wearing seven no longer 66 he started off with 66 at Glamorgan but then changed it Root who is signed up for next summer I'm assured stretches forward and defends towards mid on Morgan already losing David Salter uh, uh, David Lloyd Andrew Salter is retired and Callum Taylor from the staff as Root drives to wide mid on and eventually Carlson responds to the request for a single a little hesitant to get underway as he think thought for a moment that uh, it might be intercepted by Thompson at mid wicket but it wasn't 84 for four Root off the mark as uh, Bess will bowl to Kieran Carlson who hit him for six in the last over and this time he just drives all along the ground two mid off Masood Fields and there's no run it said it'd be nice to hear some uh, familiar voices with Yorkshire in town now settled I believe in the Usk area apologies if that's not correct Billy Root as uh, Carlson defends the last ball of Bess's over to the usual uh, accompaniment of histrionics two singles were taken from the over and Glamorgan needing 351 to avoid the possibility of being asked to follow on are in uh, some trouble at 84 for four with Cook and Downthwaite to come but uh, major innings desperately needed from at least one and preferably a couple of uh, those four with Harris Gorvin and McElroy making up 9-10 Jack Wales football by the way 7.45 in Latvia this evening coverage on BBC Radio Wales BBC 5 Sports Extra and BBC Sounds from our team out there the Skonto Stadium in Riga, Wales in dire need of a win after just one win in 13 Ravis bowling here to Billy Root Oof, goes back well, he's anchored at the crease isn't he playing at that, he looked very open and as if that one might creep through, his uh, record against Yorkshire batted nine times previously for either the Leeds and Bradford University side, as, as was his first first-class match against the county, or since then for Bill Morgan, he's 110 not out, his highest. That was in April of 21, when we were up at uh, Headingley. In the snow. In the snow, yeah. 51 not out as well. In the match back up there in May, just gone. He's having a little dab at one that's full and wide of off stump and misses out on this occasion. So average is 48 plus against uh, Yorkshire which might be a little crumb of comfort at this moment in time when you're looking at 84 for 4 but uh, in all honesty somebody needs to go big here don't they at the moment it hasn't happened 40 the best by Eddie Byram Revis in again round about off stump so good looking enough delivery Root just plays with that open style so sometimes he looks as though he's inviting it onto his stumps but he watched it well didn't he and played it away square on the offside for one if I remember correctly I think Yorkshire posted uh, six fielders square or behind the wicket on the offside against uh, Billy Root and he was caught at one of the gullies yep he does get that way around doesn't it a lot really it's almost like Shivnarayan Chanderpaul's position except he's that was his stance Billy doesn't stand that way but then kind of moves into that sort of position pretty quickly it's almost like his trigger Revis in and that's ball short of length and punched into the offside where John Thompson does the fielding brilliant sunshine at the moment much nicer than it was earlier but there is it, we talk about blankets of cloud. Look at that away to the left. It's just <laughs> like a thin 
layer of cloud that is in blanket form yeah. is uh, coming in from uh, the west. Um, no. <laughs> All right, OK. It's coming in from somewhere. Revis is in, and that's punched off the back foot. The ball short of length. It's going to just make it over the boundary, but it'll still count for as many from the bat of Kieran Carlson. That's more a northerly direction. Is it? Let's have a look. Yeah, spot on. Local knowledge and all that. Yeah, we're, we're pretty much east, west to east as we look at the field here, aren't we? Yep. The weather comes frequently from the, the southwest. Revis in once again. And that's straight. And Keeps Carlson honest with a push back to the bowler to complete his second over. One for nine against his name. That wicket um, of, uh, of uh, Eddie Byram. And 89 for four with still 20 overs remaining in the day at uh, 10 past five. Which means we're not able to uh, predict the weather from visual signs here very often because it's uh, usually coming from behind our uh, media box. Visual clue is if you can see Philly Mountain away to our left, which is uh, quite clear at the moment. If you can't, you're in trouble. Don Bess to continue wheeling away. Wicked of Sam Northeast under his belt. It's in to bowl, and Billy Root stretches forward and defends to cover. And there's no run. 89 for four. Mountain for Glamorgan to climb. Root defends on the onside, and there's no run. Glamorgan have had this before, where they're, they've had trouble picking up in September after the break for the One Day Cup. Root drives towards mid on, intercepted by Thompson at mid wicket, no run. It's happened at least a couple of times in the uh, last few years. As uh, Root drives back to the bowler, Bess, I think, was trying to flick it onto the stumps but didn't get much on it, and it was uh, fielded by Masood at mid off. So, uh, Yorkshire starting this block with a bang, a big victory over Derbyshire. Glamorgan defeated by 80 runs at Worcester as Root turns the next ball towards. Short leg, I think it might even have bounced off James Wharton there. 89 for four. As uh, Wharton stopped that one with his boot, in fact. Best right arm round. Root steps back, plays it into the offside. Good diving save at cover. No run. 89 for four. It was a maiden over from uh, Don Bess. Adam Lythe is doing a bit of pointing. Mickey Edwards, I think, is chugging onto the field to do some more twelfthers duties. Big Eight, Mick. 89 for four. Yeah, always uh, <laughs> fancies his chances on Strictly. Bit of uh, bit of boogie at point. He's had a plantar fasciitis issue. Oh, ouch. Which has been keeping him sidelined. I'm not I'm not sure that's the only thing that's been up, but uh, that's certainly one of them. As Revis is in, and uh, this is calling upon Big Mick to come in and do the fielding from point. Needs to tuck his shirt in, dear me. <laughs> He's tied his hair up. I had that a few years back, plantar fasciitis. It's a strange affliction. It seems so innocuous, but it's quite painful. Yeah, had to do various exercises with a strange shaped rolly thing, a bit of plastic. <laughs> Roll it back and forth underneath your foot. I can see people rushing to the shops who've got it to, to buy a strange shaped rolly thing now. <laughs> um, uh, as described by 
Nick Webb <laughs> on a cricket commentary as that's pushed out by Carlson into the offside for Big Mick to feel once again. He's certainly not uh, short of a, a bit of chat, Big Mick. He came and did some commentary with us a couple of times while he was in the early part of his time being out before he could properly get cracking on some rehab. And look at that with the Ashes series was going on at the time, of course. Australia were had the upper hand at the time. They wasn't sure of a bit of confidence in their abilities to win the series, which of course proved unfounded. Carlson on 15 on strike after a few words from Ben Code. Matthew Fisher will come in once again. And uh, he's got underneath this one as Kieran Carlson for a little while at least on its way out to George Hill, but no danger of being caught in the end. He's got a single. Carlson on to 16. He's faced 19 so far. That's six off Don Bess and a couple of fours. Bess has bowled pretty tidily though. One for 17 from his eight. Ben Code, miserly as ever. Eight overs, one for eight. And Revis with one for ten from what is 15 deliveries so far. They've gone for a another interesting field with a man just in front of point. Two gullies to Billy Root. So similar to that field that they had up at Headingley early in the season to him. And he drove this latest delivery to mid-off. And there was no run. Yeah, some breaking news that uh, Edward brings to my attention is that uh, Middlesex have uh, hit some financial problems after an investigation from the ECB. And well, Revis to Root, who's dropping into the offside and scurrying through, taking on Bess, will win that race. That's not good to hear. Um, any more on it? Middlesex Cricket Board and Middlesex County Cricket Club have accepted non-compliance of their partnership agreement with the ECB and that the club has been financially mismanaged over a number of years and is in breach of ECB financial regulations. Uh, lack of effective governance and oversight. Parties have agreed a written business plan will be prepared for approval and monitoring by the ECB. Revis in from the Cathedral Road end, bowling there to Carlson, who blocks into the offside end of the over. 91 for four. So the ECB will reduce payments to the club Middlesex by £150,000, of which £100,000 will be suspended. So that's effectively a 50 grand fine. And there are suspended points deductions in all three competitions. Mm -hmm. The Championship one day cup and T20 blast um, for of just one win in each of those comps but that's suspended for a couple of years as well so uh, basically it's a 50 grand up fine up front as I read it and then uh, various other penalties if they don't fall in line as best starts a new over with the full pitch ball that Root doesn't really take advantage of it's in out to square leg for a single. So, uh, most little sex have to demonstrate a sustainable year-on-year -year profit. Well, hmm. um, not all county clubs can guarantee profits year-on-year -year and limit spending on players with an appropriate budget. As Carlson drives back to Bess, who flicks it back towards the stumps and misses. Uh, Close monitoring by the ECB. So, uh, not entirely surprised to hear that. As uh, Carlson drives but doesn't time it back to the bowler. Because uh, they were having difficulty in uh, giving uh, contracts longer than one season to players uh, a couple of years ago. As Carlson pushes forward defensively, no run. And uh, I think there were various holes in the, uh, the pension allocations for, for players as well. 
It's around the time that James Harris, perhaps understandably, decided to come back to Glamorgan. Carlson tries the reverse and gets it away, just about, not entirely off the meat, but uh, well enough. That'll race down to the third man boundary for four runs. As Carlson moves on to 20 and Glamorgan on to 96 for four, needing 3-5-1 to avoid the follow-on. Yorkshire making 500 all out. So, uh, yeah, Middlesex in a, a unique position, really, at the moment, uh, in being tenants at their main ground. As Carlson drives, but doesn't time it again, off the inside edge, it goes on the, uh, the leg side, but... Uh, Given the financial speculation uh, flying around Yorkshire and potential buyers and lease backs of, of Headingley, how much truth there is in those, I'm not sure from the outside, but uh, Middlesex in, in some trouble at the moment and uh, needing to financially reorganise. Whether that means that any players of theirs will be on the market, we will see. Matthew Revis then to bowl here to Billy Root. Left-handed, of course, for those who can't see him. And uh, in comes the Yorkshire bowler. Has he got him here? He has. Billy Root gets a short ball. That's a really well-aimed short ball by Matthew Revis. And he's put his bat up in front of his face as partly guarding it I think partly to play it he doesn't really want to in the end but he's feathered it through to Johnny Tattersall a second wicket for Matthew Revis great start for him with the ball from this Cathedral Road end and Glamorgan in all sorts of trouble now you'd have to say at 96 for 5 and still trailing by 404 runs it was a, a rip snorter of a short ball and he's got his man he's looking at his arm as he walks off Billy Root Oh yes, that from behind the wicket shows that he should not have been given, in my opinion. Yeah, it didn't look a great call in the end. Couldn't see that, couldn't possibly see that at first up. But it's the fact, that what's done him is the fact that he's brought his bat right across his body, hasn't he? he and Peter Hartley in the moment, yeah, he's... It has been a deflection. But that is yeah. round about just below the elbow, really. And that's uh, that's a wrong decision. Yeah, it's not looking a good one. Matthew Revis will take it. Billy Root will yeah. have something to uh, reflect on. And I'm sure somebody will be taking that up with the, the powers that be. At, uh, four off 16 deliveries from him. Second wicket for Revis. And as I say, it's 96 for five. Initial thought was it had flicked the glove on the way through, but uh, it was Root was wearing a short sleeve shirt, and it was considerably above that. Yeah, it was just just below the sleeve, wasn't it? Really, so I'd, have, I'd have gone for just above the elbow, as opposed to just below. But anyway, it's it wasn't the glove. <laughs> no, it looks like it skimmed the arm. So uh, he's got a bad one there, unfortunately for him. Just the time where Glamorgan didn't need a, a poor decision against them. And it's it's easy for us to uh, criticise with the uh, the benefit of these slow mo replays from in front and behind, but uh, shouldn't have been given out. Yeah, not easy at all. I mean, as I say, we, I called it, and you can, from from the dis distance, and obviously Peter Hartley is a lot closer, but from this distance, you just saw deviation, and. Uh, Looked like he got a nick, but it does look like the arm as Cook, Chris Cook, is in. And uh, he's just got four off his first delivery, which Revis banged in a bit shorter of length again. But the angle was wrong down the leg side. So uh, two for 15 now against his name, but it's the two that uh, really count. He'll have had uh, Baddens himself when batting, so... Yeah, sure there'll things, be an element of sympathy with Billy afterwards. These things even themselves up in the long run. But that's no consolation in the short term. No. Just like James Wharton's yesterday, I'm sure I've not spoken to James, but watched it again last night. And 
uh, Revis is in and that's turned into the leg side Wharton in to do the fielding they get plenty of them right as well and they don't have the benefit of third umpires and all of that at this level so that's the job I'm afraid Edward is inquiring about uh, the sort of speeds uh, was he one of the ones that you mentioned the speed for Matthew Revis um, 80, uh, 78 to 83 well, just over 78 to just over 83 yeah here he is again. Good delivery from Revis. There's a big appeal, and he's got him. Chris Cook rooted to the spot on the crease, and Matthew Revis is going through the middle order now for Glamorgan. He has three wickets to his name, and he can only bowl the ball and wait for the umpire's decision. And on this occasion, the finger was raised again. Peter Hartley goes for a chat with Mark Newell. Chris Cook goes back to the dressing room for just the four, and Glamorgan 100 for six first time around. Oh, well, I mean, if, <laughs> if um, there was any doubt about the previous one, yeah. I don't think there's much about that, is there? Unless there's some edge in there. Uh, yeah. Might have got the, uh, attributed the uh, the decision of Root wrongly to uh, Mr Newell. Let's uh, have a, a slow-mo of this that we're able to get to see if Chris got... No, no bat. No bat involved. And Cook's gone, trapped on the back foot. Revis has three for 15. And uh, Glamorgan are plummeting towards a likely follow-on. And with 16 overs to go tonight, they might uh, find themselves even batting again this evening, unless there's some stern resistance from the, the tail end and a, a deficit Currently a 400 runs. Yorkshire are really very firm favourites to wrap up victory at some point here in Sapphire Gardens. Now here's a, a little bit of history. The first time that uh, Glamorgan have a replacement player batting. Wasn't able to bowl because he's not the same sort of bowler as Ben Kellaway. It's meant to be a like-for-like -like replacement. And Dan Douthwaite playing his first first team game since round two. He's only played uh, three first class innings this season of 15, 12, and one not out. Century for the second team against Gloucestershire last week. And uh, a little bit of fortune for Yorkshire in this over with the decision from umpire Hartley, but. Uh, Little doubt about the Cook one. So Revis to Douthwaite. Full and straight first up. And at the moment, he's just on one of those spells where you think anything could happen. But Douthwaite watched it well. Huge job for him to do at this moment in time. Still another 251 to avoid being asked to follow on. But uh, obviously Yorkshire won't want to let this drift there might be some rain around, but as you alluded to, if they could, 16 overs remaining today. See the back of Glamorgan first time, that gives them ample time in and out of the weather. A uh, bit of fortune on his side with one of those wickets, but uh, well bowled still to Matthew Revis. Three for 15 from four overs so far, and Glamorgan 100 for six. I'm going to have to dip out and do some updates elsewhere. Uh, thank you, Johnson. If you're uh, going to be sometime as it seems you will perhaps you could send uh, Mr Bevan back our way Jonathan Dodge off to update the good folk of Humberside York and Leeds and hopefully I'll be back uh, for the last half hour or so bright sunlight so uh Looks as though we should get through all these overs. 6.30 finish, I would have thought, as Carlson drives in the offside and will pick up at least a couple of runs here. It is going to be uh, hauled up inside the wide, long off boundary. Carlson goes on to 22. Having watched powerless from the other end. 
during that uh, successful Revis over. In comes Bess and Carlson pushes forward and uh, plays it very gently in the covers and there is no one in the covers so it's a very easy single by the time uh, Revis has wandered in from deepish mid-off. He'll now move over onto the leg side for some reason. Just swapping a couple of uh, fielders round. 103 for 6. Bass bowls. Downthwaite stretches forward and defends. Some pressure on Dan Downthwaite who uh, would have expected to be just uh, running around as a sub fielder. Well he did that but now he's a sub batter as well. And he's back on his stumps and defending. <laughs> Dan Downthwaite defending is not always the most elegant. There's, he's a tall chap and there's sometimes a bit of a flurry of arms and legs. But the, the end result is what counts and he kept it out. I wonder if he'll look to hit Bess over the top as Carlson did. Comes down the wicket and then drives towards wide mid-off and gets the scoreboard moving on his account with a single mm. and four for six as Edward Bevan rejoins me on commentary. Slip and a short leg. Bess to Carlson, whose stance looks a little bit more open than usual. And Carlson taking aggressive action. He's planted that one back past the bowler. Through long on for four runs this time. Struck an earlier straight six. Glamorgan move on to 108 for six. Carlson has 27. Douthwaite as the single good uh, pace being generated by Ravis, even if he was uh, very fortunate with the decision to get uh, Root out. Uh, yes, but just look at this scorecard, Nick. It, it's a sorry tale, I'm afraid. And uh, and Glamorgan, oh, well, what can you say? You look, pick up the paper tomorrow morning, and uh, you see 500 all out, and whatever the score is tonight could well be all out by the close on a pitch that is okay. It's a a little bit of variable bounce, one bad decision by the umpire, but that doesn't explain when how many one, two, three, four already are in uh, couldn't reach double figures. Indeed, but, uh, it, it's a complete lack of confidence, I think, in in, in all departments. Revis, who has uh, bowled at a considerable pace here, bowls and uh, forward comes Delfwit and. Pushes it up to mid-off. This is just not good enough, really, is it? You've, you've got to, you know, we we've knew this was going to happen bowling-wise. We, we've spoken about it, Nick, and I know it's keeping on and on, but you, you've got to try and strength. When you play a side, a talented batting side here, you want to try and get a good bowling side, but you look at it, and with, with respect, it's, it's a second 11 attack apart from McElroy. Revis bowls, and this is again defended in the line of leg stamp. Yeah, Yorkshire's bowlers have had an extra couple of yards of pace on uh, Glamorgan's attack, no doubt about it. And, uh, and they bowl more accurately. Okay, right. you know, the pace, yeah, it's not great pace. Cord and Thompson and Cliff have bowled sort of uh, just about medium pace. Revis is quick and, and best. Well, he's bowled nicely, nothing out of the ordinary, and uh, Carlson's shown exactly how to play an off spinner. Revis in bowls. This time, turn, just about turns Douthwit round as he pushes up to mid on. Yeah, Revis, uh, only eight wickets before uh, this game in seven championship games, so it really hasn't been his, uh, his season with the ball. He's done well with the, the bat rather than the ball, but uh, he's charging in. He's certainly well in built for it, isn't he? The traditional Yorkshire fast bowler build. 77 on his back as he comes charging in and bowls outside the off stump, which is left by Delphit. And uh, Delphit has an opportunity here. He hasn't been picked since sort of April. He suffered an injury, yes, but he hasn't uh, 
played in the first team. Didn't play a game, I think. I think I'm right, Nick. Correct me if I'm not. Last season in the first team? Uh, in Red Bull cricket. No. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't think he did. No. I mean, he's got a chance now, an opportunity perhaps, to, to just be selective and try and get some runs. Because there's a place there for anybody who can, uh, who can get a few runs. Ravis bowls to him, and he does oh. try to hammer that, but uh, it's uh, cloth rather. It just clears one of the fielders, and he gets rather a fortuitous uh, run. Didn't really middle that at all. Ball climbing on him, 109 for six. And, uh, well, Glamorgan now trailing by the small matter of 391 runs. Ravis coming up to complete his fifth over. One more ball, and this is... Uh, Goes through second a first slip. It's a chase to the boundary. Adam Lyth is after it, and uh, it's not going to be stopped by the fielder. He gets four runs. Carlson he moves on to 31. Glamorgan limping along to 113 for six, and we have still 14 overs remaining this evening. Yeah, Dowthwaite's season started with the first two championship games. Didn't really make an impact, and uh, couldn't get in the 11 for the rest of that particular block. Started well with the ball in T20, took uh, 10 wickets in six games, but then got crocked um, just about fit in time for the 100, but uh, he didn't play in that and played just one back game in the One Day Cup uh, back with Glamorgan. So a player of his uh, undoubted uh, talent to have only this being his... Uh, 11th, 12th appearance of the, the season. Excuse me, interrupting. Is that Georgina, the uh, uh, Glamorgan physio who won the players, or is it uh, the Yorkshire physio? Dallas White plays that into Oops. the offside. Carlson wanted a single. And there's uh, there's no run. That's, uh, yeah, no, it's with uh, another member of the Glamorgan staff, the, the Glamorgan physio, so I don't think we have to worry about that one. Okay. They were just charging this way. As Dowthwaite is forward, defending. This yep. is Gibson and Co. wandering in front of us. Yes, he hasn't changed much as what is. Well, they are you feeling all right, Nick? Because uh, want a bit of treatment. <laughs> Morgan Fizio coming up this area. Dowthwaite down the wicket, drives into the offside, but all along the ground to Shan Masood at wide mid off. Single is uh, taken. Well. I've uh, put away my kit for the season, so I don't think I require uh, any treatment at the moment. Is that an assistant physio? I don't recognise him, or what is he? Um, he's another member of the staff. I've seen him around. Don't know the gentleman's name. De Carlson defends out into the offside. Thinks for a millisecond out about a single, but Tattersall is out from behind the stumps. And... Uh, does the fielding. They blocked it. Carlson did a long on shot. There's a man on the edge of the boundary there now. Not, not play room and straight on the offside. Probably be happy to hit over mid off, given half a chance. Yeah. He shot drives that one pleasantly towards deep mid off, but uh, Masood is able to stop it. Carlson moves to 32, the total to a dismal 115 for six. Dismal from the Welsh point of view. Delighted, the Yorkshire supporters, no doubt. Downthwaite pushes forward. Defends the last ball of Bess's over back to him. Two singles off the over. Bess one for 32 off 11. It's Revis who has done the damage. Five overs, three for 20. And uh, Revis has taken the, the last three wickets to fall. Getting rid of Eddie Byram for 40. Caught at Gully, driving at a wide one. Billy Root, given out by Peter Hartley, caught behind, even though if it came off his arm for four. And Chris Cook, trapped pretty plum on the back foot quite for four. I don't understand what's happening here because they've taken Revis off after just uh, five overs. He's taken three for 20. Hmm. Uh, if I was Revis, I would be uh, revving up. Taking the ball off. Uh, the bowler and saying, you're not bowling here. Captain, what's going on? Uh, I think what's it's going Cliff, on... Cliff is coming back. Yeah, it's that 
the uh, debutant Ben Clef, who had um, four overs not for 24 in his first spell. It, it's clever captaincy with a view to the long run, I think, this, giving the youngster another ball now. Yes, they're in such a good position. Well, he's bowling now, and goes to Carlson, who comes forward with a ball of good length. Lands it on the spot. And he's pushed back. 115 for two. 32 to Carlson. Delphi is on three. Yeah, six down still. Uh, 385 behind. That's a pretty depressing sight on the scoreboard for Audley Morgan. Byron's out for 40 top scored. El Hussain uh, 8, Ingram 5, Sam North East 16, Root 4 and Cook 4. As the next ball is a little bit shorter, it's chopped away down to third man. And there's a race after it and it'll be pulled in just inside it. A couple more runs to... Uh, Kieran Carlson really hasn't looked in any sort of trouble, giving him the kiss of death. <laughs> uh, has played the off spinner, he's played pace well. And uh, you would say... But uh, he is the best batsman in the Glamorgan side now. Cliff just steadies himself. Joel burst four overs before this, and he's bowling again. That's a good length ball. It's pushed away. This time it's fielded in the gully, and uh, there's no run. Still a, a lovely evening. Lovely evening. Nick, when you get home, is to anyone to take a little glass of red out in the garden? What do you think? <laughs> Day's work done. In comes Cliff and bowls. And this is pushed away. They're thinking of a second here, and they'll have to rush. Uh, Carlson will get there. He's very quick. So uh, the re return comes in Carlson's end, and he was well past the uh, the try line by the time he got there. <laughs> Delthwaite was uh, at this end. We had uh, drama from Welsh rugby last night. It's Welsh national football this evening. Latvia, yeah, better Latvia win that away one. In, in Riga, um, must win game for Wales after a Did our, disappointing our, run. Uh, journalistic staff from the BBC get out there eventually. Eventually. Through Cliff Bowes, a straight delivery, which is defended. So that's live on BBC Radio Wales at uh, 7.45 with... Uh, Live coverage as well on Espedwerak, S4C, and uh, highlights later on on uh, BBC television. So lots of ways to follow that one. Uh, interesting game. I see Wayne Hennessy has pulled out and Burns has pulled out through injury. So better win that one. Here comes Cliff running away from us and bowls. The young man is bowling a good length here on his debut. It must be said, there's nothing been short. So he's now bowled five overs, and uh, he was a little bit erratic, obviously nervous early on, north of 28. Uh, Pakistan, India has resumed, <laughs> still going in Colombo, that uh, one-day game into its second day. Uh, there's been more rain breaks. Pakistan, 83 for four in 21 overs. India piled up 356 for two with centuries from Kohli and Rahul. Meanwhile, in the county championship elsewhere in Division 2, Sussex 220 for five in their second innings. Leicestershire chipping away, but uh, Sussex already 374 in the lead against the Foxes as promotion chase has hit a bit of a road bump. Douthwaite plays forward defensively to the first ball of the Don Bess new over. At uh, Bristol, Gloucestershire 377, Derbyshire 245 for four in reply. Best bowls. Deathweight drives. Doesn't time it. Ball rolls to cover. Came 68 re 77. The Derbyshire openers who batted <laughs> through <laughs> that day that. at Derby. Much 260 for no wicket. Mm. Deathweight's back on his stumps. Defending to Revis at short mid wicket. No run. You've got Don Best rushing through his overs. 11 left after this. Yeah, Yorkshire uh, a minus one on the over eight. Deathweight stretches a long way forward and uh, defends. You, you wonder, just one, Glamorgan were four up. 
And it's quarter to six. We should have been all over by half past five. Yeah, we had the half hour half delay, hour though, delay didn't course, we? So yeah. that would be a six o'clock normal finish as in the rest of the summer. Downthwaite defends again. Back to Bess, who has his head in his hands for some reason. Downthwaite just doesn't look pretty in defence, so Bess probably thinks he's having more chance than he actually has. But I can't see Downthwaite defending for very yeah, long. Three off 19 is not typical. Gives him the charge, but plays defensively when he gets there, straight to uh, short mid-wicket. Main news of the day in the second division is that Durham are definitely up to uh, Division 1, despite not being in action at the moment, and that was a, a result of uh, Leicestershire failing to take any batting points against Sussex, so that means they can't chase Durham, so Durham are assured of a top two place realistically they will win it yeah right. good for them as i mentioned earlier on thoroughly deserved by a well organized team wait to see who comes down with uh north Ants looking pretty doomed 30 points oh, yes. adrift and uh middlesex and <coughs> and kent they're both in action Kent 400, didn't they? 446 all out for kent nottinghamshire 219 for eight so kent are well placed mm. there uh, Middlesex 195 four all out Lancashire 127 for three in reply another couple of wickets for young Josh De Cares. it's turning then here's Cliff with a new over bowlers and he's guided away good diving stop in the gully including the uh, North Walian Phil Salt first ball yeah. he took an eight for didn't he De Cares, the other day he did we all know whose son he is. If you don't, well, you don't follow cricket. <laughs> He'll be clamouring for a play for England, possibly, before long. England short of spin. Yes, Cliff, coming in, one slip, one gully, bowls to the right-handed Carlson, who plays forward. <laughs> He's obviously getting a bit of a way swing because it's been jabbed down into that, uh, on a good length, into that area each time. And you, you have to admire De Cares, really, for using, I believe it's his mother's oh, name, yeah. rather than trading on the Atherton mm. trademark. Luke Wells is 64, not out for uh, Yorkshire. Interviewed him. Uh, was, uh, the one game I was working on in the 100. In he comes again. To have short this time, pulled away, and pulled away well. Because he rolled his rips, at the, uh, rolled his hips, rolled his uh, wrists at the moment of impact and pulled it down rather than up because it, there's two men waiting for the false hook out there. That scores the uh, close of play, by the way, at um, where are they? Canterbury. Knots 219 for eight. 227 behind Kent. Hmm, could be following on. No, two days ago. Always a tense time this time of the year for promotion and relegation short ball which uh, goes over Mr. Douthwaite's shoulder and he's a sturdy young man Use Vendra Chahal getting three wickets for Kent they're uh, overseas import so three wickets apiece for an overseas import and for a loan player yes indeed Kent recruiting well and for September. And uh, Sussex, Undercut, or whatever his name. He's taken three in the first innings. As the next ball here is well wide of the off stump. Tells with shoulders, arms. Yes, Undercut, JDev. Undercut, signed by Sussex for these last few. Albeit uh, their promotion hopes seem to uh, disappear in the last. Round as well, Glamorgan. Out of it. Out of it, realistically now. Do well to save this match. Here comes Cliff, bright sunshine, and it's defended by Delthwaite, who is showing restraint. He's not out three, Carlson. 37 not out, and Glamorgan limping. Just to borrow one of the adjectives from my colleague here, 120. For the loss of six wickets in a pretty, not very good display of championship batting. Yeah, can Douthwaite block it out again completely uh, 
opposite to uh, his natural instincts. Three off 23 deliveries. Carlson is playing according to his instincts. He's uh, 37 off 40. As uh, he faces up to Dom Bass. The off spinner. Twirling away from the River Taff end. Carlson down the pitch but plays fairly gently when he gets there and sends it up to long on for a single. I see that um, <coughs> Jonathan Dodge is gone and he came up to me and he said, can you go and fill in for me now because I've got 35 minutes of, uh, of reporting. Radio updates to Humberside York uh, and Leeds, yeah. Uh, it hasn't changed because I remember all the years I've been going. and Best to Douthwaite who is playing Carry. adventurously at that one slip grabbed at it he was hidden from us initially did it get an edge did it carry I think yes and yes by the look of that one we'll get the view from front on now as Southwick came down the wicket bit of turn from Bess and that's deflected I think off the keeper's pad which is why slip missed it, it. yeah Adam Lyth at slip Southwick plays forwards the next ball so I think it's got the edge of Douthwaite's bat. It flicked something. May have been pad, but I think it was the edge of the bat. Then hit Tattersall's pad. And uh, Lyth couldn't hold on to it. Douthwaite <coughs> defends. Yeah, I remember in the old days before we had uh, uh, ball by ball cricket on the BBC. A colleague of mine, sadly not longer with us, Martin Searby, who was a, a doyen, one of the doyen of the Yorkshire press boxes. Best bowls and Douthwaite jabs that one to cover no runs. Was, was literally on the four nearly most of the day because it was the four and they didn't have a line or anything <laughs> like that all day doing these various uh, updates. So many. As uh, Douthwaite defends again, Inthi offside. Applause for the best over. We'll get another replay for video stream viewers of the uh, Douthwaite edge. Yeah, it was uh, an edge off the bat, diverted off the keeper and dropped by Lyth at slip. Mine has uh, gone missing at the moment, my little television set. Well, not the set, but the picture. So you it went in. Spot market, have you? Yeah, it, it, it <laughs> went in, did it? Into Lyth's hands. Uh, I'm it was a chance anyway, right. but um, since it deflected off the keeper, you, you can't really blame Lyth too much. Cliff to continue in his debut here. He'd have to take a wicket. There would be great celebrations if he did. And he's bowling to Kieran Carlson, first ball of the over. Then he comes and bowls to him. Clip round the corner, down towards fine leg, and it would be fielded some five yards inside the boundary. And... Uh, behind in the spectators behind the fielder there nearly everyone is bare chested it's uh, that sort of day yeah it's uh, it's gone down a few degrees from last week but it's, it's still Beautiful quite pleasant day. isn't it Cliff has a chance now to bowl at Delphi who he hasn't bowled at before Delphi on 3 of 26 28 balls Carlson, 39 of 42. In comes Cliff and bowls, and this time oh. it's driven back. And will go for four. Half four. He played it on the up, past the bowler. Perfectly safe in the end. And he gets his first boundary. Yeah, Glamorgan seconds are getting his stuffing as well at the Hove oh, yeah. Academy ground. Glamorgan 210, Sussex 290 for two, a century for Harrison Ward. Cliff grabbing at that one as it fizzed back past him, yeah. but it was uh, hit Bit very quick. firmly indeed. Our first sightings, if you remember, of uh, Dan Douthwit when he got 100 here in the combined you know, university. The next ball, this is pulled fiercely oh. full more for him. A little bit too short, and he was on to that very quickly. So Douthwit beginning to take uh, the opportunity of showing that perhaps... Uh, he might be considered into the first team for the last uh, game of the season against Derbyshire. He's on to 11, 130 for 6. 30 added for the seventh wicket. 
attitude restored some sort of uh, pride. We need a lot more. As uh, Cliff is in, balls to Douthwit. Douthwit leaves this time. Good delivery outside the off stump and a good length and a good line. Yeah, Yorkshire second. 11 spent the day in the field at Guildford, Surrey. Made 348 for eight with centuries from Blake and Van der Merwe. Two wickets apiece for Milnes, Dom Leach and Shutt for the Yorkshire seconds. Do you remember Guildford, Nick? Mr. Yeah, Graham Wags. Graham Wags, double hundred. And 2015. In comes the next ball and it's defended again. He, those of you who know Guildford, he just kept putting it near the railway line and threatening to hit some trains that were passing because that's the main line to London from the <laughs> southeast and there's an extraordinary innings we can walk at one stage were facing uh, the follow on yeah, you could do with something like that now couldn't they that would be nice 130 for 6 turns round as Cliff passed by Hartley Bowles good length ball Played back down the pitch, end of the over. Uncle Morgan, 136, and we have eight overs of the day remaining here at Sunny Sophia Gardens. It's three minutes to six, and Bess will, no doubt, bowl and change from the far end, just as he's done most of the day, or most of the innings, put it that way. And uh, Morgan struggling here, and the opposite, num the opposite uh, side. Yorkshire, uh, very, very happy. We've got the director of cricket down here, Darren Goff, the great Darren Goff. Otis Gibson is here, the coach, and all enjoying it, no doubt. Yeah, some Yorkshire supporters may be in front of us having a laugh as uh, Bess bowls. Carlson whips it away on the leg side for a safe single out towards mid-wicket. 131 for six, and Carlson moves level with Eddie Byram as top score in this uh, mediocre so far effort from Glamorgan. Well, I'm sure the effort's there, but the, the results haven't been of the bat. As Douthwaite's back on his stumps and defending. Yeah, don't play back, play forward. Bit off a mid honour up on Douthwaite with his adventurous uh, look in life as far as batting's concerned. Might be thinking, shall I try and pump him over? But no, he defends again. Back to Dom Bass. Dallas White has tried a, a couple of big blows off the seam of Cliff, but hasn't really had a go at Bess as yet as short leg moves to silly point. Dallas gives him the charge and then uh, drives along the ground to Masood at mid off. And there is no run. As, uh, the Yorkshire staff walk beneath us. Downthwaite is stretching forward and showing not too much intent. As now back go, deep cover and Just mid on to long on. Work out this. So you're going to lob one up and hope Downthwaite will try and hit it for six. Why does he need a deep extra cover when they're so long behind? Bass bowls. Downthwaite defends again to end the over. That was a, the, the deep extra cover is a complete mystery to me, to be honest, in, unless he thinks that Downthwaite's going to try and hit inside out. But there's no reason why he should. With a short straight boundary, if he's going to have a go at Bass, he'll try and hit in the taff straight. Well, they're 369 runs behind and a couple of runs, a couple of boundaries in make a blind bit of difference to it. Exactly. There we are. The uh, the sun goes in and we seven have overs seven left. overs left at uh, just before six o'clock. We may have a BBC Radio Wales update in a few minutes' time. It'd be cliff to continue having a longish bowl, but the captain here as he bowls Ball's short, and that's pulled away for four by. Uh, it's not. I thought. Oh, yes. I thought finally I could <laughs> give it up, but he was just waiting for the ball to come to him. He gets a single. Top scorer, I know, Carlson with 41. Yeah, look that way, didn't it? 
but uh, captain hasn't been supported by apart from Byron, his top order batsman I'm afraid Cliff then to bowl and continue this little battle he's got against Douthwaite and he comes bowl Douthwaite drives pleasantly on the offside and uh, Carlson has to scuttle back Fourteen wickets left at the moment for Yorkshire to take to win this game. That they have potential two days, uh, despite this forecast. We'll have to analyse Wednesday's perfectly all right, but not so tomorrow. As in comes Clef and bowls bouncer, which sails over Dalthwaite's head into the gloves of Johnny Tattersall. Yeah, I just hope that Dalthwaite can keep up this. Uh, judicious selection that he's enjoyed so far really just clothed one over mid wicket at one point but uh, by and large so far he has chosen wisely but a uh, long way to go perhaps you'll do it Marnus Labashain did in his first test appearance at uh, in the Ashes a few years ago as the next ball Duffy is forward Steve Smith it was it was hit on the head wasn't it yes and he came in Marnus and got a hundred Yep, got 80 as a sub in a one-day international last week as well. Coming in at number eight, I think, or nine even. Extraordinary business. Cliff turns, accelerates and bowls and is pulled harsh, straight to steep mid-wicket feeling on the boundary. And he goes through for a single. Welcome to Five Sports Extra listeners with the news that Glamorgan are 133 for six in deep trouble. Yorkshire on top thanks to three wickets from Matthew Revis. Kieran mm -hmm. Carson is 41 not out. Glamorgan's substitute, Dan Douthwaite, is 12 not out. And uh, it is the debutant Cliff Bowling from this the Cathedral Road end and he's coming into Carlson now and bowls to him and Carlson plays it gently away onto the offside and uh, he will collect the single he will retain strike Glamorgan 134 for six they started poorly they lost uh, Zain Ul Hassan their opening batsman he's bowled by Cord for eight Ingram quickly followed and bowled by Thompson for five Northeast hung around for a while and in uh, 47 with his uh, partner before he was also dismissed. Bowled by the off spin of Bess for 16. Root appeared to be caught off the arm by wicketkeeper Tattersill of Revis, who generated a lot of pace. He was out for four. And Chris Cook was out shortly afterwards. That'll be double to Revis for also four. But uh, Douthwit has helped his captain, Kieran Carlson, take the score now. They've added, a hundred, they've added 34 for this seventh wicket. Tom Bess, who's bowled unchanged, will continue. Thank you, Edwards, for summarising that neatly as uh, Carlson drives the first ball of Bess's over back to the bowler. And there is no run. Bess then, one Wicket to his credit as Carlson <laughs> pushes into the offside. There is a big gap. Douthwaite thought about the single, but Bass was quickly across into the covers to field off his own bowling, as uh, all bowlers are. Update for BBC Radio Wales to come fairly shortly as well, as we try and keep everyone informed as Carlson nudges one into the leg side, decides against taking the single Carlson 42 not out can Glamorgan battle through and limit the damage in comes Carlson bowls um, best bowls to Carlson sorry and uh, defended on the offside this time it's the keeper Tattersall who does the fielding. 
Glamorgan in severe trouble of losing this game at 134 for six in their first innings. Late on day two, Yorkshire piled up 500 all out, despite Glamorgan eventually claiming the wickets this afternoon, three apiece for Harris and Carlson. But Sean Massoud's 192 allowed Yorkshire to dominate, and Glamorgan's top order has fallen apart. Three wickets claimed by Matthew Revis, Eddie Byron made 40, Carlson is 45 not out, but with five overs left to play tonight, Glamorgan 137 for six, still 343 runs behind. Bess to Dowthwaite. Three runs off the last ball to uh, Carlson while I was giving that summary. And Dowthwaite defends the last ball of the Bess over. He's got one for 37 off 15 overs. He's done a good holding job to allow the seamers to rotate. And uh, Yorkshire have four of them. A wicked piece to Code and Thompson early doors. One to Bess. And then three in a row to uh, Matthew Revis. But it's the youngster Ben Cliff who's being given his head and uh, Sean Massoud taking advantage of the match situation. But he is now being replaced. George, George Hill as Yorkshire bringing on a, a fifth seamer. Yeah, I'm. Uh yeah, they've done it ever so well, Yorkshire, but I'm a little surprised that Rev is now with just uh, five overs left tonight, so he'd only have to bowl two or three overs and he could really let fly and try and get another wicket or even two. But no, he's going to bring a bowler on who hasn't bowled before. He might have brought Cord back or Thompson. But uh, yeah. anyway, he's got so many runs, Nick, to play yeah. with, uh, and so that he can... Uh, do what he wants to. And, uh, 13 wickets this season, George Hill has an average of 39.5. Yeah. So a, a regular occasional bowler. Here he is then, and he's coming into Carlson and bowls to him, and Carlson drives it straight to short extra cover. I don't think uh, either batsman was shown any adventure from now on with just five overs left. They want to try and be there for, uh, for tomorrow. Try and recover and rebuild this uh, pretty pitiful start of the innings. I say the start, we're in the 46th, uh, in the, what are we? 46th, 46th yeah. over, yeah. In comes Hill, bowls, oh, that beats him. It's a beauty from Hill. Pitched and left Carson. <laughs> so there's a little bit in it still for these seamers, even though we're in the 46th over. Well, Yorkshire have just bowled more consistently and oh. Glamorgan did, and a bit faster as well. Yeah, yeah that just kept its line, didn't it? Yeah, Carlson was certainly beaten by it. Here he is again, Hill. Comes in past the umpire, balls to Carlson. Carlson tries, but doesn't really time. He takes the top hand off the bat as it goes gently up to his opposite number, the captain of Yorkshire. Sued. And there's no run. Happiest county of the day, one who is not pl playing in Durham, promoted to Division 1 after yes. Leicestershire were dismissed cheaply by Sussex. What is that? What? Um, we'll just break off as the next ball comes in. There are two. What are they walking? Two pigeons? Two seagulls? Gulls. Two gulls they are. Yeah. Coming in here, they generally come in for their nightly feed. I don't know what on. Perhaps the customers here left their few sandwiches. For yeah, them. hopeful for stray sandwiches, errant chips, or uh, perhaps the a few worms pop their heads up at this time of day. You often see gulls coming in. Oh, sometimes they swarm in front of our mm. eye line. Not quite Scarborough, though. <laughs> We're not calling Bay or Sussex. Then comes Hill. Bowes. It's a wild shot from uh, Carson. Come on out, Kieran. It's not a shot for ten past six in the evening. Four overs left after this. He went for that, and had he nicked that, he would have trudged head down back to the pavilion. Yeah, one shot of his half century, and oh. uh, that one has flashed away through between keeper and slip for four runs, and neither of them moved. It was going so quickly. So, best at first slip. In has bisected them, as they say. Dolphwich has walked the length of 22 yards 
I don't think he can give any advice to Carlson as a batsman, perhaps. Well, probably just saying, come on, Skip. <laughs> we need you there in the morning. Well, they're having a chat because the ball has uh, disappeared. Wasn't a chance, but uh, they're having to dig around. There's a, I was walking past there the other day, surprised how many hoses are down there and... Uh, the it's ones, yeah. of course, that extend normally off the, the side of the hover cover Hold across the, the square. But uh, there is a, a lot of uh, equipment piled up at that uh, River Taff end. After his uh, monumental work of reporting to about 25,000 Yorkshire outlets, Jonathan's my good friend Jonathan uh, Dodge, Nick will depart, do his writings up. Uh, I've got uh, I've got pass those on today, but here's Hill Bowls and uh, that's squeezed away on the offside. No run. End of uh, George Hill's first over. Conceded four runs. A genuine edge between slip and wicketkeeper. Neither of them got a hand to it. There are four overs left in the day's play here at Sapphire Gardens on BBC Sport Online, and they will be described to you by Edward and now Jonathan. Ed, 25,000 reports come on. I've told you a million times before. <laughs> Do not exaggerate when you're on air referring to me. Yeah, good, uh, good over that from George Hill, first up. Different, different uh, threat again that he poses. Swings the ball, low trajectory. Here's Best then, and he is going to bowl to Delthwaite. And sensing that Glamorgan are defending for their lives here for the last couple of overs, he's got a, a slip, a leg slip, and a short leg. As he comes in and bowls to Delthwaite, he pushes out his right arm and guides it out to extra cover. 141 for six as uh, comes next ball Lockerman is lurking on the boundary so Delthwaite surely will not try and hit him over the top as Delthwaite uh, waits again getting over through this over again very quickly as he tosses this one up and is defended resolutely by the batsman it's good to see Bess rushing through his over he's only taken about two minutes and even that walks back to his mark one, two, three, four, five little steps, and then he's back, and that's short, and cut away for a single. He moves on to 14, and the score to 142, to 13, rather. 142 for six. And the same field is being kept for Kieran Carlson, who will look for his 50 somewhere with a single. As, uh, in comes Bess and balls to him and Carlson drives and he'll get his 50. He's played very positively and he's played well for his team. They would be well, they're in a sorry pickle at the moment but it would be even worse had Carlson not played for his 50 and this coming off 57 balls. He's plays as he always plays, positive batsman and uh, at least Glamorgan will be happy to get that contribution. This is short and nudged away for a for a nothing. I thought they might uh, run. End of the over. And they are now three, three, over, three overs left. 50 there you go, 57, 57 balls. Six fours, six fours to six, which is uh, pretty good going. 143 for, eight, uh, for six. This partnership has put on 43 and looking just a smidgen better than 100 for six, Jonathan. Yeah, and Dan. Douthwaite. I um, haven't seen enough of him to sort of know what his natural game is with the bat, but uh -huh. he might have to lapse into Dan Dowerthwaite for a, a little while. Well, he's not normally a Dan Dowerthwaite. He's a very, very hard hitter of the ball. And I'll tell you his little story of... Here's Hill from the Cathedral Road end, a ball that uh, shapes in towards Kieran Carlson, dropped out into the offside for Ben Cliff to field. No run. It. Some years ago, he... I uh, must be coming back about five years ago, he... My apologies right. before to interrupt it. One run, I should say, before you email in. One run, not no run. <laughs> um, and he got runs. I think he got a big score for the universities against Sussex. And he came up here, he got 100 here. Morgan took note, and then they, uh, they signed him. 
He's done some pretty good things, but then he hasn't been consistent as the club would have liked. And he's on strike here, facing George Hill. Gets a straight delivery and is right behind it. No run. I suppose uh, Yorkshire today with the 500 and then taking six wickets. The over rate, you would think, has probably gone back level. It's still showing as minus one as it does throughout yeah. a session once it's been decided, but we'll find out at the end of the day. Don Bess has bowled quite a few, hasn't he? Um, the only box that hasn't been ticked, really, that they would have loved to have seen ticked is a wicket for Ben Cliff, the only bowler so far yes. who's not managed to take a wicket on his debut. He'll feel much better about life if he can get his name on the board in that respect. As Hill is in, that's turned down to long leg, and Matthew Revis is not able to reel that one in. Four runs. Very brief signal, isn't it, that uh, Peter Hartley gives? Yeah. Just uh, turns the, the scorers and quick flick of the, the wrist to uh, indicate what he thinks was four. Dan Douthwaite on to 17. And uh, they've got 15 balls to negotiate safely this evening without further loss. And then they're going to need a further 203. Oh, from this point, they're going to need a further 203 to avoid the follow-on. Douthwaite trying to turn that one to leg. And uh, a little bit more bounce from George this time. And that uh, drops out into the offside. I said at the start of the over, George, lower trajectory. It's not that he's short, because he isn't. He's, uh, he's pretty tall. But it just always feels, because he bowls it, generally speaking, he bowls it a little bit fuller. Mm. It just feels a bit, a bit more of a skiddy trajectory about what he produces compared to... One or two of the others. Oh, good delivery, this one. Wide of off stump. Douthwaite drawn into pushing at that. Yeah, just too wide, surely, to play with. Two always left out of this new one ball, rather. And uh, Morgan will be hoping, of course, to play them out. And uh, York should be hoping for a wicket. His play, of course, started half an hour late and he's finished uh, more than that half hour at the other end late. 96 overs to be bowled when they set out. Carlson, uh, Douthwood, I should say, pushes out to mid-off final ball of the over. So 148 for six, Carlson 51, Douthwood 17 and just 12 balls remain in the day. Yes, as it gets just a little bit more cloudy here at uh, Safari Gardens but uh, it's been a good day and um, somebody pointed out to me that has anybody lost some sort of appliance because something has dropped onto the side screen there straight in Did front of you no, not your false teeth a bear, <laughs> bear of sunglasses there so everything's going uh, uh, I think it's just a hole actually in <laughs> in the side screen <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just because the two of them together, it does take yeah. on the appearance of sunglasses. Here's Best with the penultimate over, which uh, no risks taken by Carlson, who prods forward to plenty of company, a keeper and three close fielders. And he comes again, bowled down the pitch, though. Comes Carlson this time and plays it out into the extra cover area. For single, he moves on to 52. 149 for six. Delphite back to receive as best. Bowling his 17th over on the trot will bowl. Long reach nullifies any chain of spin and is pushed out into the offside. <coughs> From the river end bowls. Back it comes to the bowler. And we are grateful, Dom, for you bowling so quickly through the over. So that we are not here until late. Bess is in. Bowls and the quicker swirler. What's the ball they call that? It's the the one that goes on and then swings a little bit. Trying everything. You go one more ball now to try and dismiss Dan Douthwaite who will probably come forward and push it he goes back and pushes it end of the over 149 for 6 
as the last over probably be mowed by George Phil will be expertly described by my good colleague Jonathan Doyle. I will do my best to um, to do so as described. I, I know you want to get off Ed because you need to draw the curtains and get settled, don't you? <laughs> I've got to drive far longer than you. <laughs> Not so bad for you, but uh, I have to go about 50 minutes. But. I shall think of you on Wednesday when Take you have uh, how many miles? 270? Yeah, it takes about 20 minutes to get back to the hotel from here with the, <laughs> the traffic. Here's Hill in and bowling to Carlson who flicks that one backward of square down to long leg. Revis will keep him to one. And Malcolm Palmer said that so far so go and we've had a Welsh drag on as Bumble once called them. More please. Yeah. Bubum. bum Malcolm's on all week. <laughs> and to that earlier comment when Ed walked in with the, the plate full of cakes, Jay Grover said, uh, Edward Bevan runs off with a tray of cakes laughing manically. It's a juggle between humorous and utterly terrifying as Dowthwaite gets solidly <laughs> behind this hill <laughs> delivery it and there is down. no run. <laughs> David, yeah. uh, David Collicott uh, out there in the States says he's loving watching Yorkshire playing well on foreign soil. <laughs> Not quite. Pretty soil still. Uh, to Martin Rowe, Big Mickey's Mickey Edwards, who was out there as a 12th man. Who's right. off the field for the Yorkies? Uh, good question. As Douthwood is behind it and pushes to Masood. Nobody at the moment. They're all on. Um, Bent Nielsen said DRS would be nice in the championship, but it would have to be available to outground. Still too large an investment and requiring too much manpower in setup, but as it evolves technically, it will be eventually be feasible. Bent up there in Denmark. And uh, Jordan Thompson has just been brought round to leg slip from point here. George Hill to Douthwaite who gets a straight delivery from George and flicks it out onto the leg side for Wharton to field. Just two balls remaining on day two. Morgan still 100 short of a batting point and 201 short of avoiding being asked to follow on if Yorkshire decided that they wanted to do that. Need another four wickets before they've got the opportunity to ask the question. So George Hill turns, leaves us behind. Short bangs it in at uh, Douthwaite, but it was well signposted. And the Glamorgan concussion substitute got well underneath it. So one ball for him to negotiate. And the bat will be tucked under the arm to signal the end of day two. The last of 50 overs at Glamorgan, so the just about bang on three and over. We'll be if this one. 3.01. See any score? Yeah. George just uh, making Douthwaite wait, and he comes. Last ball of the day. Then it's straight. Douthwaite gets the blade <coughs> behind it. End of the day. 50 overs bowled in this Glamorgan first innings. 150 for six. Kieran Carlson. Um, is uh, standing alone really in terms of significant resistance 53 not out Dan Douthwaite though has gone with him they've put on 50 for this unbroken for this uh, seventh wicket so far he's 17 three wickets for Matthew Revis one apiece for Ben Code for Jordan Thompson and for Dominic Bess and a lot of hard yakka for the Glamorgan batters tomorrow if they're going to be able to uh, avoid being asked to follow on Ed. Lots of work for them to do. They've been uh, completely outplayed in the two days. In fact, since uh, Masood won the toss yesterday morning, lots of hard work to do and uh, they'll have to show some more grit, determination and application, certainly in the second innings, if they've got anything to do uh, to get out of this game. Yep, so um, lots to look forward to tomorrow if you're a Yorkshire supporter at the moment, but uh, Glamorgan, well, you're looking forward to a rear guard action first and foremost. We'll see how things go. The, uh, the Tykes on top after two days and uh, day three awaits. We will hope to get a prompt start, which will be 10.30 if we do. 
And of course, we'll bring you all the details in terms of overs to be bowled tomorrow uh, and all the rest of that paraphernalia as and when we found out uh, tomorrow morning. But from Ed, who's uh, disappeared pronto out the back of the box, from Nick and from myself, thanks for your company today. And we'll look forward to uh, you joining us at around about five minutes before the off tomorrow morning. Good night. <laughs>